fair. See, that's all right. Some people are into that, you know. It's just it's how it is. It's the way it rolls. Yeah, that's yeah, disgusting. You should be ashamed. Yeah. Of yourself. Well, I'm glad I'm not the only one who was pissed off today at someone. So, mm. dude, it was like I was doing great. I fucked up a little bit on um, the uh, M41 jacket patch. Mm. I turned. I did the same. Well, I didn't do the same thing. I just um, the jacket's more heavy, so yeah. when I was moving it, it kind of got in the wrong spot. And I was like, "All right, we're doing well." And all of a sudden, brrr, it made like this little thing. But I was like, it also doesn't help that a lot of those like Reaper jackets they have the two layers because they have the wool layer. That's what I mean. And so it and moved, the other layer, and yeah. those layers aren't stitched together good, so they move differently. Yeah. And it moved, and, it, and so I, I told Henry, I'm like, the only people that are going to notice that are you and me, because I told you about it. Well, like, know? remember, so when I was telling you about the, like, the mold that you get. Yeah. Uh, like needle No, I got it now, yeah. Yeah, that gets it real tight, both layers for stuff like that, and you can mm -hmm. fix it all, and then you just hand stitch the corners, and it flops right. I mean, it looks... You don't like get the bunching of the lining fabric. Well, it didn't bunch, it just, um, it was, again, I fucked it up. It wasn't like... Again, I wasn't patient enough. Oh, see, know? one of the one of the problems that we have with our sewing machine is it always wants to just make a knot of the of the bobbin thread. Your tension in your thread is not calibrated correctly, then. Yeah, your machine might just need a, a tuning up, which they recommend you get every two years on a sewing machine. It's a, you it's a go brand new machine. machine. It's literally a brand new machine. No, so yeah, I had that happen too. It's um, your tension and uh, the thread type also matters. Okay. Um, I've had a problem with um because <clears throat> I was using um I was using a cotton thread straight up, but also yeah, your tension is a big thing. And um if if your tension is off, your bobbin's gonna get more thread going into the the stitch than your yeah, that's, the actual, that's you know whatever. Yeah, and it just turns into a knot on the yes, bottom side yep, or whatever. It's just a big giant, yeah, hunk of shit. Yeah. Yeah, and, that's um, exactly what we have. Yeah, so your, your tension on top has probably got to be adjusted. And um, once you get that done, like, because I, again, sewing is extremely frustrating at times. Once but you know how it, to do it, though, it gets easy. And when it does I, run, when you get your, when you get your shit, like, calibrated and, like, okay, this thread, this thread, blah, blah, blah. And when it does work, yeah, it's like, okay. But even I, then, you get, I you know get how, I, I, I actually know how to sew really well. I just don't know how to set the machine up. Well, yeah, I think there's tons of YouTube videos for that. Like mine set up to run, mm -hmm. run cotton thread for like older uniforms, and then I have it set up to run T70 bonded nylon for newer uniforms. Yep, and it's literally I can hit a button and it'll change all the settings in the machine. Oh, like, you got I a, spent, like, you got a fancy machine. Sewing machine. So yeah, it, well, no, but he, here's the thing: is I have the <coughs> step down from Devon's. It's only one step down though. It's like a fucking great machine. Yeah, but I had mine... to use. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, ours is uh, basically a baseline mechanical. It's, well, a, it's well, a singer, but but mine's okay, a that's what we all have then. So they all should be pretty much the same. If it's yeah, brand but, new. but, but I had, just, I, what I'm saying is mine doesn't have the digital controls on it. No, it's mine doesn't it. either. Mine's mine all, has mine's buttons all. to preset everything. Yeah, mine mine has knobs, so it's 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 mechanical. Yes, you're right. Um, I've got knobs, and then I have the button panel. And the yeah, small I don't. Play. That's yeah. I said. You have a step up from me, and yeah. probably what Jake has, but mine's all mechanical. If there's no buttons or anything like that on there, um, um, I'm gonna throw this in. What should I throw it? Friday night chat. Hi, Daniel. What's up, bud? Yeah, that's the one we've got. I got you. <clears throat> yeah, and mine's the. Uh, let me look at the model number really quick. It's very okay. Similar. Yeah, forty-four, fifty-two. All right. Mine's the. Uh, what the fuck? I hear. You what? Oh. Oh, I'll get the forty-four S. Why are you stealing my hat? Why are you stealing my hat? So you probably hat? very similar. Here, you can have the hat. You can have the hat. But yeah, I said the forty-four S. The I don't want the hat, Dad. But you were and, grabbing um, for the hat. Yeah, it was just um like so I use uh poly thread for the bobbin <laughs> and then cotton for the top. <laughs> and it seems to be working pretty well. <laughs> yeah. 
You have a banana. Go with mama. Go with mama. Yeah, so yours should work pretty close to pretty close to Mike, so. Yeah. They're very similar. Yeah, it's just a, yeah, I had to I had to experiment and fail a lot with like um the shit doing exactly what you're saying where it's nodding up on the bobbin. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh it had to do with the tension and the kind of thread I was using on the top. Okay. Yeah, I think we're I think the last time Holly used it, um she was using the same thread on the top and bottom. You can do that. You, can, you just got to tension it correctly. Yep. There you go. Because the bobbin's got like basically no tension on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so you got to match whatever the hell the machine's doing, you know, when you when you string it right and everything like that. You got to match that tension to relatively the bobbin's tension. And yeah. I'm That's glad weird. mine's so easy to set because I got like the 6800. It's a big, Thank you. It's a big Thank boy. you. Thank you for your service. Spend a lot of money in that. So. It, it's it's a very nice yeah. service. No, I, I think it, I spent two hundred bucks on mine. The it's... envy of your town. Which, to be fair, getting a singer sewing machine is like it's pretty. They're pretty good. They make really good. Sewing well, machines. there's actually a place around here locally that still services these fucking things. Yeah, I've got there's two a, of them. There's here, actually like, quite a few of them still. Yep. So if anything went really wrong with this thing. And it was out of my control. I could just bring it there, and you yep. know, and they're up. super easy to work on. Parts are cheap for them. Yep. So like yep. They're they're an excellent choice for a sewing machine. So, and they got everything from base models. Like you can get a Singer sewing machine for less than a hundred bucks. So, yeah. And like I said, I paid two for mine because I got the heavy duty because I was going to be trying to go through. Well, I am going through heavier material. Basically, anything through more than two layers of fabric, potentially right. you're <clears throat> you need a heavy duty one. So, yeah, I've only broken one needle so far. And it's, I've, I've broken a shitload of needles, but that's been trying to get through. Well, that's the thing is I was trying to get through um, when I folded it over to do a fancy fold. I think it was five layers of cotton duck. Yeah, that'll that'll do. And, that, and then I just went for it. I didn't just like ease into it. Mm -hmm. I just went. And, and, yeah. Just, and sometimes yeah. you just need to use the knob on the you side. Just have to manually there you go. Run it, yep, yeah. You have to manually, manually like start yeah. it and then you go, yeah. oh, shit. What you do is you put a little bit of tension on the on the motor, just so that it has a little bit of extra pulling power. But you're actually just yeah. manually advancing it with the yeah, knob, you're just using the knob, and it's like. And then when the knob won't punch it through, you're like, uh, "Should not be doing this." Yeah. Yep. If you Too were much. struggling to punch it through with the knob, you should probably yeah, stop. Yep. Because yeah, the the first time I bent a fuck, I, I straight up bent this fucking thing. It was like <laughs> done. I Good started wearing it, safety glasses when I used mine because I've actually like broke needles and they've come snap. up and like oh yeah, the there's face. a lot of tension on them, yeah. Mm -hmm. So like I've started wearing like mm -hmm. shop glasses when I've run in my sewing machine, especially like on heavier duty jobs because well, I've. You can't commit war crimes when you're wearing safety glasses. Oh, I got some pretty heinous safety glasses. They're very old school. They're like the tortoise shell with like the screens on the side. <laughs> Yeah, they're hideous looking. They're from like the seventies. They're no, whatever. If they fucking work, who gives a shit? Yeah, and I just like, wear glasses all the time, and it's not a problem. I'll be, like outside doing stuff, and I have these fucking ancient safety glasses on. I, I just wear glasses all the time. It solves the issue. Fair. Yeah, it's because you fucking four-eyed freak over there. Hey, it's not my fault. I'm blind as a bat. Well, I'm really not. <laughs> I, I I can actually almost drive legally without my glasses. Almost. You could almost drive legally. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you ever actually seen what the requirements are? They're, they're actually there's a extremely lenient that legally can't drive without their glasses or contacts. Yeah. Yeah, but you have to be really fucked for that. Like, I mean, like, no, you don't even need to be that fucked. Like, there's some people that just have like astigmatism, which is really common, and yeah. technically you shouldn't be driving at night without glasses because you're astigmatism. Well, that, that, that's one thing, but like, yeah, it's just, there's people that I know in my, in my personal life that like, um, they are blind as a fucking bat, right? Like my wife. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, yeah, you're good. Yeah. My wife's got Coke bottle glasses and has since she was like, I don't know, seven. Oh, and when you see her in the morning, you're like, good news. <laughs> <laughs> don't sound like a Canadian when I say it. <laughs> Bubbles, why are you living in the shed still, buddy? 
It's a good fucking kitty right there. Zeno's uh, and, and here. Uh, that's my uh, 4ID tanker buddy. Does he want to come on? I don't know. Zeno, you want to come on? You want to you want to join us? We... Yeah, because I can only stay for like another. He doesn't have Facebook, so I'd have to send him the link elsewhere. I don't. I, I, that's I, all right. Jonesy jo 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 doesn't have Facebook either. I just email him the fucking link. Yeah, to be fair, Jonesy's a caveman and he man. Oh, he's it. a fucking absolute caveman pile of shit. Yeah. Fucking retard who joined the infantry. Oh, and... Mike, question for you. Yeah. You know that uh, Swiss that Swiss jacket or that Swiss um, coat that I bought from you? Which one? The the wool coat the the oh back in the day yeah it was like a year and a half ago oh the the overcoat yes yeah the okay. overcoat yeah do you, yeah. do you have a hat to go with that or do you know where to get a hat to go I, with that I, depends I, on what hat do you want I was just gonna say that like it's um I've got quite a few so I've got I've got the cunt caps that they had but Which have like the ear flaps that come down no and no, no 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 it's it's the later ones it's the um no 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 I know what you're talking about like they have the like rabbit one that's like the Ushanka and then they have the one that is like like well, what it's Jake's a, wearing but it has a the winter... flaps that come down to protect your ears yeah your neck. so yeah so Devin is right do you want a winter cap or do you want a uniform cap I guess winter cap um yeah I can get those. I, I can go can, get mine too right now. It's in the other room. If you can, if you can get one, I will buy one. <laughs> They're at really Mike's super expensive. at Mike's Military dot com. They're really expensive. They're like fifteen bucks. Oof. At, at Mike's Military dot com. Give you a little oh, bit. Oh, see, Josie is watching. I fucking knew. I had a feeling that that fucking caveman, <laughs> Southern deep. <laughs> Josie, get your ass in here. He, he's got his kids tonight. Get your so, ass to Mars. Yeah, but um, come like any wool pants. I've had wool pants in the past, a lot of them, and the wool is getting harder to find. Just surplus right. in general. Why does that hat Devin is wearing just suit him? It's Cause... this is depending on what area your coat's from. So this is like the post World War One, World War Two M thirty six Swiss cap. This is the winter hat. Yep, this is the front. Uh, this is the, the uniform cap, which also has ear yep. flaps and stuff that come down. Oh, let me see that. Model it. Demonstrate, monkey. Model it? Oh, yes. All right, so you just pull the flaps down. And yeah. That's... That, and then it also has a bill. So, like, if you're a tuck driver, you can use it with the bill or without the bill. So. How in the baseball game. What kind yeah. of origami piece? Of, what kind of origami shit is that? So if you need to keep the sun out of your eyes, you can like still have the ear things up, but still have the bill. Like it's the coolest fucking hat ever. So that's pretty that, stupid. That is actually it looks pretty, pretty stupid. It looks pretty I, stupid, but it works. I think it looks good. I'm, hey, I'm, hey, I'm thinking. Hey, who like, gives the, a fuck what you think? I'm I thinking can, the. Uh, are you at a baseball game, Nate? What the fuck are you doing? No, I'm taking my dog for a walk, and I was bored. No, he, so. he's sitting outside the elementary school playground, wishing it was populated. Oh, hey -oh. Uh, <laughs> Fight for legal there. reasons, that is a falsified. <laughs> 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 uh, my lawyer says no. <laughs> my lawyer says no. Yeah, that that's what I'm looking for. The, yeah. the Ushanka, the Ushanka yeah, style. I, I've got um, what size is your flounder head again? Like seven and an eighth, seven and a quarter. Oh fuck yeah! I think I got one now, or I can go find one. Yeah, bring it with you, and I'll buy it from you when you come down next week. I'll just give it to you as a fucking pity. No, case. you already gave me this one. You already gave me the the World War One USGI cunt cap. No, you're not giving me. <laughs> I, I will give you money for it. Okay. Open up, pull your pants you down, and and, and pull out up. your fucking g-string waistband. I literally charge, I think, because uh, we're shipping and everything. It's like about ten, fifteen, somewhere in there, ten, fifteen bucks for one of those. And people, yeah, they're super <clears> nice. <throat> they got the nice uh, like cotton. Hey, Zeno, you know, text me your email address, and I'll get the link to you. Yeah, like people, you know, for years there was a bunch of Swiss people when I made videos about these things. Oh yeah. Where, they're like, they're like, yeah, we, we still wear these fucking things. We call them this name because they look like shit, but damn, do they work well. And it's like, yeah, it's not a fashion contest with military uniform, but for a lot of Euro countries, it is. It beats freezing to death. I'll say that. 
Yeah, no, they're at, they're they're really cool and they're actually pretty fucking lightweight for being wool. They are really lightweight and like I like the liner. Like I was just saying, they got they got a really nice cotton like HBT liner yep, in them. Yep, yep. So they so work seven out. Seven and super eighth is nice. about fifty seven. Yeah, let me go in the garage and let me go see if I actually have one of these fucking things. Nate, sorry, you just got here and you're wearing your. It's DeWalt. okay. It's you're okay. Just walking yeah. his dog in front of the school. It's fine. Just walking my goddamn <laughs> dog, but um. No, at least your beard isn't out in force. I, I like that. You look better with yeah. a short fucking facial well, hair. He, I mean, he doesn't look quite as much like a child molester. Yeah, before it would have been like hobo makes a child molester. So I'm glad it's like Whoa! that's pretty much gone now. You're saying child at an elementary school? What are we doing? Uh, so, <laughs> um, whoops. Fine. Pedo, pedo bear. That's fine. Jake, Jake's just gonna be this. he's gonna be freaking my cap. I'm not even near a school. Like I'm hey, not even... go ahead and take a seat. Go ahead and take a seat. <laughs> take a seat right over there. Yeah. 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 I'm not Jesus. even near one. So it says here you were walking your dog. <laughs> <sighs> come here, dog. Fine. Come here. Come. Look, see this leash? Hold on. <laughs> uh oh. Please let it be a dog. I'm please waiting for let the child dog. Come like here. Come here. come here. Oh god, what come are we here. doing? This is oh, it's god. gonna be a freaking kindergartner. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, kindergartner. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. God. Yeah. I was about. See? I was just having a fucking panic attack thinking about that. Like, <laughs> thanks, oh, thanks for even entertaining that thought. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, brothers. Hi. We'll go. We're gonna go. Um. All right, yeah, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go look for uh, one of those hats. I'm pretty sure I have a 57. I'll be back. Nice. Yeah. How you doing, man? Pretty good. Pretty good. Did a bunch Not of bad. Getting, projects get, today. Getting his war crime a day in. <laughs> no, yeah. uh, unfortunately, I'm like the official uniform person for like the 34th Infantry Band, pretty much. So, those glasses you were talking yeah. about, those like the Jamie Heineman like welders glasses, like those. Oh, I can still get them if you want to see them. They're they're great. Yeah, those are like those like the ones with like the mesh shades on the sides. Yeah. Yeah, those are cool. I was trying to find one, but they've like exploded in price on eBay. They're like sixty bucks now. Like I'm not gonna pay that much for vintage stuff. I mean I pay that much for all the vintage stuff, but so here they are from the front. Oh, oh, she said hold up. Yep, there. and when you open hold them, they don't even like the screens aren't even like attached. You have to manually do the screens as well. <laughs> I... Not gonna lie, that then... not gonna lie. Other than the fact that those are absolutely hideous, the fact that the <laughs> the side screens are separate is actually kind of cool. That's I know they're like, pretty slick. That... This is this is me doing like yard work or running my sewing machine or. Yeah, no, no need, no needing needle is gonna get in through that. that or, 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 or driving, God, or driving your uh, 1993 Ford Econoline 350 panel van. <laughs> I know, around right? The These elementary are like school. the uh, the BCGs, but if they were safety glasses, they're great. <laughs> Uh, it, it, it makes it it makes it a lot safer when you're trying to when you're trying to pick up children. <laughs> like I forgot where I I found these, but it's like they're it phases like, out really it phases out your like, identification like, markers on your eyes. Yeah, not just that, but if they throw rocks at you, you can still see. <laughs> yeah, you, exactly. It's like this thing turns out, and then, you know. Oh, those are great. <laughs> With the hat, it makes it even better. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, no, he needs to. He needs to put the. Um, he either needs to pull the ear flaps down, or he needs to wear the other one. Oh, you want me to do like the uh... <laughs> the full, the full, and, kit. and then just and then just leave the ear flaps hanging out, uh, yeah, cousin like, Eddie style. Do that, like yeah, Christmas vacation, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go empty out the shitter into the cul-de-sac. I'll be right back. Shitter was full. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now you got it. Now you got to get the creepy look on your face, like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I love these classes. People give me shit for them all the time. I'm like, you just wish you had something that was this fucking hideous, but this cool at the same time. I mean, time. I mean, and, I, and it's, and in it's terms almost, of like, oh, go ahead, man. It's almost good enough that we can actually read your uh, computer screen reflection in them. <laughs> <laughs> Porn hub, weird. <laughs> No, that's on this screen. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah that's on rule, rule thirty-four. You have, you have, 
you have the virus computer and then you have the clean computer. Exactly. Like this is the good yeah, 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 yeah. one. Rule thirty four. Right. Safe rule thirty four is safety Canucks. <laughs> That's right. It's even better because yeah. I got like my '90s like Marlboro fucking hoodie on, and <laughs> yeah. I'm just like the biggest piece of white trash right now. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I anytime I just think of Canadians, I'm, unfortunately I think of stereotypical Fargo, and that's the first thing that comes to my mind. Which is and it's not, and it's not even Canadian. Only people so. from here that sound like that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, so and the funny dumb. part is, is that anybody from Fargo knows that movie is actually a um, comedy, not a drama. <laughs> and yes, people from Fargo actually sound like that. They do. People from Fargo are fucked. They're terrible. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, but the typical the typical Uper accent is from Ontonagon. If you ever meet somebody from Ontonagon, Michigan, <laughs> Zeno, your glasses are reflecting your computer screen. No. Oh. You got the, like the fifties freaking housewife horn frame going on. I love it. <laughs> hey, it's better than the Arby's hat that uh, Jake had last week. Did you have to get that thing back or what? What the campaign hat? Yeah, the Arby's hat. <laughs> <laughs> it was the Arby's hat. It was way much better. Than no, it's a World yeah, One campaign it. hat. It's an Arby's hat. Were you a You're library? Just jealous. Were you You're a library in World War One? We're you? just jealous. You're just a crotchety old tanker who can't stand the fact that the blue cord is better than anything tankers get. Well, no. they get a sledgehammer, though. I mean, to be fair. I don't know about you, but I feel like a tank's pretty good. I feel like the infantry doesn't get those. I'm just yes, <laughs> but my boots don't break. <laughs> oh! Shots yeah, fired. but all you guys have is blue cord to throw at the enemy. That's it. Yeah, but we can strangle them with it. Yeah, we can, I don't we can know, use it I don't as a garrote. It's necessarily true that what the infantry has isn't broke either, because pretty much all of them have some percentage of disability, and it's all mental. It's it's back problems. I mean, back yeah, problems. It's back problems. Problem. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it's all this for eleven bravos or eleven whatever the fuck. Well, you you know what, Zeno? And there's one thing that we can do in the infantry that you can't do in in the armor, and. That's not fall off a tank in the middle of the night. Oh! <laughs> hey. <laughs> it's, well, a good, it's, a, it's a good alarm clock. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, if you're mechanized, you can fall off a Bradley. We weren't, though. We were, we were just <laughs> freaking... No, like... the 32nd Brigade stopped being mechanized right before I enlisted. But yeah, it was like 99 and 2000. Yeah, they, they stopped. But here's the thing that we can do being armor. Two. Our weapon can carry us. We don't have to carry our weapon. Yeah, yeah. but ours doesn't weigh 70 tons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it doesn't run off jet fuel either. Just say it. Hey. JP4, baby. JP4, JP8. JP8. We're so cool. We have it. We're, we're so cool. We have a jet engine in our tank. Gas turbine from the Huey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's just funny. It's like the people that like um they, they watch war movies and like They'll think that like an Abrams and whatever is like it sounds like an old like M60 or whatever. The oh no, origin. no, no! It's like no. When they fire up, they go. <laughs> it's like what the fuck, you know? <laughs> and the best part is when the infantry is trying to get warm and we're like back blast area clear, and they're like, "Oh yeah, screw it, just turn it on." Okay, fine. Fire it up, and they get hit by a fireball. What the fuck? I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, and also three minutes of JP8. Like fresh, yeah. half burned. Yeah, food. breathing in the JP8 exhaust. Oh, your lung yeah. cancer is not service connected. <laughs> your yeah. migraines aren't service connected. <laughs> yeah, your super cancer isn't service connected. I heard a fucking paladin fire up one time when we were at a uh, striker, Jake. Um, and uh, I heard a paladin actually fire up, and I was like, because I heard Abrams fire it up because you they, know they, they were... actually had paladins in theater in 09. They you didn't oh they were at striker and they would yeah, they, and they never left did they i don't think so but anyway i was walking somewhere for some reason and i heard a fucking paladin fire up and i literally jumped i was like what the fuck is that because it was so loud and i'm like oh my god because they had the, like the paladin. fucking uh what it's a paladin that's why it's loud man <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know but like it's because they had the freaking um big. 
Yeah, did you know paladins are loud? <laughs> <laughs> All right, fuck it, I guess. I guess fucking cool story, Nate. You just fucking... You and Devin just shit-can that fucking bitch. Right off the fucking bat. No chance. No chance. I'm sorry. Fucking I uh, had to, man. Devin set me up. I had to. I have to. That's like... Yeah, you know, I, I, never, I never want you and Devin to meet. <laughs> this right here is fuck. No, what we do, Mike, what we do is we get them to meet, but we take them there in separate vehicles, and then we leave with the vehicles and leave them there. And then we just have a good time. It sounds yeah. like that. I don't, I, don't, I don't see what the problem is. Yeah. <laughs> they, would, they would not fuck each other. Devin would somehow get pregnant. It's going to be funny. It would be our fault. Mike and Devin Jim would driving be, away like, ha, 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 we really got him. And it's just like, ah, that's just a Devin would be the pu- Devin would be the pusher, and he'd still get pregnant. <laughs> that's what I mean. Like, so we have, to, we have to deal with that shit storm, that inevitable shit storm of like, oh, lawsuits, uh, lawyers, uh, cease and desist, blah, blah, blah. It's like, I don't want to deal with that shit. Like, you have to deal with that. the, you have to deal with the bearded baby and be like a circus freak. Yeah. The, the like baby will be five and it'll grow more facial hair than Mike does. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and it will excel at committing war crimes. <laughs> it, it'll, it will literally be the next Chairman Mao. These two cunts are at a thousand right now. Yeah. You guys, why don't you just, why don't you just, you should just like, just get it done. Do, do, the, do the grudge fuck thing. Like we, we haven't. Pop out the before. hate baby. Just <laughs> pop it out. Get it over with. I mean, uh, getting together, getting together with the guy from regular car reviews and Harold from the Red Green show and see how that turns out. Okay. This ought to be good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, Devin, you were just called Harold from the Red Green Show. Well, come on now. The Red Green Show is great. Yeah, it is. Too yeah, bad it's I the only it decent day. thing that ever came out of Canada. That's not true. <laughs> Mike quotes the Trailer Park Boys all the time. <sighs> no, that's Newfoundland. They're a bit different. Nova Scotia, but yes. Um, it's... Fuck you, Devin. Um... <laughs> because I, I can't really disagree with you there. Well, I know that. I know you can't disagree with me. So okay. So so literally out of an entire country that's almost the size of the United States geographically. Um two things. Population of clean. four. Poutine and maple syrup. <laughs> so we're already up to Poutine five, is, Mike. Like. Poutine is gross. I that's not oh. true. Fuck yourself, Jake. Have you ever had actual good, like, like good? Like, not, yeah. not just like, not just like fucking McDonald's fries with fucking, like, you know, ranchero cheese you can get at Walmart and fucking, you know, can no, brown. Actual bread. French fries, actual steak and steak fries with cheese curds and brown fucking gravy. Fuck the gravy. Fuck the gravy? <laughs> I think your, one face, order, your, you, face, you, you, your face you know. when you said fuck the great <laughs> well, Jesus good Christ. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm being e- either either keep the gravy and the fries or the fries and the cheese curds. Not all three. Okay, okay, dick face. Okay. Oh, hats okay. off, hats okay. off. Hats oh, fucking no. angry. Oh, yeah, fucking, there we go. You are a fucking Wisconsinite. You claim to be. And you say Fuck the gravy, and then you bitch about having cheese on fries. I love no, just no, about it's not. Is, it's not I'm like, not bitching that. about the cheese on the fries. Did you did you listen to my words? I said either the fries <laughs> and the cheese curds, or the fries and the gravy. Not all three. No, go fuck yourself. You have the cheese curds, the, the gravy ruins the cheese curds. The gravy's got to be hot enough to melt the cheese curds. That's the thank thing. you. Yes, like what the fuck, Jake? I'm really disappointed in you right now. I'm, I'm well, actually... I don't like pickles either, so fuck off. Hey, now. That's Whoa. rude. Whoa. That's good for you. No, that I can understand. Yes, Jake's a fucking retard, but like, um, come on. Fuck the gravy? I just... I didn't stutter. 
This, this is a hill I will die on. So maybe I'm not going to go down there next weekend because I can't. I don't know if I can trust you anymore. <laughs> At least I'm honest about fuck the gravy. I, what the fuck, though? Like, I mean, that's really. I don't want to know about what you did. What you did in the '72, fucking the gravy. I don't want to hear about that. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! This that was still under "Don't Ask, Don't Tell." That was before Obama was president. That's fine. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> well, Jake still kind of violated that after. Shut up. That was supposed to stay in the field. That was supposed to stay in the field. What happens in the field stays in the field, Mike. Okay, I guess I just violated every 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 code that's ever existed. Yes. My bad, my bad. You're not... Disappointment. I disappointment. To be fair, you did not smile that I heard or saw, so... That's fair. It was a horrible experience that shall never be repeated or talked about. Experience. Too busy thinking horrible. about fucking the gravy. No. Can you show me, you show me on the potatoes? The gravy was the lube. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that. There we go. See, now we're getting somewhere. So you said you said something like, "What was it? Poutine? What the fuck was that?" It's French fries, cheese curds, and gravy. See, poutine means something else down here. So I was like, kind of like. What the That's fuck because you're all inbred about? hicks down there <laughs> who hang out at fucking elementary uh, school playgrounds uh, when there's nobody, when there's no kids at school. <laughs> all you're right, listen to RCR guy like that. Holy shit! <laughs> I will. Uh, I mean, it's a fence. It doesn't have to be a school fence. <laughs> but you're sitting. On, are, are, what, okay. Oh, oh, it's it's like, like, oh, oh, you're right. It isn't a school fence. There's no barbed wire on the top of it. <laughs> so, to be fair, Nate, what are you sitting on right now, currently? What am I currently sitting on? I'm currently sitting on a hill. Oh, I thought it was bleachers you were sitting on. No, I'm like <laughs> just, I'm just <laughs> sitting on a hill. <laughs> it's, this is this is this is this is this is like this is like the the reservoir pond <laughs> to a, okay. to the, a neighborhood I'm walking oh, by. Yes. Oh, yeah. to stand on, and Jake has nothing. How does this work? <laughs> Jake's a fucking retard. I mean, it's well. We all tell us something we don't know, Mike. Right, but no, uh, Nate. I literally thought when you like when you when you came in, I thought you were sitting on like like on a bleacher. It does look like that. It, 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 does absolutely, look like it that. absolutely does look like that. But no, I'm just I'm That's sitting what? on like the tiniest hill right here, and behind oh, me is a drainage pond. Okay. That's, <laughs> what, That's why I said you were sitting at an elementary school playground, because it looked like you were sitting on the bleachers. Right, so I'm not that... Okay. I, I no, so it wasn't, it wasn't to the throat. It wasn't that bad to the throat, then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I log on. I log in trying to, like, help and, like, you know, be around. You guys are like, oh, are you guys, are you being a pedo bear? Are you being we, a pedo we bear? Get, we need to get him a we, we need to get him a pedo trench coat. Oh well, we could a, a public masturbator trench coat. Mike sells great coats and stuff on I his website. The one, I got the one that I was issued for our class A's. And that's not brown enough. It's but it's black. But it's not brown. Hey, it He's a it, if it's it, if it's gonna be if it's gonna be a genuine public masturbator trench coat, it has to be brown. How do you know that? Good daddy's dick. <laughs> John LaJoey did an entire video series on it. Sure. Like 14 years ago. <laughs> sure. You don't believe me? Re that's, that's, research it sounds, study. It sounds a bit too specific for having just watched a video on it. Hey, John LaJoey is one of Canada's finest. Well, Canadians are weird. Dog, you're being ridiculous. You think? Here, I'll I'll share the link with Mike. Oh, or I'll, I'll I'll share it on the. Uh... This this whole fucking thing has already devolved into a colossal goat fucking. I love uh, congratulations, Rudy! <laughs> I get to leave. I have a cop out. So. <laughs> I was gonna say you you get a cop out on the subject. Yep. So I got I got to go to. Uh, I am lawyer. I am lawyer obligated to step away. I got to go drink some free beer and uh, yeah. Uh, free, <laughs> free beer and hot wings? No, yeah. just free beer, unfortunately. This place is not to go to fucking comedian anymore. God, dog. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, have fun, everybody. Oh, God. Oh, love <laughs> something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's oh, like, Laura, obligated to leave. 
No, he, he literally he literally said like, "Hey, I have to be out by about six thirty on the." Train. No, I know. I, I was I was on. I, I saw all those chats. Yeah. So. Uh... What you can read? <laughs> I can. Yeah, Shockingly, wow. they teach it. They teach it below the the Mason Dixon line. So. It barely. Doing, well, barely. You, you are at the perfect place to learn how to read. I mean, elementary school. <laughs> It did, it did no shit, dude. It looked just like you were Ugh. sitting on the bleachers. It does. Like, it do, no, no. I, 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 a hundred percent, hundred percent agree. You I should have been like, I, sh yeah, yeah. Oh no, I, I knew the moment you said, I'm like, yeah, this looks like a top of a bleacher set, but you know, it's not. <laughs> you show the grass, and I'm like, does he have? Did he manage to get somebody to bring him green screen in the five minutes <laughs> that you know, did or no? I'm like, I'm li I'm literally sitting like outside of like a reservoir pond on my route on my walk, and that's why my dog is like attacking me because we stopped in the middle of a walk, and she's like, "This isn't the routine." What the so hell? How long until the cops show up? That's my question. Eh, twenty minutes. It, it, if he had the trend, if he had the public masturbator trench if coat, I, three. If if I had my beard, it probably would have been like I probably would have been like midstream at this point, but you know. Now, give him the benefit of the doubt. He might not be a pedo. He might be betting on the Pop Warner football game. <laughs> For the record, not a pedo. <laughs> <laughs> Stay that right now. That. <laughs> I don't know. I can just keep saying I'm not fat. Does that make it true? Like, I mean. Sure. Uh, in this day and age, maybe. Yo, yeah, okay. I yeah, you can, claim, you can claim. You can claim to. You can identify with whatever you want to identify with. Doesn't make it true. I identify yeah. as unidentifiable. Well, <laughs> you are a nineteen kilo, so you know that Dang. that fits. You didn't really have to try for that one, did you? No. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, what's uh, better Mike, than pop I, thing or being unidentifiable? The yeah, unidentifiable. unidentifiable. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Is, okay. Like that's, I mean, every every freaking tanker, and uh, oddly enough, what I would put you guys in with is uh, submariners, right? Oh, the submariners. Two similar people that I've met in the military with way different MOSs are the most fucking similar. Neither one great, but fuck. <laughs> well, we're both stuck in a tin can for days on end. Right. Yeah. I mean, so that, that, I mean, that's just what I observed. It's it's my own personal experience. It doesn't mean it's a fact, but I mean, it's kind of well. You know. To to be fair, I have an uncle who was a submariner for twenty four years, and um, yeah, he's a little bit odd. Th yeah. Then they, again, they... he then again he was a nuke tech too. Ooh. I I um, go ahead. The problem is when you're on tanks. You don't get the luxury of submariners to go to a separate area to go to the bathroom. You either go in a Gatorade bottle or in a 50 caliber can, and you've got two other people in the same area, the size of a couch, looking at you. You got you got no privacy at all. So well, yeah, that's why that's why you act like a dog, and while you're popping a squat, you just lock eye contact with the with the. That's what I was just gonna ask. You're self dominance. Like, Fuck yeah. Oh, and this this is for Les. Oh, he, there yeah, you go, Les. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Les is watching. I just got a text. <laughs> yeah, no, he, he, he's watching, but he, he's at work. Fuck him. Fuck him like, Mike, oh. I, I sent you the link to the uh, to that John LeJoey thing. Yeah, I'm not gonna um, watch it right now. Okay. Um, but I, I I see why. I I, I get it. I, I see the yeah. trench coat. I get it. But uh, yeah. So you know, <laughs> um, so I was no, I was just gonna ask it before Jake rudely fucking interrupted me. You know, like the fucking faggot that he is, but like, um, so is how was the procedure when you're taking a shit in the tank in a in a 50 cal can? Was eye contact kind of a thing, or was it just nope? Or how did that work? <laughs> they was, stare at you while you do it. <laughs> it was just if it happens, it happens, but don't break eye contact and just continue don't shit. Break eye contact. contact. Just, I mean. You, you, Unless, don't, you don't seek out eye contact, but if someone makes eye contact with you, just look at them like. Walk. But it's a dominance thing. You have to. If they, if, <laughs> yeah. if there's, if there's you can't, moves, you can't break. If you break, yeah. to show weakness. Yeah. yeah. Uh, unless you're okay. sitting in the gunner's hole and you just got done eating an entire bag of hot pepper jerky. Oh yeah, that was uh, that was <laughs> spaghetti that was and meatballs. Mre. Yeah. No. 
<laughs> that, that, I'm referencing was, a real story. That was it's, a real bad day. That was oh, oh yeah. so did, did no, that somebody that you day. knew perhaps, and it wasn't me who did it either. Oh, so no, somebody had a bag of hot turkey and then just shat their brains out. Yeah, my gunner did. He, my <laughs> lawyer had brought my lawyer had brought on a whole bag of uh, jalapeno flavored beef jerky, and he passed it around. And I was in the driver's hole. It's like okay, so so it got passed on to me. I grabbed two pieces and started eating it, eating it. And it got got to my gunner, and it's like we're getting ready to roll out outside the wire, and it's like, hey, uh, my lord is like, hey, uh, you got that beef jerky? And I'm like, no. I give it back to the gunner, and all of a sudden it's like, dude, hey, TC, I got shit, and I hear it coming from oh. my gun from our gunner, and I'm like, this is not going to go well, and it, it's like, well, can you hold it? Well, no. Well, we're about to roll out. I got shit. Well, tough shit. I gotta go. <laughs> okay, so it's like okay, fine. So my so my TC goes into the sponsor box, grabs a rustles around for a bit, and he's like, "Here, shit in this. Here's a plastic bag, shit in this." I'm like, "Oh no, oh no, no, oh, no. 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 this is going." Oh, so God. He, so uh, my gunner proceeded to. Now remember, this is in January. Walking uh, the wall off. It was cold. <laughs> it was cold. So anyway, so he so he shits in it, and he's like, "Okay, fine." So my TC pull, pulls the bag up. And throw some sponsor box and we start rolling out. And I'm like, oh my, it no. smells like shit. Cause I got the global heater going. It's like, oh my God, it smells like shit. And it's like, well, just put up until we get out the sector. Oh my God. And we get out there. My gunner had shit all over the E plars, 90% all over it and 10% in the back. <laughs> yep. After that, I call him Duke. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just, I mean, we're talking like an explosion, a nuclear explosion that was just. We're talking crazy. diarrhea everywhere. We're talking, oh. we're talking Jackson oh. Pollock painting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh. And, and you sit there. Are you like? Are you? I'm, I'm, sorry, about, I'm about throwing up the driver's hole. Like that's oh. what I mean. That's what I mean. Are you sit there just going? You know, because I know, yeah, Abrams guys, they sit like this. Where you just going? <laughs> Basically, like <laughs> oh. wretched. It's like, oh my god! And I couldn't do shit. Oh I my god! Like, listen to the whole thing go on. It's like, it's, it's, it's like listening to a train wreck, and you know, it's coming, <laughs> you know what's happening, and you can't do shit about it. And, and the worst part is, it. is, and the worst yes. part is, is in the driver's hole. Zeno's at fucking face level with his ass. Yeah, just sitting oh. there gagging and trying to drive a fucking. Yeah, and that global heater is basically cooking the shit. Oh no! Oh, oh my God! Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, it's a, it, it's a diesel and... flame heater. It's it's hot. It's hot shit going all throughout the tank. <laughs> and I'm right, and the global heater is like right here, and I'm right here, and it's yeah. Oh my God! Oh God! Yeah. Oh, I was Which fine. Way, until said, okay, I, 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 I was fine ask. until you said I was heating it. Now I'm now I'm now I'm doing what Mike was doing. Uh, I have to ask, which way was the turret pointing when he took this shit? Forward. Oh. Okay, well, so he was like... right over your left, or right over your right shoulder. Oh, yeah. oh God. Oh. Yeah. It's so his feet good. were like seven inches away from your right shoulder. Yeah. So I'm as sure he was shooting his guts out, he wasn't even two feet away from me. And was he like, was he like, fucking all over the E plars, all over everything? <laughs> so, you know, was he, <coughs> excuse me, was, was he at least quiet or was he like a screaming? And... <laughs> well, it, it was one where you could definitely hear it where he was, he was in agony and it took a couple of minutes <laughs> and we're getting ready to roll out. And it's like, oh my God, just put the guy out to take a shit, dude. Did, did you guys, test, did you guys test fire the machine guns on your way out the gate? No. Okay. So oh. at least he didn't. At least he didn't have to traverse the turret and then test fire the coax. No. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, how long did that mission go for? You got dried pasty shit on the fucking. Inside, inside. We didn't come. We didn't come back for about two weeks. Oh, oh god. god. That's so gross. Yeah. <laughs> we were out for two weeks helping out Herden first. From Camp Striker. Yep. Oh. <laughs> oh. My fucking stomach is already hurting from laughing so fucking hard. 
Yeah. Were you in? You were in country though for this, right? So at least. Oh yeah. Yeah, that was, okay. that was a striker. This is our striker uh, helping us. Uh, BBC of one hundred first. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, because, you know, you were, yeah. you were there. What years again? Uh, December 05 to November 06. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So striker was a little bit more built up when we were there. That's why I said that. But like, yeah, Nate, striker's in Iraq, and I, I I've been to striker, and so is right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah I remember um, the name. Mike lived yeah. right next to striker for nine months. I did. I did, and I didn't realize their defect was so fucking good. And had you realized it, you would have fucking left Cropper every opportunity you had. No, oh, boy. too much of a walk. Didn't have enough time because <sighs> of the need to see. But oh my god, that's so fucking. Hey, leave the kids alone, Nate. Tell him to, I, I saw you. I, I heard, there's a I fucking heard. cat. There's a fucking cat walking across the the, the field sure, here. My dog. Sure, sure. It, right it, it wasn't a seven year old with a cell phone calling nine one one. Oh boy. All right. That you, that I'm you head just out. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm head out. My ass is wet. <laughs> All right, then. Why would you say that? <laughs> because that's I'm sitting on I'm sitting on fucking grass that's wet, dude. <laughs> and it's getting I don't know dark. Bleacher, yeah, I don't know. Aluminum <laughs> bleachers tend not to dry out after a rainstorm. <laughs> See my ass? It's on grass. See this dirt? <laughs> See this fence? He's Go got, fuck yourself. He's got snow <laughs> underneath his horse. <laughs> oh, and he leaves. He just he just well, he disappears. Said he, he said he had to go. I know. <laughs> oh God. I'm about to and, throw and, off, and, like. the worst, and the worst part was, my gunner was wearing his Nomex. So, basically, he his oh. Nomex was just brown all the way up. Yeah. Do those have do those have like a butt flap in them, like the old style like 1950s no. pajamas? No. When you gotta take when you gotta take a shit, you gotta pull the whole thing down to your waist. Oh. And then the, so uh, so he shit on he shit on the part of his Nomex that had to sit up by his neck. Yep. Yep. It was. Oh yeah. It was his Ugh. first. When I first when I got out of the turret and I'm and the first thing my TC said when when uh, we uh, parked, I all of a sudden heard, "Oh my god, you nasty fuck! You shit all the eplars." I can't. Yep. <laughs> yep. So. As I Ugh. as I saw him strip down to his skivvies, cleaning up the eplars and the sub turret, I'm like, "So you having a shitty day there, Duke? Shut the hell up!" <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's not great. Like, there's, there's so many good shit stories. Like that one's pretty grotesque, though. That's pretty fucking. Ugh. Well, if you want a better one, I was at that one special place that nobody talks about, and uh, they had the. Uh, they had the porta potties that had the uh, that had the T walls for uh, to protect against mortars. Well, oh, talking about porta potties in Iraq, we all know yeah. what that's like. Yeah, I've, I've never I've never been there, so I'm just I'm learning. Well, from you. have you ever have you ever heard one explode? Yeah. Have you ever heard, have you ever had one explode because the methane concentration got so high and a dude lit up a cigarette and the whole bank of them blew up? No. Yeah, we had that. That was an Abu Ghraib. Because nobody came to suck the shitters out, so they got super full. And because because the concrete T walls and because the because the camouflage netting up yeah, on it's top. It's all just sitting in there. Yeah. It's all just sitting in there. And this is in Jul this is in July in 06, where it's like 140 degrees and two percent humidity. And they're already up beyond full capacity because nobody will come and suck them out because nobody wants to go on a road in Michigan. Can't blame them there. And here and here comes a Joe. I'm on tower guard, and it's like, okay, all of a here, boom! It's like, what the hell? Yeah, he lit up a cigarette and blew up the porta shitters. <laughs> Did he get a purple heart for that? I don't know. <laughs> imagine, imagine, <clears throat> just imagine being that guy and getting a purple heart, not having to pay property taxes or anything like that again. Full disability as much as you can get from the VA for literally lighting up a cigarette while taking a shit in a full porta shitter. <laughs> Yeah, and I, mean, I can't I'm, I'm get disability, and I can't get disability for my arthritis. Yeah, Be that right would back. be that, that. would be. I would. I don't know. Like it, it's it's that fine line of like, do you respect that guy or do you fucking hate him if he did get a purple heart? You know what I mean? Like that would be one of the stories where I'm just like, dude, 
that's the most unique one I've heard. But, but I mean, that. Th- there's a line there where it's like that. I respect it both ways. Got to respect the hustle. The hustle. And I mean, the, yeah. The hustle of blowing up a bank of porta shitters. No, the hustle of actually getting the VA to pay you for blowing up a bank of porta shitters. <laughs> yeah. Mike remembers the porta shitters that we had out at fucking McGregor. <laughs> the ones with the glory holes cut in them and the oh, yeah. the fucking yeah, they yeah. Were, and they were and those ones were overflowing too. Dude, that's the thing is I, I literally a couple times I just held my shit because I'm like, not gonna do it. I'll just go piss out and whatever. But we had females with us, and I'm like, I don't want to get an EO complaint. So okay. Yeah. I'll just go behind a trailer and just piss, or I'll piss in the shower, you know, whatever. And I held my shit, you know, because it was like what two or three days after they were overflowing, then they'd come out and suck the shit. And I'm like, yeah. but they're literally overflowing. Like there's shit and piss all over the oh, bottom yeah. of these porta shooters. And I'm like, the shit yeah. is up beyond the seat. It's piled That's up. That's what beyond I mean. The every time, seat. every time the wind blows, it, it just seeps or it, it like blows shit and piss over the top of this thing. Oh, and it's yeah. like, oh God. And no, so I would just hold my shit and it's wonder why I had colon problems. But um, anyway, uh, no, but McGregor was fucking. That was that was, that that was, was an a, armpit. McGregor was worse than Beering. Oh god, by, by by fucking miles, yeah. McGregor was worse than mm. Navistar. <clears throat> well, and I remember because like um, the food was not bad because they had the Mexicans working there, and they actually had a lot of Mexican food there. Legit, yeah, and the Mexican and the Mexicans were actually cooking. Wow. They weren't just preparing. No, it was no, it was like they they had the US shit that they would prepare, they'd heat up, but then they would have their own shit. And like they they because I asked one time, I'm like, hey, can can I have that? And they're like, Oh yeah, go for it. So I was having freaking carnitas, you know, fucking just and the and the part that sucked was having to fucking stand while we were eating. I didn't they mind that. that shit. Oh yeah. you know where the worst yeah. port of shitters were it wasn't McGregor, it was fucking beering. Or not beering, um, blanding. Oh, dude. Oh, my God. So I'll, I'll tell you a little Fuck story. That. And you tell me yours. So because, yeah, we were we were in the same circus tent. I remember that. And you and I. So kind, we, it was it was kind of hard not to be. They had two and a half companies in that circus. No, tent. I know. There was like four, almost 500 people in this fucking tent. And there was one row of, I think, 13 porta shitters. For all of us, like, and also there the was, other tents. There was four of those fucking circus tents. We had an entire fucking battalion on that fucking crowd. And so there was thirteen. Bob. There was like thirteen porta shitters total for an entire battalion. And all right. male, male and female. I walked in there one day. It was it was only like day. F- it was not that. I mean, I probably will say three or four. Yeah, days. we were we were there for three weeks. Yeah, and it was like the first few days I was in there. I go in there and I'm looking and there is literally, I don't know. We'll see if the, the stream gets zapped. I don't give a shit if it does. There was bloody tampon, shit, bloody tampon, just straight up period of clots. On top of oh, that, right. there was a mountain of shit and all that stuff. And I was just like, okay, then. So I, I did this thing called snow capping it. We'll just leave it at that. And but you, you, you kind of pick it up when I'm I, that, I get the idea. Yeah. Cause I was just like, this is so incredibly fucked up. Like, yeah. What are we doing here? And and that, yeah, blanding was <laughs> uh, we call that shit lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it was it was shit and uh blood clot lasagna. Yeah, we'll, we'll mm-hmm. that way. It was Oh, God, I'm just thinking about just like fucking, and it was like, I get it. I get how the female system works and everything, but it's like 13 porta shitters for probably like, in the battalion. What do we have? Like six, 700 people. Yeah. 650, 700, somewhere in that. 13 porta shitters for 600 people. Yeah, that ain't going to last long. Ain't going to cut it. <laughs> it didn't no. even last two days. No, because no. I, I, I can't remember if it was like three days or four days, but like I went in there and they were like, it was up to the top. And the I'm battalion, like, the battalion medics, all of the battalion medics went to battalion command and said, "That shit needs to get fixed now." Well, yeah. 
didn't listen and they were almost overflowing and yeah. we're like we're like okay this is a problem and then we got through that three weeks miraculously and then i i would have rather i would have rather slept in a fucking sleeping bag on the ground in the fucking woods then go then live in that fucking fest tent at blanding ever again when it was funny because like you know bravo company you know or jake and i's company were in the middle of this tent like in the very middle and all of a sudden about i don't know it was a day like six or seven <laughs> people on the outside got dysentery and it started moving in all right and it's like oh fuck you know we're in the middle it's just we're gonna get the end of it you know and yep. we have to go out and train and all that shit. And it's like people are just absolutely ill. And then I never got it. I had it in basic, but I never got it at a blanding because it stopped at a certain point. And I, was I like, didn't get it either. Yeah, we got, we got I, I don't think most of Bravo Company got it, which is weird. No. Because we were right in the middle. And you'd think that there's two sides that are moving well, in. We also had our own door, too. Because there was, yeah, the it was in the middle. middle. Yep. There was the doors on both ends, yep. and there was one door on each side in the middle. And we were right and, there. Yeah. And my bunk was literally like four four racks away from that door. Yeah, I was probably five or six, but yeah, it was yeah. pretty close. But we here's the thing: is like we, um, you know, Zeno, we we just we spent a lot of time outside just walking around because we're like, yeah, we we didn't. The only time we were in that fucking tent is when we were changing. When we were cleaning our weapons and when we were sleeping, or somebody was uh, popping off a smoke grenade, but uh, we won't, we won't <laughs> talk about that. <laughs> I think I told you about that once, you know. I think so. Yeah, it was. He, we had just gotten back from. Uh, it was like he, he, had, he was. It was John. It, yeah, it was, I know, it was, I know who it was. Yeah, it was one of those exercises where um, they took all of the e4s and it said okay e4s you're now the e5s for this training for this training situation e5s you're the e6s e6s you're the e7s yep. they bumped everybody up for, for this training and that meant john got uh got a smoke grenade in case he needed it because he was acting he was acting as a team leader purple well we're he put it in a magazine pouch and we're you know we're back in the tent at the end of the day and we're cleaning our stuff out and our my team there my team leader says to John because John was in my in my fire team says to John uh hey can I get that smoke grenade back and John's like sure no problem he opened he pulls the velcro on his magazine and pouch hear, pop and then you just and then you just see John go running past with He's a trail of it. purple smoke behind him <laughs> all <laughs> right <laughs> He's holding the son of a bitch, and he goes <laughs> running out the door. It's everywhere in the fucking tent. Everywhere. Uh, yep. Yeah. We heard that pop thing. over the din of a tent of 250 guys. Oh, it was, right. Yeah, it was a lot of people. And, yeah, we were just sitting there because we are like, God, it's going to be nice to go to sleep. That was a fucking bitch. Okay. And then pop. <laughs> what the fuck? And then you, who, I don't know who it was, but somebody, one of the NCOs from Second Platoon said, what the fuck? Fuck! <laughs> I think that was Penny. It might have been, yeah. And, like... and and here was the here was the kicker. So Zimmy was in the tent at the time when that happened. Yes, yes. And you Zimmy just me. looks yeah. over. Zimmy just looks over at us because Zimmy was on the other side when yeah, this he, happened. He was by me. He was by me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was on the other side of the tent from us when this happened, and I saw Zimmy just look over and watch John run out trailing a. A, a, a trail of purple smoke. <laughs> well, here's the thing: is I remember, and, and, and I remember looking it, over. Yeah, I remember looking over really the, quick after it popped off, and John had dropped it. Yeah, he was fumble fucking, and so it was just going off. Yeah. And if if people are watching, if you've never held a smoke grenade, which you shouldn't, they they're burn. Hot. They're really hot. And yeah, he, was, it, he grabbed this thing and he's like doing a hot potato thing as he's running. They literally him. shoot. They literally shoot a flame six inches out of the bottom yep. of the of the grenade when they're when they're burning. Yep. Yep. and they're really hot and they stink so bad. I and actually the, never minded the smell. Well, it was kind of like a firework smell, right? It's yeah. like you know the the the, the sulfuric kind of you know. Yeah. Um, I, I, I've never really minded the smell of smoke grenades, but anyway, yeah, Zimmy looks yeah. Zimmy looks over, watches John run out. The next thing I see, I see Zimmy walking over to Mockler my platoon sergeant or our yeah. platoon sergeant and he's and he's talking quietly to mockler and like a half an hour later i actually i'm sitting next because john's john's rack was right next to mine 
I hear I hear um, Penny come over my my squad our squad leader, and I hear him whispering to John. John, I'm sorry, I have to do this. I had to take you outside, and I have to smoke and smoke the shit out of you. <laughs> no pun intended, but yes, I, I have to smoke the shit out of you. So they go outside behind one of the tents. It's and, like an hour and a half. Yeah, and, and I I walked out at one point because this at the same time at roughly the same time I was finding out that my mom was filing divorce. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, that was roughly the same time. So I'm outside on the phone with my dad because you know his wife of 29 years just filed for divorce and had the cops escort him out of his house. And I look over and I see John. You know, high crawling, low crawling. You know, all the all the shit. He had a two forty, did he not? Uh, not at that no, point. For, he for might that, have at one point. No, 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 for the PT session, was yeah. that? Was that? That might no, have it was, somebody else. No, it, it it was it was just John. I think Penny was just having John do calisthenic type stuff. Not okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, that was a different. That was a di- oh, I know who it is. But, I got it, I got it lined up. Yep, we're good. But the whole time. The whole fucking time, they were both just laughing their asses off. Like it was not punishment. That smoke session was not punishment. That it was, was them just laughing their asses off. But it because lasted the only, a while, then yeah. It's the like, only person who had a fucking problem with that was Zimmy. Well, and the rest of the people in the fucking tent that had to deal with the goddamn smell because we had to. Then we had to open up all the doors. But maybe you know what? Maybe that's why we didn't get sick. Is because of John's smoke grenade. And then every, because we actually had to air, we, we actually had to air the place out. Huh? Maybe he was actually saving us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> possible too. I mean, you think I can't remember exactly like day for day, like what no, it was on there. That, like, that was that was more towards the end of the end of the. Yeah, training. it was like I think it was half yeah halfway or, uh, but who knows? But yeah, it was that was just fucking hilarious. Like, I just, we were just about to get to sleep when we heard, <laughs> the and then John <laughs> runs out. Up. He, he's he was. He, I don't even think. Uh, I don't even think he had shoes on. I think he was in his socks. No, he was in. Ugh. He was in probably socks or bare feet. And yeah, he was also doing the hot potato with it as he's running out. Yeah, yeah. He's he just, he's wearing he's, he's wearing, he's, wearing yeah. he's wearing ACU pants. He's wearing he's got yeah. his T-shirt on and and either bare feet or sock feet, and he just. <laughs> I'll never forget no. that. <laughs> ah, that was that was probably the best fucking day of Blanding. Well, it was most entertaining for sure. Other than the day we actually got to go to the fucking beach. You guys just go to the beach? Yeah, we got to go to the beach one time. It was like it was like one of the last couple of days that we were actually there. We got to go to the beach. We got to go to the PX. I actually bought a pair of boots. I went to the PX, but I didn't go to the beach. Yeah. Yeah, I, I bought a pair of Ultima uh, well, I, Panama oh, Soul boots. Oh, dude, so I was telling um, I was telling Don yesterday. I was just talking with him bullshit a little bit, and uh, uh, so you know, Don's a Vietnam veteran that I um, had a conversation with back in January. I, I told you, I told you about that, Zeno. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so he was in Vietnam and whatever, and I told him about. Uh, I'll just say his last name, Brenner. Okay, I told Don about Brenner because he's like, he's like, you know. I met a couple of psychopaths when I was in the military, but that's about it. Everybody says you're a psychopath if you're in the military, maybe to an extent. I'm like, yeah, I agree. I've only met a couple as well. And I'm like, this guy though, I got along with oddly enough, because I was nice to him. And so when you're talking about going to the PX at Blanding, what happened was like Brenner. Um, so Zeno, this guy had volunteered from the Minnesota guard to deploy with us. Right. And, this is, I think, his fourth or fifth combat deployment since Desert Storm, right? Okay. And this guy, he's just a average, like, he's kind of a smaller dude, older dude as well. And his ACUs were almost white. They were really faded. And he, he would just sit on his, his cot in this tent, and he'd just be like... Nobody would talk to him. And so I was like, you know, I'm 18 years old. I go over there, and I just sit on the cot across from him and i was like hey how's it going you know my name's birch you know first name is mike he goes yeah i'm so-and-so brenner um i was like so why did you volunteer to go with us he's like because i like being in combat <laughs> and i'm like okay i was like so like you know he goes yeah i heard you guys are an infantry infantry brigade combat team and you're deploying and he goes 
I just love killing people. That was like how, yeah. And I was like, okay. Sure. Got to respect the honesty. No, he was. And he's just like, yeah, I just like, I like killing people in combat. It's, it, I just feel at home there. And I'm like, all right, well, how many times, you know, you've been deployed before and all that stuff. And so I just get into it and I, I start asking him about his life and everything. Cause just think like people think that psychopaths are just like incapable of having a conversation or, you know, talking or being human. <clears throat> no, that's not the case at all. I was interested. And so I was asking him, you know, anyway, long story short, we get to be kind of acquaintances, right? Right off the bat, everybody else avoids him or he just, you know, he does his job very well. He's a great infantryman, but they just kind of avoid him because he's weird. Right. I liked him because he was nice to me and vice versa. And then, so I found out that he was, um, cause he never wore a combat patch. And I said, yeah, but you've been on five or four combat deployments. Why don't you wear a combat patch? And he's like, yeah, I don't know. I just, I guess I just never bought them. And so <clears throat> bring that story back, Jake is like, I got to go to the PX one time on Blanding and I was like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to buy it. Cause he was in first calf in desert storm. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, so I, I bought a first cab patch for him and I brought it back to the, the circus tent. I said, Hey Brenner, I got you something, man. And I got him that. He goes, Oh, this is... he puts it on his right shoulder. He goes, I like that. That's really cool. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Anyway, through the deployment, I've heard some really cool stories about that guy. People were terrified of him. He's a crazy dude, according to people. But I never had a problem with him. Anyway, we get back from our deployment, and it's maybe about, I don't know, a year back, and we had drill weekend. So we're sitting there at the armory, and um, he shows up. And he's got, like, long hair. He, he, he had ETS and everything. He'd been out, and he was good to go. But he drove there on his motorcycle. He had long hair. And I recognize him. He's walking past everybody. And people are like, hey, how you doing, man? And he's just walking past him. He walks up to me. He goes, hey, Birch, how you doing, man? Man, you got fat. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Brenner, man, how's it going? I'm like, yeah, I got fat. Like, I've been drinking and eating like shit, you know, whatever. And he goes, no, nah, how you been? And I'm like, I've been, I've been all right, you know, back, you know, and uh, just talking. And, you know, he showed up. And it's funny because his, his license plate at that point on his bike was uh, VBIED. <laughs> okay. I'm telling you, this guy is a character. He's awesome, right? A really crazy yet awesome person. And um, but it's just it's insane the people you meet when you're in. You know, there's a lot of people that you make friends with, you make acquaintances with, you never want to see again. You fucking hate Almost people. All of them. Most, but like you know, there's some people that you're like, I wonder how he's doing. You know, like occasionally. You know, and um, well, it was cool. Oh, there's some that you don't want to see that you don't want to see that about. Uh, I found that with my uh, platoon leader. I uh, saw what he was up to, and uh, he's into dudes. Not as you bad know, as being into kids. You you know you know who I'm talking about, Jake. Uh, the the PL that. Uh, my PL, the the uh, green tabber, the one that tried getting us killed, and he the, and we saw the one that the, the one that filed flamer, the one that filed thirteen your silver star. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Yeah, we had a PL a PL shit canning a silver star or anything like that for below an E seven. Huh. Yeah, we. I mean, that's that doesn't sound like the military at all, especially at that time. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. he was guaranteed a fucking bronze star. Yes, yeah, we're I, fucking dude, going there. Don't get me fucking started on you, Jake. Jake, you know this. Do not get me started on fucking the award system and what it's become. Yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. We're all on the same yeah. page. Let's just let's just put it that way. We're yeah. we're, we're yeah. Twenty bucks. Twenty. I, I'm going to say this one thing on the top, and then we can move on to something else. Twenty bucks is that Zimmy's got a bronze star license plate. <laughs> Um, no, no, no. I, no, I, I don't think he, let me think about this for a second. Cause I had never even, that it never even crossed my mind. 
I think he would have, like I have an Iraq, you know, war vet plate, which is whatever. You can call me a douche for having that, but it is what it is. I don't think he would. Well, fuck. Making me think. I, I, I actually, I actually, as big of a fucking fat douchebag fuck as he is and was, I don't think he would go that far. Okay, see, I, 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 I don't ever bet 20 bucks. We'll do a gentleman's bet of $1, okay? <clears throat> if we ever find out and you're correct, I owe you a dollar. I would, I would bet fair. against that, though. I'd bet against that. You, doesn't he live somewhere near you? Maybe. I, I mean, I, I could find where, you know, he's at, but like, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't seen that fucker since 2012 and I don't care to again. Yeah. Some people just need to be uh, drowned in, drowned in a deep fryer. Mm, we used to good oil. No, no. Most deep fryers use that nasty trans fat crap that makes your gut explode. No, oh, yeah. The power of the calcistectomy compels you. Yeah. Yeah. So so we'll we'll uh we'll, we'll deep we'll drown them in the, those type of deep fryers. It works. Because then it's not wasting anything. Mm. Nick, Hold is it bedtime, second. buddy? Mm. Is it bedtime, Mr. Nick? Oh. Yeah, ain't seen him in a minute. He's got two bottom teethers coming through. Yeah. And he's got hiccups. <laughs> you really got hiccups, bud. You going to bed? <clears throat> okay. Well, you have a good night, Mr. Nick. Love sweet dreams. I love you. Go to mama. There's mama. There's your favorite mama. Okay, um, <clears throat> I went for a run today, which was really dumb because I was like, oh, it's a little windy out. It's not that bad. And then I, you know, put running clothes on and I'm sitting there and I get down about half of what I usually run. And I'm just like, that metallic taste is coming up because of the cold. And I'm like hacking shit up. And I'm like, oh, fuck. So I turn around, go back. I finish out about three quarters of what my run would be. And then. I've been hacking up shit all day from the cold because I didn't realize it was that cold out with the wind. And it's like, ouch. So yeah, sorry if I'm coughing my fucking coughing my lungs out. But anyway, no, the the um yeah, the award system, man. Like I, I've been talking about this with some people, you know, like Jonesy and whatever, and uh it's just like either have the awards or don't. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like <clears throat> either have them or you don't, because when you give some fat fucking retard, like our first sergeant or my first sergeant was, well, even yours got one too, and he didn't do shit on that one. Um, when you give them a bronze star, it's like, no, a bronze star is a, an award for valor, right? That's what I was always under the impression of. No. Um, why did they get that just for showing up because of their rank you know because there was a lot of e7s and higher who their careers were basically stagnant and the only way they could read they could actually qualify for promotion was with a big award like a bronze star i know that but like you know what i'm saying is like how did it get to that point where it's like how about how about i just I, okay i'll just sum this up I basically wish that the military, especially when you're deployed to a combat zone, would be more on the meritocracy system. If you sit on your ass, you don't do anything, that's fine. You still, you showed up, you get a combat patch, so fucking be it, right? If you yeah, show you, up... Yeah, go ahead. Just showing up to a combat zone should be enough, worth enough promotion points to, um, you know, restart a, a stalled career. You shouldn't have to have bullshit awards that you didn't fucking right. Yeah. 
yeah and that's the thing is like <clears throat> what was really fucked up too is at a certain point like when the whole thing with my cib like i've already explained to jake this whole thing jake knows the story i'm not going to get into the whole fucking thing right now um on stream but like it's odd because like when they said hey you can get your cib now i'm like oh it's 15 promotion points that's the, in my mind at the time that's what i thought I didn't think of it like, oh, you fucking just earn a combat infantry badge, right? Yeah. I just thought, oh, it's 15 promotion points. And I'm like, okay. And then things happen, blah, blah, blah. And then um, I get back from a leave and they're like, well, you can't get a CIB because of this, this, and this, because we're under MPs, which is bullshit. But like, anyway, they're like, you can get your cab though. And I was like, okay, well, that's only 10 promotion points, but it's still better than nothing. I never looked at it as like, hey, I earned this fucking qualification badge and i'm getting fucked i'm getting pencil fucked i never thought of it that way i just was like oh it's 10 promotion points it's 15 yeah i can still do that it's like why is it that way you know like why is that ingrained in, especially in ncos and sncos and you know officers <clears throat> i don't know for us it was always the points were always pegged down at 798 so no matter what you did you could never get you could never go to the promotion board because what you need you an 800 to get to the promotion board? No, 796 is pegged out. You need you need a two-year degree, a four-year degree, a couple deployments, a couple medals, PLDC, WLC, b oh, really? a couple others to get that. Yeah, I mean you can you what gotta, the fuck? And you gotta get you gotta get the SEALs recommendation, you gotta get a couple couple other things because they're all worth points, and you gotta get all that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. 798 is basically we're not promoting anybody. And then you said 05 and 06, so like that's where it started coming from. Yeah. That's why we were thinking that way, or I was thinking that way, rather. I can't speak for Jake, but like, uh, yeah. I, I actually went to a promotion board one time, like a month and a half after I got my E4. Well, how'd that go? I was completely unprepared for it because I had just yeah. gotten my E4. Right. There you go. Yeah. So it's like, I wasn't even promotable, and they said, "Well, it'll be good. Ex it'll be a good experience. So go to it anyway." And I'm like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> okay then. Yeah. That that was at AT 2007. Yeah. And they and that was the last time they did promotion boards in the 32nd Brigade for E5. Wow. Yeah, because they, they always prepared us for that, but they're like, "Yeah, it'll come back eventually," and I think it did at some point. I don't think it did. I don't know. I, I, I again, I can't speak. I don't. No, because sure. because I know that I know when I first got in and up until about oh five oh six somewhere in somewhere in there, I wasn't fully aware of it because I, you know it didn't apply to me because I wasn't high enough in rank to to worry about it. But some point in there, the army changed the requirements for getting for being promoted to E five, from you have to complete. Um, PLDC, they, they later changed it to WLC. Yeah. You had to complete PLDC before you could pin on E5. Yeah. They changed that sometime around 0506 to you have to complete PLDC, which they changed to WLC, within a year of pinning on E5. Yeah. Yeah, yes. I do remember that. Yes. Yep. And, yep. and all of... And then... And then B knock and A knock for E six and E seven promotions. Yep. They also got pushed back until after the promotion. Yeah, you can pin E six, and you got to go to phase two within six months. You got to use phase which one used to be B year for that. Yeah, phase two used to be B knock, and phase one yeah. used to be A knock. Yeah. Yep. So all of that stuff used to before two thousand five six somewhere in that ballpark. All that stuff had to happen before you could pin on the rank. Yeah, like you had the yes. you had to have you had to have command referral to go to those schools. Yeah, your your company and your company level command and bata probably battalion level command had to write had to cut you orders to go to those schools so you could pin on the rank when you graduated the school. But here's yeah. the problem that we had too is you know this Jake is we had a bunch of uh, E4Ps. Yeah, you're exactly right. Yep, we had a bunch of E4Ps, and you know a lot of them who went to wlc before we oh, deployed yeah i didn't go to wlc no no but they went to wlc yeah and they still were not 
pinned and they weren't promoted until we got in country. That's because that the slots like, didn't exist. Right. And then they created Good. slots that didn't exist. And it's like, well, how does that work? Because you just fucked. Because there was a bunch of E4, E4Ps who had not been to WLC, who got corporal while we were in Iraq, yep. as you know. Pissed and then we got back. Off. Yeah. And then we got back. They're like, well, no, you're back to a spec four. See, what I think, what what I suspect happened there, I have no evidence of this, but what I suspect happened was when my platoon and E4 mm -hmm. promotable Zane, when my platoon and that one squad from third platoon got split off to go to Delta Company, mm -hmm. we were taken off of Bravo Company's books. Which, but we, but the positions, the, the oh, personnel so slots, that happened. Yeah. the personnel slots didn't get taken off of Bravo Company's books. Bravo Company just lost half of its size. Well, a little bit more than half. I mean, I'd say well, about sixty-five percent. Well, that that's you know that that's pedantics right there. But I know, but like, but the, what I'm the, saying is like that would point, make sense though. For but the point is, is, half of the slots were suddenly vacant, but still present on the rolls. Yeah, that's that could have been that could have been because because the only and, and then we were thrown in with Delta Company, and all of a sudden, you know, for whatever reason, we were able to have three E fives per squad. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. So, something something got fucking weird with, with all that shit because there are people who were E four Ps and deserve to be team leaders yeah who got pinned corporal while we were there so that i think what that was I'm actually back. for yeah I'm back. like right on and, no, uh, no daniel came back ah i think what, what that was actually for like the whole corporal thing like the the outbreak of corporals is so that like on the fob and shit they would be recognized as ncos yeah to other units and shit yeah, yeah. It, pro probably mainly to the to the fucking MPs because they wouldn't res respect anybody who didn't have rank. Oh, trust me, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> now our uh, our gunner who had uh, shit all over the Eplars, he, you know, we we also called him Pee Wee because his word because he had a word of the day stop loss, and because he'd been stop loss like about a month before we deployed, and uh, he was a corporal as well. But the fun but the fun part was. When you go to PCS, you you don't keep corporal. You go back to specialist. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, we deployed and we got back and he got stop lost and he didn't get, he he wasn't able to get out as a corporal. He got out as a specialist. It's like, oh, fun. Yeah. That, that's what happened to a lot of our, what I was just saying is a lot of our E4Ps that Jake and I were talking about um, who got corporal in Iraq. When we got back about, I don't know, you, you had been out because you finally got the fuck out, Jake. But like, yeah. Um, they 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 told them they're like you're still a team leader but you're a specialist and they're like huh they're like our oh, corporate doesn't exist anymore in the infantry well that's yeah. what they did to newt well i know it's what they did to him and other people yeah. and it's like well does it, it, it the corporal is still a rank in the united states army yeah and um, i think it's grossly underutilized Gro i think i think spec four should be fucking gone. No, what they need to do is actually what they did in Vietnam. They need to bring they they need to bring back spec fives and spec sixes. Well, that's what I'm saying. Either you do that or it's gone. Yeah. There's no spec four. No, they, they, they I think they need to bring back the spec fives and spec sixes because how many E fours did you know? How many spec fours did you know in in your time in who were fantastic, fantastic, smart motivated soldiers maybe not motivated by then who were not leadership potential and weren't getting promoted because they weren't leadership potential and they were forced out because they ran out of time and grade move i know more out. Yeah. i know more than one <laughs> i know a lot and do you, do you remember Hermie? oh yeah i i i, I yep, yep yep Hermie was one of them he should have um, been an E6 by the time I got into that unit. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, he if if, if Spec Five and Spec Six were available. Well, but here's the thing: is like in, in okay, so here's okay. In a combat MOS like 19 series, 11 series, 13 or was it 12 series? No, not 21. Um, 18 series. I don't see a place for spec ranks anymore, unless you're doing. Well, it used to be specialist. Like you're. Yeah. You're okay. So okay, but, never mind. But never the mind. reason why I the reason why my the the logic behind me saying why I think they need to come back is to give a place, give, give promotion room for soldiers that deserve to stay in, even if they're not <coughs> leadership quality soldiers. Yeah. Cause they're not in, if you're a spec, you're not an NCO and then, yeah. but you're still getting paid the same and you have responsibility, but you're not, but you're, but you're not in the leadership slot. Well, cause like you were saying, so it's like with Hermie, he could have freaking been, a spec five or spec six mm -hmm. and been in like the arms room, you know, yeah. with our supply sergeant and everything. Yeah. Hermie was, Hermie was a fantastic infantryman. Yeah. He was super fucking smart. And when they forced him out because he, because he Tom wasn't, promo yeah, because he wasn't promotable, you know, nobody wanted, nobody wanted him as an E five because they didn't think he was leadership quality. They lost all of his knowledge and experience when they forced him. Yeah, out. I see. What, I, I see what you're saying now. Um, yeah, it's just. But I if mean, they had, if they had, if they had another couple of ranks that they could promote him to, you're never going to make it into the uh, into the senior enlisted. You're never going to make it into E78, E9 in a non leadership course or in a non leadership path. But why force them out just because they can't get promoted into a leadership slot? Do not ever fall for going into E6 because as soon as you do, your CAC card says in death. They own you until retirement. You do not have an ETS date once you hit E6. I know this. I've seen the CAC cards of like our platoon sergeants and that, and they do not have an ETS date. Their ETS says in death. And basically, as, as, as it was explained to me, they own you until you retire. You are theirs. That's not how it worked with our guys. A lot of our guys no. just that once their contract was over, they didn't if they didn't if they didn't re up, they got out with no RR or anything like that. Maybe that was true on active duty, but because that's what I was, so yeah. Yeah, so it might it might it might be a little bit different, you know, but like um yeah, because I know a lot of people who like when we got back from our deployment, there was a lot of people who were E fives, E sixes, and E sevens who said, you know what? I've had enough. This deployment was fucking retarded. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, once my contract is out, I'm done. And they got out. Uh, yeah, it, it may run different for you guys because active duty, once you hit E6, your your contract goes to indefinite. You no longer have an ETS date. So it's like yeah. if you're thinking about getting out, turn down E6 because otherwise you are theirs. Well, also, by the time, if you're E6 in active duty, you're responsibilities are different than you know junior enlisted yeah so it's not like you're gonna get stuck with every fucking shit detail like you would as an e4 with 20 years in yeah well another thing i think like i always thought this um especially after we got back right and i had a combat patch and you know i'd been there and done that but i was still in e3 i think that um the rank structure in the army should be a little bit different for enlist like lower enlisted like junior enlisted ranks i think e1s e2s yeah you're a fucking private like you are you do what you do you either are new or you got busted pfc you've been in for a little over a year probably whatever and the way the marine corps treats lance corporals is a lot different than the, the army treats pfcs yeah lance yeah. corporals are team leaders right and they're in it's, like E5 slots. Yeah. Well, and I here's the thing is like right before I got out, it was 2011. I was thrown as an E3 into a team leader slot, right? And I said, you know what? That's two entire fucking pay grades above me. I'm done. I did it for a couple of days and I was like, I'm done. Because I had I had I had E4s, you know, slick slide E4s, they'd never been deployed or everything. 
um, calling me private. And I'm like, I can't leave these guys. Like, they're not, they're not going to, I mean, they, they did, they listened to me to an extent, but like when things got rough, they're just like, oh, we'll just go back on the rank, which is what the fucking army does. And I'm like, well, th- I'm not going to do this then. Like, that's so stupid. And I wasn't getting paid for it. I'm like, but well, like, let's well, just like corporal where it's like, you're, you have, you have a lot of responsibilities, but none of the pay. Right. You have the same pay as a spec four. And it's like, yeah, but, but you're technically an NCO. That's the thing. Yeah. So you, you, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's weird, but like a PFC. And I also wish that like, I don't know. It's, it's kind of one of those things where, cause PFC is just kind of given, I got given the thing. I got two people to join, you know, after I joined and then I got PFC. No. Well, I think with that rank should come responsibility as well, because you're about to become, and that's the thing with the whole specialist rank system is like, I think kind of what Jake's saying is, is how about this, Jake? Is like, if you're a PFC, aka Lance Corporal in the in the Marine Corps, you know, same E3, whatever, but you're also given more responsibility. If you show responsibility and you show leadership, then you go to corporal, like they do in the Marine Corps, right? And if you are like a good soldier, like you're talking about with Hermie and you know, people like that. Then you go to spec four and then they find a place for you, you know, not necessarily as an NCO, but like, you know what I mean? Like it's, what do you think? I, I, I think I'm tracking like a, not quite like a scud, but I think I'm, I think I'm tracking what you're trying to get at, but yeah, they, they, the, the one thing I do respect about the Marine Corps is how they push the responsibility of leadership into the lower ranks. Yes. That's what I'm saying. That, that that's all I'm saying. Yes. Like, you don't get past you, you don't get past PFC in the Marine Corps without being able to lead troops. Th- th- that's what I'm saying is, and PFC for them is E2. Yeah. You know, and and that that's what I'm saying is, you know, E1, E2, you're junior fucking enlisted, man. Like you're you're new, you're fresh. Yeah. Um, or else you fucked up really bad. But like, uh, it's like that. And well, even new- in, e- even in the Marine Corps, PFC is actually a rank that I know. You know, you're you're proud to actually achieve that rank because everybody starts off as a fucking E1. Right. I think the army just kind of got too fucking carried away with ranks in general. Yeah. I don't think there should be as many fucking NCO ranks as the no. army has. No. Like and and seriously, one of the biggest problems that I have with the army is that there are so many fucking leadership. It's like we don't need that many people in charge. No, I need like if if you had okay, think about this and and Zeno, you know, I'm asking you too. Is like if you had corporal, sergeant, um, sergeant first class, and then first sergeant in a company. As far as like that's that's where the NCO ranks lie. What do you, you could think? Make it- it could make it work because well, it, it did work. Yeah, because the only the only roles the E six has had was to be a section sergeant, basically either be the uh, platoon leader's wingman or the platoon sergeant's wingman, and that was either lead, either lead alpha section or Bravo section. Yeah, lead alpha section because the platoon sergeant leads Bravo section, so you only have like really one one or two E sixes. But that job could be done just by either a sergeant first class or a sergeant. Yep. Well, a sergeant first class should be the senior NCO in an entire company, not a platoon. Because well, that's that... basically that's basically the way it is in, in a Marine Corps infantry unit where the gunnery sergeant is the senior NCO in a you company. You get your company gunny. Yep. You get your company yeah. gunny. Yep. Yeah. You have yep. one gunny in an infantry com- in a Marine Corps infantry company. Yeah. And your E yeah. and your E fives are the squad leaders. Your E sixes are the platoon are, leaders. Yeah. yeah. I think the Marine Corps has got a lot better handle on the rank structure and yeah. the system. And I mean, and yeah. your E eights are all staff NCOs. Admin. Admin staff. Yep. And it's like it's there's nothing wrong with that, but it's like when you get to that age and everything, you should not be out there humping with the guys. You gotta make sure the guys get the fucking shit they need. Yeah. The, the yeah. And that's what Zimmy completely failed on all the fucking time. Oh my god. Sure we had what we needed. Well, thank Christ, we I know you didn't, but like we 
Well, yeah, you did until you got until we got split off in Kuwait. But like, our supply NCO, our our staff sergeant was fucking, Kitch. yeah, impeccable. Kitch is fucking awesome. One of the best in the, and I would say this wholeheartedly in the brigade. Confidence. No army. I'd say the army. Uh, one of the best I, supply I, sergeants in the army. Yeah. At definitely time, one of the yep. definitely the best in the brigade. Oh yeah, hands down. But like, I I would actually if he at that time would have gone up against other supply sergeants in the army, like army wide, I think he would have been able to. He was so fucking good at what he did, and I um, because I've talked to a lot of active guys. I've talked to you know like Jonesy and a bunch of other people that I have. You know, I have acquaintances with and all that shit that we talk about what what makes a good supply sergeant. Well, this, this, and this. And a lot of them have horror stories because they're just fucking awful people. But like um the ones who are good, I'm like, that sounds like a good supply sergeant, but ours was fucking Yeah. Kitch, I, I don't know how well he did over in Cropper with you guys, but you know, when we were in, when we were back in the U.S., when we were in garrison, when we were in training, Kitch made sure we had the fucking gear we needed. He got us, he got us extra stuff. We'll just put it that way. Yeah, we didn't get that over in Delta Company. No, that that's what I'm saying. That's why I said once we split off in Kuwait, like you didn't have Kitch. So uh, he did. We got everything we needed and more. Um, Zeno was it. Zeno, was it your company CEO or your company supply that uh, maxed out the GSA card in Iraq? That was our CEO. How'd that happen? Well, when you're corrupt, <laughs> when you're corrupt as fuck, and uh, basically when you have the GSA card and you have internet connection, you go to U.S. Cavalry and Ranger Joe's, and you oh, and you, and you kick yourself out like you're in Call of Duty. And you make it so like your guys can't get fuck all, and they have to get it all themselves. So yeah. wait a second. Let's just back up for a second here. You said kit yourself out as a yeah. CEO. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Understood. Except, except he never went outside the wire. And uh, long story short with that one, he got let out in handcuffs by CID from Abu Ghraib. From nice. Abu Ghraib. Yeah. yeah. Nice. It, it, that's how bad it was. Yeah. Fucking it, moron. It, 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 yeah. Our Wasn't supply. he also the one that said, make sure your tanks are secure all the time when you're not on them? And his wasn't secured, so his tank got got rat fucked, including everything that was bolted down. Yeah. How many his times did you was, steal the it, engine out of it? Gosh. <laughs> that never happened. What do you, Jake? Yeah, you're just being funny. <laughs> funny, man. Funny. Funny. Yeah. We don't t- we don't talk about things that uh yeah. I'll have a coke. Uh, yeah, basically. There you go. All good. Um yeah, it's um my GCM was I didn't get caught. <laughs> yeah, I got a good cookie too, and I don't know why, but I guess I got it. It's one of those automatic awards if you can make it three years without getting an Article 15. Well, I only have they, one they for a they seven and count, a half year career. Right. They didn't count mine from basic, <laughs> which was good. I told um, I told, uh, I told another guy that was with Jonesy that day. I told him about, because I, I was like, did you hear the story about how I got an Article 15 two days into basic? And he's like, wait, you did what? And I was like, yeah. And uh, I told him that story about the fire alarm and shit. And he's mm-hmm. like, what the fuck, man? And I'm like, it happened. So I think I still hold, I think I still hold Bravo Company's record for the quickest Article 15. Well, the best part was our CEO who had told us that our tanks need to be secure at all times. And if you're, and if they're not, and I find out you're getting an Article 15, all of a sudden his tank got rat fucked. And uh, yeah, certain somebody asked him, so sir, uh, does this mean you get an Article 15? Did he? Yeah, that went over like a lead balloon. Mm. So no, yeah, of course. But hey, his tank wasn't secured, so oh well. Things happen. I mean, think things are weird in the combat zone. I mean, things just disappear. You know, exactly. It's just fucking weird how that happens, and you know, 
nobody ever really knows. Well, yeah, yeah. but the yeah, but uh, in uh, Zeno's um, Zeno's tank had all of its BII. Yep, we did. That's weird. So yeah, you your shit squared away. Hmm. Exactly. <laughs> Well, no our shit better be squared away. It's the, it's the platoon sergeant's tank. It better be so, squared away. Were you an E4 at this point or E3 or yeah. what? Yeah, okay. So yeah, you were E4. I, yeah, I, I came in E4 and I stayed E4 until my last few months in. Then I just got handed E5. Here you go. Yeah. But well, there was a, there was a story behind that, too. It was promotion out of necessity for root attachment. <laughs> Don't ever do time on root D. <coughs> it fucking sucks. Wasn't planning on it. That's why I got the fuck out as soon as possible. But uh, no, it's fine. I mean, you made it further than I did, and Jake made it further than I did. I got it in as an E three and um, got out as an E three. Okay. I, I never, I never got in trouble. I never fucked up. Besides the Article fifteen and basic, but that was a summarized. That doesn't count. <laughs> um, it really doesn't. Like it, it went nowhere. And but uh, yeah, it was um again our, our illustrious fucking dandy diamond. Who I got him to admit that he fucked me after we got back and everything. Because people who were E1s when we deployed were E4s by the time we, we redeployed, right? That pissed me off. Okay. And that I was still an E3. Yep. There was there was one time that I was the first time that I saw it when I when I went on to fucking Cropper and I and I um short guy with the first first or last name started with a G. Oh, yes. Yep, yep, yep. And I yep. saw he was wearing corporal stripes. I'm like, that motherfucker was a fuzzy three months ago. No, he no, no, he was no, not. He was a PFC. He was a PFC. But no, he was an E4. He got E4 in Texas. Um, and he so he got E4 in Texas. And um, no, I'm talking about um here, I'll just type it to you on uh, private chat really quick. Cause I I'm sorry, guys. I know you guys went all the drama, but I don't like naming names of people that really yeah. did That's fun. Okay, why did my shit just freeze? Mm -hmm. So this is an example, right, of a guy who I, I don't have any beef with him. Oh, yeah, right? pizza. Yes, there you go. And um, I had no beef with him. He was an E1 when we deployed, okay? When we got to Iraq, he was wearing nothing. He was an E4 about, I don't know, four or five months in. So okay. was my, somebody so was liked my, him then. So yeah. was my roommate. My roommate was an E2 when we deployed, you know, Dan. And he was an E2 when we deployed. He got E3, and I was like, hey, congrats, bud. We're on the same level now. You know, we're still all fucking pieces of shit. All of a sudden, before we get back, he gets E4. And then I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? And so I asked, they're like, oh, well. Uh, there's a uh, time thing, whatever, blah, 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 you know, always a fucking <laughs> whatever. And it's always about, oh, time and grade, time and service, don't have enough, they do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, so why yeah. is are people who are E1s when we deployed E4s now and I'm still an E3? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't, I don't want to, I don't care about sergeant yet because I haven't gone to fucking WLC. I'll do E4s. that when I get back. E4 is supposed to be an automatic promotion after six months time and grade as an E3. Yep. And they said some shit about fucking 18 months and that you had to get a waiver and everything. Well, then I found out that my team leader, um, I'll just type this in the chat again. I know I've tried to tell you this before, Jake, but, uh, um, Oh yeah. He, 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 yeah, exactly. And he put in, my packet twice because he was my team leader right mm -hmm. that was his job and he did he said he needs e4 like he deserves it he's shown blah 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 blah, blah. again i'm not bragging about what I, I what i was doing was my job okay and, and i was e4 doing is supposed job. to be an automatic promotion anyway there shouldn't be a packet to get it there you go and so he in fact that. i in fact i should have gotten my e4 back right before we got out or right before i got out that mm -hmm, last for sure. that last drill weekend in Marshfield, mm -hmm. I should have gotten my E4 back. Should have, but they. Here's the thing: is I got I got the dandy diamond to uh, fucking admit that he fucked me, and he's like, <laughs> I'll say this publicly. I don't give a fuck because it's like I'm not using any names yet. 
someday, someday I'm going to write about this and I'll fucking use his name. I don't give a shit because the guy's a fucking retard. And, but I also thank him every day because I'm not in anymore and I haven't been for 12 years. And I like that, but like he goes, what he told me when, when I got him to admit that he fucked me, pencil fucked me right on deployment. And then afterwards, um, he goes, well, the reason I'm so hard on you younger guys, because I want to come back here in three or four years and see you six rank on your chest. Literally what he said to me. Okay. And I just, I looked, yeah, I looked at him. I said, okay, top. Yeah. That, that's, that's fantastic. You know, that, that's a really noble thing of you to want to want, but I'm like, how in the whole chicken fried fuck do you expect that to happen? If you don't want to even fucking promote you from E3 to E4 when I fucking earned it. And he just Not goes, only- uh, yeah. uh, 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 and I was, and I mocked him. I was like, uh, 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 uh. yeah, exactly. There's my fucking answer. I said, enough said, I said, you just told me what I, what I was fucking suspecting. That's it. And, um, he was just like, well, um, uh, at AT this year, uh, you know, you might lose a few pounds and, you know, you might, you might make height and weight and all that shit. And I'm like, no, it's, I'm like, I'm not holding my fucking breath. I'm like, I don't, I don't care. I was like the first chance that I have of getting out, I'm fucking taking because of you. And I pointed out, I said, because of you. And then he's well, just not, like, uh, well, it's not just your case. It's active duty too. Everyone who's halfway oh, decent gets out because they can't, st- they can't stand the Dude, beard. we fucking, we fucking. Yeah, Jonesy and, and his friend who was on the uh, stream the other night, we've talked about that. They were active there, fourth ID as well, but they were later. They were in 09. And yeah. um, they were in 361. And um, so they had the same fucking problem where you get treated like shit for so long. And it's like, we're not, as much as the boomers want to say we're the entitled generation, we need to be recognized. And, have participation trophies like no i just want to like a meritocracy where if i do my job well for so long let's let's just have the meritocracy speak for itself i get promoted i'm in a team leader slot i'll do my job to the damnedest of my ability it'll be good right no yeah. well these people and everybody that i've talked to around the same time that we were on like gwat basically like early gwat is it's like, no, they pushed everybody out who would have been a fantastic leader. Yeah. yeah, we've had this conversation numerous times. Yeah, and I'm, I'm just I'm just getting Zeno's take on this. But, like, they, you know, Jake would have been a great NCO. I think I would have been a great NCO. Uh, my buddies, you know, Jonesy and uh, Knight would have been great. Zeno, Zeno was an NCO. Yeah. Right. And, but they, but they, they get to the point where it just, they, they push good leadership out. They either put they either push them out by basically driving them to quit on their own, or else they push them out like they pushed me out in medical, where I where I could have stayed on. Basically, if they had given me E five, I could have gone back to Fort Sam Houston and taught. But yeah. they but they gave me E five on my way out, and that was only so so that I could babysit the shitbag platoon on rear D, and that was it. More or less, you got three or four months left, and we're gonna give you E five. Go babysit while you get out against your will have fun yeah but the thing is with the medical i got medical as well and um the reason I, I fought it for a while and then i realized oh there is actually no fucking chance that i'm getting past e3 or i'm going to progress in this 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 field yeah so I, I eventually i when they were on the phone calling me one day i was like let's just go ahead and get the paperwork started and i'm like is it going to be a general or whatever they're like no it's honorable but it's medical and i'm like cool do i have to do irr they're like nope i'm like let's fucking do it yeah and i was talking to um um he was gonna pooch a while back and uh you know he's uh he's a snco right now and he um you know he's a i don't know if he's yeah okay, whatever but he's still in and he was telling me about some of the bullshit he's encountered since you and i got out And he's like, God, I wish you guys would have stayed in. And I'm like, no, nope. well, I would have he, stayed in if one fucking person in my immediate it. chain of command had said, gentlemen, I want you here. I would have yep. reenlisted on the fucking spot. If one person had said, I want you here. I want you in my company. I want you in my platoon. I want you in my squad. One didn't person like didn't work like that, though. It was that, 
That's all it would have taken. One person say, gentlemen, I want you here. I'm going to get you your E4 back, and we're going to get you an E5 within a year. Yep. And guess what? The, the company would have probably been pretty well off because here's the thing is like when you it, it this happened after Vietnam as well. It's not just unique to GWAT, right? So it's happened after Vietnam as well. They they started having the biggest shit bags get promoted. Oh yeah. And and pushing people out who probably would have stayed in and been really fucking good leaders and made better decisions that would have made things perhaps a little bit easier on GWAT people or GWAT wouldn't have happened. But, um, see, you know, see, the problem is, is that, you know, good leaderships and good leadership, like if all three of us had gotten into like company or battalion level leadership, we would have been pushing back against the bullshit. And that's, and that's the, problem. the problem. They didn't, they they didn't want yes. They want yes, man. Jinx, you owe me a Coke. Um, yes. <laughs> But yeah, they, 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 and I think that there's a there's a madness to the method is because if you get guys like us and the people I was just talking about who, you know, instead of 1% of us like staying in, yeah, we've got, you know, you know, 25, 30, 40, 50% of, you know, good leadership staying in. Well, then these shit bags, they're going to get pushed out, but they can pencil fuck you. Because they know the system, and then it's like, oh, let's just demoralize the shit out of these guys. Push them out so we can just run our shit show the way we always thought it should be run, and it's all about us. I was yeah. never like that. It's like, I besides the awards that I was just telling you about, like, but that was my own thing of like, okay, well, how can I get... Okay, so this is 15. Cool. I got 15 promotion points. Well, no. I'm like, okay, well, I'll take 10 with a cab. Okay, and then... But I was always... Um, Thinking about other people and like, all right, well, because here's the thing is like, so we had long story short, I've told this before on streams, but I haven't talked to you, you know, like um, about this. We had an incident where we just about got fucking smoked by a 107. Like it was 25, 30 yards away, right? Just fucking really close in our little pug place. There was about seven of us there, right? Out of those seven people, I do not like still to this day and I didn't like them then about four of those seven people. However, as a leader, I would have been like, yeah, you got, and I still would say this because I'd still write a sworn statement for everything, you know, that they have, they still earned their combat. Well, there's one Pogue, she was a chick, but so she, she, she earned her cab. We earned our CIBs and all that stuff. No, I don't like them, but it's, it's, a, it's a meritocracy. It's not a fucking, if I like you or not. Right. No. It's, were you there? Did you do this? Did you experience this? That is what you earned. End of fucking story. That's it. But it becomes very personal and like, I don't know, it, it's it's so it's like corporate America. I mean, it, when you get somebody who just takes everything personal and mixes personal shit with business, not good. Well, like with me, I mean, yeah, I was basically, I was, how do I put it? I came in E4 as 19 kilo and deployed. My knee got fucked up in Iraq, fell off, fell off my tank, tore my ACL. Yeah. Didn't know I tore my ACL until we got back. And it's like, oh, your knee's fucked up. Go yeah. have sur go have surgery. And it's like, well, you're not healing, you're not healing, you're not healing. Are you malingering? No, I'm not malingering. And physical therapy is like, no, you're not malingering. I was one of that 20% that never recover from an ACL surgery. Yeah. So then they're like, yeah. so they're like, okay. Now you have two choices, MEB or MMRB. Well, MEB is basically, we cut you loose now. MMRB is reclass. So it's like, okay, I've done a job of medic in Iraq as well. So I'll reclass to medic. Go reclass to medic and tore my ACL a second time on the final PT test. Yeah, oops. They're like, okay, it's, it's time for you to go. So go back to Fort Carson to out process. So here I am, dual MOS qualified with a deployment under my belt. And it's like, well... You could teach here at Fort Sam if you were an E5. It's like, great. So get back to Carson, and they're like, oh, well, we need someone in a P in a platoon sergeant slot to babysit the shitbags. Here's E5. It's like, well, <laughs> okay, now, okay, now I have E5. Can I go teach at Fort Sam? Well, no, because you're med boarding. It's like, you motherfuckers, you're just going to let me go, someone who has all this experience. There but you the go. Problem is, but the problem is I was never considered for promotion because I was too outspoken. 
I told people. Oh, the there we go. I told people where the bear shit in the woods, and they didn't like that. That's the thing is, I I always say um, I don't I didn't have a great set of knee pads. We'll just put it that way. Zeno, didn't uh, part of your uh, ACL recovery happen to do something with the fact that the army was using a procedure that was like 15 years out of date, and then you had a company CEO who didn't give you the time for recovery? Yeah, the surgery that was done was the patellar tendon graft, and that surgery had been, it wasn't just phasing out it. I mean, they had stopped doing that a, a few years prior. They were doing a less invasive procedure, and I was supposed to have like a year long recovery. Yeah, that didn't happen. My basically, they had me up and walking like about just over a month afterwards, and they tried oh, to have God. me go out in the field and all that, like about not even three or four months afterwards. And basically, my ACL tear happened just just at about a year after surgery, and it was a lateral tear where it's like we can't fix it; it'll heal on its own. But you've already had one tear and one replacement, and it's it's time for you to go. So I wasn't even outside the full recovery window before. They're like, nope, time for time for you to go. Yeah, fun times. I, it, you know, I'm not surprised, of course, because I've fucking witnessed these horror stories from a lot of my friends and everything. It's just like, I, there, there's there's a kid in the comments who's like, yeah, I'm gonna, you know join the military and every time somebody asks me if they should join the military i say unless you are literally out of every single option in your life which most people are not um the military is not a good thing that's the same thing i've been telling people for about three years now three or four i've been saying it for about 10 but yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it's um, um it's there, there was a i there was a while there where i was going through my bro vet phase so yeah and it happens dude like it, it definitely happens it's um yeah. I mean, you got to find a way to cope. And like when you figure it out, though, and you get to calm down a little bit, it's just, I wouldn't want, I, I wouldn't wish that treatment on people unless you've literally got nothing left in your life. You know what I mean? Like, no. Yeah. It's just because here's the thing is, yeah, it may seem all fine and dandy and the rah rah America serve my country <laughs> bullshit. Um, that only works for the fucking boomers. Yeah, but it's like, I, the, the military does not treat people well while it's while you're in and when you get out. Yeah. Um, my experience getting out, there wasn't any ceremony or anything else like that. It was just, I mean, it was, it was like the ending in a movie of sorts where I just signed out on terminal leave and walked out the side door and that was it. Roll credits. Yeah. That was it. I mean, yeah, four, and a half, four and a half years, all that time, and I didn't even get a thanks for coming in, thanks for being with us, nothing. We got you little medals, though. That makes you feel better, right? I'm sure, at night. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Well, well, as, as I've said, the my uh, cab is a physical manifestation of the uh, shit that I've done and of what keeps me up at night, so yeah. Yeah, it's a thing, you know, I was talking to Jake about this, and I'm talking about it on streams, is like, what happened was when we had that, that was one of many incidents, but that was like the most re documented and recorded one. Okay. And the MPs that we were under all got their fucking cabs. And most of them were sleeping about a half a mile away in their fucking beds, in their rooms when that fucking IDF attack happened. Right. I was 25 ish yards away, 30 yards away. So were the other guys that were with me. And there was one guy taking it. <laughs> there was one guy. They didn't like him either, which is why he didn't get his. He was taking a shit in the fucking port of shitter And he was about five yards away when that fucking thing screamed in. All right. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? That's When you were saying that earlier, I was like, oh, I have a story for you. But like, so he was taking a shit and he, he just like pinched it off and fucking got done and then ran back he's like what the fuck and then we got there's a bunch of other mortars and rockets and shit that were going on around us a lot of them hit the the t-walls and shit thank god but um it was an attack and and um uh, yeah they're like all the mps got their caps and we uh, they told us they're like yeah you guys can put in for your cabs and we're like well we're infantry and they're like okay put in for your cibs then because you guys you know whatever blah blah, blah we'll put up assault reports and everything okay cool Finally, you know, 
Well, never happened. So I've got my little ribbon rack with all my my little uh, nylon participation ribbons, just like Jake, you know. And um, yeah, we 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 it, again the award system it, it's there for a reason, and it's like it needs to be used for the reason it's there for, right? Yeah. And that's the thing. And I got the same fucking award. I got the Arcom right for showing up to Iraq, not really doing shit because in the grand scheme of things, I didn't do shit. Right. And I got the same fucking award my dad did for just about getting him. Well, almost getting himself killed very closely to save about 20 people in a convoy. But because he wasn't an E7 or above, it got downgraded to an Arcom. Sounds about right. Yeah, and so I got the same fucking award my dad did in 04 and 05 for doing nothing. Yeah, I was like, "What the fuck?" Then again, don't have the system. The only like I, I was, I, I, I'm sorry if I'm a broken record, Jake, but like I, I haven't talked to Zeno before. Like, you I know, know. I should talk to him, I, but um, I haven't said anything. Okay, but the only the only actual medal that I really like and I respect that I earned is the Iraq Campaign Medal. That's it. Because I was there and I did it. And I actually like the look of the medal. That's the only fucking medal or ribbon that I've got that really means anything. And if I have a CIB, that would mean something to me too. Those would be on the same level. But that one isn't there, you know? Yeah. And so the ICM though, like I fucking, yeah, I, I'm like, hey, yeah, I'm proud of that shit. That's why I have it on my fucking license plate. I've got, um, I'll show you my fucking hat. You'd like this because you. I, I, Jake, I don't know where I, I was looking for that patch the other day. I've been I looking got, too. I got it like fucking 10 ish years ago. Yeah. I've been, looking, I've been looking too. Yeah. Cause it, it's the, it's the same exact size as a name tape. And it fits I've, almost, I've, I've been considering trying to find a, so an embroidery shop to make one for me. Well, you make a bunch of them. Cause I'll, I'll fucking buy them from you and sell them to that's because it, it was, it was like the coolest thing. I was just, one day, yeah, 20, 2014 ish. I was just looking on eBay and I was like, Iraq campaign ribbon Velcro patch. And they're like, Yeah, here's the dimensions. And I'm like, Oh shit. And it was just some random Iraq vet making these. And so I bought that. I should have bought, but I, again, I was like, Oh, well, if he's making them now, he'll stay in business. But I'm going to take a piss really quick and then I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, Zeno, I'll show you the what I'm talking about because Jake likes it too. And I think you would like it too. All right. So, all right. Bio break. No, he's anybody, doing that. I'm going to plug in my computer quick. Okay. Anybody's who, anybody who's watching, uh, make sure you check out Mike'sMilitaria.com for all your surplus needs. Uh, he's got a lot of cool shit on there. Um, obviously, you know where his YouTube channel is because you're here. Uh, you can also check out Mike's Patreon. I can... Hold on just a second. I'm not prepared for this for the for the shameless plug on Mike's behalf. Check out Mike's Patreon because at the five dollar and above level, you also get access to the Discord server, which is a lot of fun and a lot of shit posting happens there. Mike's Patreon is patreon.com forward slash Mike B128. So go ahead and check that out. And uh, yeah, maybe Mike will be done with his bio break soon because I'm struggling to come up with a way to fill this gap in the conversation. No, well, that just means since Mike's going to get, you get to talk shit about him. I can't say shit because I don't know him, but you can. <laughs> yeah, but Mike's just as good at throwing it back. And I know he's going to watch, he, he's going to watch this back. That's all the better. <laughs> uh but yeah check out check out mike's patreon he's got he's got um, a bunch of stuff up on there that's behind the paywall that you're not going to see on his youtube channel uh some really good content in there um and and a little bit of goofiness but no he's got uh he's got some videos up behind the paywall um of it, of a uh, an interview he did with a Vietnam veteran who, let's just say he saw some shit. Uh, Mike spent a couple of days down there, just chilling with this guy, um, recording recording an interview and and getting his stories. 
Uh, is there any questions from chat that, that I might have missed? I don't think I did. I've been watching it. So how you been, Zeno? It's been a couple of weeks since you were here. Yeah, doing okay. Just got some pallets to uh, get my to get my wood off the ground. That was fun. Got got those down to the uh, below my deck. So getting those down the hill kind of took a toll on my knee because going downhill, yeah, that causes problems. Yeah. So, um, otherwise, so otherwise, beyond that, just been uh, getting ready for riding season. Getting make oil and uh, polishing jobs done. That's been about it. Um. You pick up some uh, T posts. No, I gotta get those yet. Yeah, once yeah. payday happens. Yeah, T posts and a fence post driver. Yeah. Don't try using a sledgehammer; it won't end well. No, I know, <laughs> I know, I know what you mean. Basically, a post, basically a post driver. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and then what you do is you you lay out the the pallets. I don't know how uh, I don't know how long you're cutting your wood. Um, when I was cutting wood. Uh, when I was still living at my parents, we were doing about 14 to 16 inch long pieces. Yeah, I do about 18. They wind up being somewhere between 12 to 18, just okay, so it fits my wood stove. So yeah, that that's about perfect. Um, and then just however long your row you want your rows to be, and then you you want four feet high, so you're going to want to get the six foot posts so they go two feet into the ground. Yeah, and then however long your rows are, you know, you put the pallets down, and then like you figure out where your row is going to be and then on center you drive a, you drive the fence post in uh right in the center where the row is going to be and then you yeah. actually just use the fence post to lean uh to lean the wood stack against or or, the, yeah. or that row of wood against and that yeah, way you don't that way you don't have to go through the rigmarole of building an end cap out of out of logs you can just stack yeah. them right up against the post because I still got to be able to have a way to actually get to the wood. I don't want to go all the way around my deck to get to it. I want to be able to get to it right from the side. So well, like, four, what, like four or six of those posts would be fine. Uh, you want one for each end of each row. So however yeah. many rows you want, you you need two posts per row. Yeah. So I'd have about... Ugh. Well, I'll have about four pallets wide. So it'll be about... Uh, yeah. I'll need about six or eight. Yeah, but and then and then, you know, that's as long as you have room, you can expand that wood stack basically infin infinitely. Yeah, as you get it. And if you get two to three years of of wood cut, split and stacked um, and, and you just keep rotating through the, the pile, the best wood is going to be stuff that's been curing and drying for about two to three years. You'll yeah. get the best heat out of it, and the least amount of and the least amount of creosote buildup. Yeah, that's kind of the idea working towards. It takes a while, and it takes cash yeah. and a lot of effort. But yeah, yep. but you're you're well on your way. I'm just I'm just giving you hit and hints and tips that I learned when I when I was cutting and splitting and stacking wood from my parents' house. Yeah. That's yeah. I did that same shit when I was growing up. Is we had a wood furnace in the basement and. Yeah, yeah. And it, if um, you can, and if you can fit any inside, so much the better, uh -huh. because because if you can fit it inside, especially over winter, that shit will dry out super quick and it'll burn long and hot. Yeah. Check it for fucking ants though before you yeah. do that. Oh, I know. I mean, yeah, it's if there's like three of them, they'll fucking build a colony. Yeah, it's disgusting, little fuckers. Yep. But yeah, because uh, at my parents' house, we uh, the last year that I actually lived there um, in the winter time, so that would have been two thousand, the winter of two thousand eight, the big at, at the very end of the year, we had what did we have? Sixteen, sixteen rows, um, sixteen rows that were like thirty feet long outside that was like two years worth of wood outside and yeah. then we had we had four face cord in the basin stacked up in the basement we had wood cribs that we built and they were in the basement we had four face cord in the basement in the same room as the wood furnace we had four face cord piled up in a, in the room that was at the bottom of the uh the bunker stairs then we had two face cord next to the bunker stairs and another two face cord in the bunker stairs. 
in the gar- and that all that stuff was in the garage. So when you say face cream, you mean stove cord, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we had we had probably another we had probably a full year's worth of wood inside e- either in the garage or in the basement. And the stuff no. that we were able to get inside out of the weather, that stuff you stick three sticks in there and the house is 80 degrees. Yeah. So yeah, it's it, it does take work, it takes time, but it's it's accomplished. It, it's something that can be accomplished. Yeah. Yeah, there was one winter, I think it was um yeah, it was 2012 to 2013 when it just was like fucking 40 below for probably about three months as a high, you know, and it just went on and on. And um, we ran out of fucking wood. And so we didn't, we didn't have a hydraulic splitter at that point either. So it was go out and hand split all this shit in 40 degree, 40 below weather with a fucking wood grenade. Those things work very well, actually. And a splitting mall. And it was just like, holy shit, man. <laughs> like, and it was like, okay, we got we got plenty. We threw it down the chute in the basement because it's an old coal chute at my parents' place. Um, so we'd like open up the window, throw the shit down there, stack it up. We're like, oh, this should last the rest of the winter. Yeah, two weeks later, it's like, go, go out, do the same thing. <laughs> it's like, I'm, I'm sick of this shit. Like, yeah. Yeah. But it, it, it does. It Also, the heat from wood is... A hundred times better, in my opinion, than like propane or or electric or water or anything like that, because it's dry, yes, but like I think humans are just naturally kind of uh, over the you know millennia that we've existed used to like wood heat, like warming us, and it just kind of gets into your bones and you feel yep. just good. Yeah, yeah. You know? Wood wood heat is probably the most pleasant way to heat a home. Yep. And it does get dry. Like my nose, like I'm one of those little bitches that like my nose will just start bleeding, get scabs and dry out and shit in the winter. If it's like really dry and shit. And, um, but here's the thing is like weighing out the, uh, comfort values of like wood heat versus propane versus whatever. I'll take the scabs in my nose because it's dry over, you know, cause it's just, it's like a, it's like a warm, like, I, I, you know what I mean, Jake? And I think you do too, you know, it's like, Wood heat, you just you feel, you feel warm. It, good, it, it, yeah, you feel yeah. genuinely warm. Yeah, yep. It, it it warm it warms to the core. Yeah, yeah. like no. gas heat. Gas heat is like surface level warm. Like yeah, it'll keep you alive. Yeah, yeah. And and that's all I have here. Uh, but you know, yeah, even here, yeah, we have propane. E- even even like a wood boiler outside that's not the same as having an actual wood furnace in your basement and the smell you know, like the because every time you open up the fucking wood furnace you get the, the smoke, smoke itself the wood yep and it's and not the, like yeah go ahead. the wood that my parents would get they would uh they would buy it by the uh by the truckload uh they would that's, just have a log they would just have a log truck come in with you know just eight log foot cuts. Yep. Yeah, eight eight, eight, foot eight to twelve foot lengths on the back yep. of the fucking log and then, truck. Zzzz. And they would just pile it up right there in the yard, and then and we chop would cut them it. With the chainsaw. Yep. And then chop them up, throw them on the splitter, and then yep. throw them on the wood pile. Yeah. And for the first for the first many years of my life, we didn't have a splitter. And one one year, I had some extra money, and I was like, you know what? Fuck this. We're gonna go in together and get a hydraulic splitter. And we did. Holy shit! Did that make everything easier? Yep. <laughs> I had to buy. I had to finally buy a splitter this past year because I'd been renting a log splitter, and it was fifty bucks a day. But the problem was, I had to get it back to the rental place by four thirty that evening. Otherwise, I pay another fifty bucks for the next day. Jesus, yeah. I mean, you might as well just buy oh. your own. Yeah, like you said, yeah. yeah, yeah. So after, so after a couple of seasons of basically killing myself to uh, get a whole big pile of split, I'm like, you know, screw this. I'll spend the twelve hundred bucks, get myself a decent splitter, and split up and split up my own rate. Mm-hmm. And that's actually saved me a lot because I'm not having to go through and split three or four cords worth of wood in one day and not be able to walk for a week. There you go. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly it. It's like, even in my early twenties, I was like this. Yeah. Like you said, you split, you know, cause I was splitting by hand. So I was doing about a, a cord a day by hand, mm-hmm. not, and not that, a stove cord, a cord. And I'm like, yeah. 
and it's 40 below and i'm like i'm gonna fucking like my body's gonna be fucked in like 10 yeah. years oh yeah and you know and and it's a good workout and everything because it's 40 below and i'm wearing a t-shirt and jeans because i'm so fucking hot but you like you said you know it's like i couldn't walk for like several days i'm like oh my god yeah. And right now, even right now, you know, my back is so jacked up from the army that I can't do that kind of it's work. Not service connected, Jake. What are you talking about? It's the, none, yeah. none, none of your shit service connected. You, you, yeah. come on. I mean, yeah. Right. Oh, I can't split my head. Period. I tried that once, and my back's like, fuck you. Hey, yeah. uh, Zeno, have you ever thought about um, getting creative with your wood splitter and a welder? I mm. thought of it, but I'm not quite sure what. Uh, Oh, get the uh, get the cross, make a cross splitter. Not just that. You do the um, six, but the, the fucking six. Body, but you, yeah. but what my dad and I did with uh, his dad's log splitter that we borrowed is we built we built um, a rack that went all the way around the splitting area. Well, um, and it was i want to say it was like 18 inches off of the side of the ram on each side and then it went and then it was like another i don't know 10 inches or so 12 inches off the end because that that splitter um it had a stationary it had the stationary wedge and then and then the um ram had the had the pad on it, it wasn't um but we built a rack that went all the way around the the splitting area, so we wouldn't have to pick the wood up off the ground when after it got done splitting. Mm. Yeah, I've I've and, got that I've got that on mine too. Okay, and then we put a gantry arm on it, so that a gantry arm with a cant hook on it, so we didn't have to pick up gigantic pieces of log off the ground. Oh, so you just hooked yeah. it on there, and then it would lift so, it up. Yep, um, it, it it had it had one of the. Uh, Oh, yep, one of the yep. can't hook what not a can't hook um the i forget the what the fuck they call i know what you're talking but, about yeah but, I know what but they yeah when you pull up on them it, it causes them to clamp together and yeah, they yeah. had and they they had spiked jaws to dig into the wood the because some those? of the logs that we were getting from the from the uh, lumber supplier they were 24 inches 24 yeah. inch logs yeah, and yeah. you know you cut you cut those 16 18 inches long you're looking at a 120 pound piece of wood yo i know i know i was split i was splitting those at my neighbor's place now with my log splitter it's it's it doesn't have that complicated of a setup but you can turn the splitter vertical okay yeah that, those are really nice yeah yeah yeah. But, yeah but what we did with that gantry arm we just took we just took round pipe uh probably i don't know two inch two or three inch round just pipe um steel pipe and we just went up, I don't know, three or four feet above the top of the. We went from the from the axle of the splitter. We and we went four feet above the above the splitting area, the the splitting ram. Went ninety degrees out, and then we had a boat winch on it. And so it was just a mechanical boat winch, but we had enough cable that we could pull it out, and it could spin three hundred and sixty degrees all the way around the machine. And just pull the just pull the cleats down and hook them into a log and just boat winch it up. Well, it was it was really, you know, it it was easier than picking them up by hand. It was yeah. still work, but it was it was easier than picking them up by hand. And so the the reason why we put that big catcher catcher around it was so when we're splitting those big twenty four inch diameter logs, you know, they just fall down and we can just wrestle them around on. At waist height. Yeah, I've got. I've, well, I don't have that, but I have a similar catcher on on uh, mine. Yeah, where it, that's where, smart. Where it where it was like seventy bucks more, but it bolts right on, and it'll it'll hold the log when you split it, so you're not picking stuff up off the ground. Because I'm like, yeah, I ain't doing that shit a thousand that's, times. That's how you do kill it. your fucking back. Yeah. Oh yeah. You kill. So, oh, and and something else you can do is make sure your your log splitter is someplace where you can control the mess. Because yeah. then you can take a big scoop shovel, like like a coal scoop shovel, and you can scoop up all the all the bark and and chips that fall off, and you can burn that stuff too. That's what I do. This the one that I have has like a drainage holes in it, and I get I have one of those huge uh, Tupperware containers, and I'll put that I'll put that underneath it, 
and basically I'll get like a whole Tupperware container full. I got two Tupperware containers of it in my garage actually. Nice. And I'll fill up my copper bucket and use that to get a flare going. Nice. Yep. Yep. Because I because I got I got tired of uh, shoveling that stuff, and it's like, why am I paying for fire starters and all that when I have the stuff right here and just yeah. let that dry out? Yep. That's the way to do it. Yeah. I mean, there is about no waste when I when I go and uh, split wood. Well, there's yeah. some, but it's minimal. It, it's minimized as much as it can be. Funny yeah. freaking story. Like back um, when I was in high school and shit. I've been like smoking and using nicotine since I was like 12, right? Because I'm an idiot. But like, um, was I am an idiot. And so, um, <laughs> I, uh, no, you're correct. You're, you're not wrong. I'm still a fucking idiot. <laughs> but like, uh, it's funny because we had the, the, the furnace in the basement and our house was built in the, the one half it was built in like 1864, right? And then they retrofitted a, uh, wood furnace in there and so what i would do in high school is like i'd wake up in the morning to go to school and i grab a cigarette you know my parents did not know that i smoked and i'd go in there and i would just put the kindling in there all that shit like the the sheet we're just talking about like the dry stuff like the you know yeah. little tiny pieces i'd throw it in there with some newspaper and um a couple small logs to just get it going and i'd sit there and i'd just go you know, I'd light the fire and then out the same fire, I'd go into the furnace. So all the smoke would blow out up the chimney. My parents couldn't smell it. And so I'd sit there and every morning, like when I was, uh, I think I was like a, that's when I was a junior and a senior in high school. I'd sit there and they're like, oh, thanks for getting the fire going. I'm like, yeah, no problem. You know, and I just, you know, flick the button to the thing it would burn up that they wouldn't know. And then, um, it was it was just one of those dumb things that like when you're a teenager it's like oh i'm doing a bad thing and you know whatever but i freaking love nicotine and then um one time my dad <laughs> and like jake knows my dad and uh yeah my, your dad your dad's cool <laughs> or at he's least he cool until be. he's not yeah and then so i used to hide it because we used to have duct work that went up right above the uh, wood stove or the furnace and uh I'd hide the cigarettes and everything up there, right? Because I was taller than my dad. I still am. And um, so I'm like, okay. And one day he found those. I don't know how the fuck he found them. And he goes, he probably standing there. on the other side of the basement. And he was just looking up there and he saw something. Probably. Well, I tried to hide them well, but maybe not. And so he goes, he goes, come downstairs. I was like, uh oh, that's not a good tone. And then he goes, the fuck are these? I said, um, I don't know. He goes, what are you doing? I'm like, um, I don't know what those are. You know, he goes, if I catch you with these things again in my house, I'm going to fucking kill you. <laughs> and sounds, again, sounds Jake, like Jake, dad. Jake knows my dad. And when he says that, it's like For, former Marine. Yep. And also army infantryman. And he goes, I'm going to, you know, if I catch you with this again, I'm going to fucking kill you. Grabs them, throws them in the garbage, whatever. It didn't stop me at all. Mm. I just hit, I just hid them better. <laughs> but yeah, it's isn't, a funny that story. We, isn't that what we do? <laughs> yeah, I just learn how to hide things better. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just like, okay, I got caught. Fuck. And, uh, but that's kind of a funny thing about the wood stove is like, I did that. It's so dumb. It's like, I mean, it's a fucking, it's nicotine. It's not like a fucking yeah, whatever. And just sit there and just risk my life to just go in the morning before school. And then I would eat breakfast, you know, and go to school. So it wouldn't be on my breath and everything. It's fucking dumb times, but. <laughs> yeah. We all have moments like that. Yeah. Well, it can't be any worse than uh, when I moved into my place here and the place I bought it. The guy I bought the, my place from was a retired fire chief from a well-to-do suburb of Madison. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, fire chiefs are usually big about fire safety and all that. Well, this guy apparently wasn't because uh, the flue tile for the chimney was cracked and the... Uh, there was uh, trash that was burned to the wood stove, and the catalyst was poisoned. 
and the gaskets had never been changed, and this wood stove was from 1998. Oh, fuck. So he had done some damage. The wood stove is still okay, but I had to replace all the gaskets. I had to replace the catalyst and have a liner put in for the uh, fl- for the flu. So yep, it's like, yep, yep, yep. Yeah. So it's like a fire chief that doesn't believe in chimney maintenance. Okay. That's idiotic. Yeah. Uh, that's, yeah. Pretty standard, though, you know? Well, it's a vacation. It's a vacation home. They come here. Yeah, they come like about for like two or three months out of the year, burn a fire once in a while, and, and I don't know if it would be him or his wife that would burn trash in the wood stove. But I, because I found I found deb- I found debris and remnants of trash in the in the burning chamber. That's how I know. And the catalyst, yeah, of course, yep, yep. In the catalyst, I got a brand new one in, and I look at the old one. It's like, yeah, this thing got poisoned. So yeah, it. The you got, you, you got it cleaned out in the gaskets and everything. All good now. Yeah, everything, about a thousand bucks later. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, well, I mean, it's about, cheaper than your house burning down. And about four grand for a new uh, for a new uh, liner. Yeah, but Oof. cheaper than yeah, cheaper than my place burning down. But still, yeah, yeah. It's oh yeah, all new yeah. gaskets and pull a damn thing apart, and it's like, dude, yeah. It's it's yeah, awesome I, buying I, a house. Yeah, I was also I I looked into it a little bit more uh, with that wood stove that I showed you or that wood furnace that I showed you. You would have to have a chimney put in. Uh, that ugh, I'm not sure how much that would be, but that but that wouldn't just be a simple add-on. That would be a no terrible that, shit that, apart. That'd and, be major redesign. And also, also, then yeah. your insurance goes up. Yeah, my insurance is already high enough because I have a wood stove. Yeah, but, well, that's what I mean. But if you threw another chimney in, that would be even worse. Yeah, yeah, because because his current wood stove is basically just a space heater. It heats my downstairs, and that's about it. So your balls are warm. Is that what you're saying? My balls no, are warm, and I'm not going. And I'm not, and I'm not going. And I'm not going through two thousand gallons of propane a year. Yeah, <laughs> dude. No, I know it's. Um, we uh, we first. Yeah, because hydronic point. heat is so efficient. It, we, it's we, efficient, we, but the propane use isn't. When we bought this place, like the stove, or I'm sorry, the furnace, um, was as old as the house, so about twenty years, right? Yeah, and it goes out in October, and it's colder than fuck. But it was using. We were, we were doing about 2,000 gallons a year, right? And I'm like, this is not sustainable. Jesus Christ. We get this new uh, furnace in here. And on a cold year, 1,000 to 1,200 to heat the whole house, like the whole winter. And it's like a new furnace, although it was, you know, $5,000. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, well, we're saving money in propane in the long run. And also it doesn't, it's not as loud. The oh, we moved in here like this fucking because the guy that had this place before we did smoked inside like a fucking yeah. chimney. Oh, oh, dude. Uh, somebody else send you pictures of it was literally um nicotine brown. yellow. Bra- no, it was brown, it was beyond yellow. Yeah. And it was like, oh my god! So we had to we had to use uh, TSP on the fucking walls, and Ooh. when we sprayed when we sprayed the shit on there, it just went, and it, you could smell that. Oh, oh, I just want to throw up. Yeah, about it. but like it was so bad. We got that. We got you know as much as we could off, and then we had to use fucking um, Croil, like oil based fucking primer, oh. just to get over the base layer and it's stuck and everything once in a while when it's really humid there's a couple of parts like in the one bathroom in the one kitchen we didn't get the, the top parts done when it's really humid in the summer you can smell the nicotine still and i'm like oh my yeah. God. it was like even even back when i smoked cigarettes right and my wife used to smoke cigarettes as well we never ever smoked in the house i've never smoked indoors like no i can't do it like I'll go outside and have a cigarette, right? Like, because I just can't deal with that. But this guy, anyway, he did that. And and so the furnace, when the guys replaced the furnace, they're like, oh, this was a big fire hazard. And I'm like, I don't care. Just please get it out and then put the new one in. Like, like no, but check this out. And 
there was so much nicotine buildup on this fucking furnace, like on the inside, on the in- intake and everything. It, and, and they're like, he never maintained this shit. And I'm like, it just, it was, it was like a layer about, I don't know, that thick of dust and nicotine over the years. Oh, yeah, because nicotine's flammable. And it's also yeah. very sticky. Yeah. Yes. And it's like creosote. Yeah, it's like napalm, basically. You're sitting there with napalm in your fucking furnace, and I'm just like... Oh, Whoa. let's not get into this. Oh, Devin's not here to give out the recipe again. Yeah. Fucking mm. God, what a yeah, fucking dirt. Yeah. That, yeah. That was a good stream that Shut had to up, nuke. Dino. Don't, don't, yeah. Yeah, I, I had to nuke that one, because, yeah, it was... Yeah. yeah. Be, because the Canadian couldn't help but war crime. Dang. Oh. <laughs> That's weird. It's only a war crime depending upon when you're doing it. And if it's Canadian doing it. Mm. I'm sorry. Yeah. The war I'm crime sorry. a day keeps Geneva away. <laughs> God fucking God, that was so dumb. I was like, Devin earned another cock punch that night. And he, he's, <laughs> at 12. He he's at he's at, he's at a solid dozen. So are you gonna deliver them all in one shot or are you gonna spread no. them? No, oh god no, god no. Yeah. No. This is this is twelve until we both die. And so <laughs> it's I'm not gonna just I'm not just gonna pop my load on one, you know, one twelve, you know, blah blah blah. No, no, no. It's it's they're gonna be spread out and they're gonna be brutal. Hey, only war crime I've done in recent memory is gassing somebody from outside back to inside. Oh shut up. <laughs> He farted in my garage one time when we were living when I was living in water when we were both living in Wausau. Yeah. My it was summertime. The garage bay door was open. The window in the garage was open, and the man door on the back of the garage was open. And he, he farted. He farted, and it smoked me out of the fucking garage. And there was a cross breeze, and I was upwind. That's that's one of those things. It's like hideous and excellent at the same time. That, that, like, that, that deserves Mike's classic catchphrase. That's not good. Well, no, but uh, no, 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 no. You, you're, you're jumping the gun here, Jake. It's like that's hideous and excellent at the same time. Is if you could smoke somebody of an open area, that to me is impressive. Now, if I smelled that, would I be offended and like bitch at you? Absolutely. I was dry heaving. Yeah. Oh, no, I don't I was, dry. I don't dry heave. Like what, that what the sh- fuck? What, what concocted that fart? Um, the fact that he doesn't have a gallbladder. Oh, that's yeah. A little bit of uh, less bile in the uh, old gut system there. And yeah, yeah, you eat or drink something that's not great, and uh, that'll do it. Yeah, yeah. It was probably Tri City at that point. It probably was. was. Hey, it we was were, probably a we, Sunday, and we were because I was I was working for um, for Wayne at the time, so it was probably a Sunday, and we probably just had Tri City for breakfast. Yeah, we won't even go to the store for his mac and cheese incident. Oh God! <laughs> yeah, that bathroom that, is still. That was, oh my yeah. God! I, I felt sorry for that toilet that day. What? Come on. Oh yeah. Why would you ever feel sorry for a fucking toilet? Like unless you crack oh. the son of a bitch. You oh, so we're gonna go back on shit stories. This is actually yes. Well, yeah, it, 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 it was that what comes out of my gut. It it was the it was the frozen mac and cheese Stouffer's mac and cheese, like the Stouffer's lasagna. Like they're they're okay, yeah. I know they're aluminum I'm pan. Yeah. I'm I'm familiar, yes. It was it was one of those. Uh, I think that was the shortest amount of time that a, uh, that a food item had ever spent in Andy's system. Or... Not even five minutes. Yeah. Like, it went in, and as soon as he swallowed, like, two minutes later, he was running to the bathroom. Yeah. I didn't craft her porcelain, but I came close. Did I ever tell you? Oh, I don't think I did tell you this. Um, I'm going to... Private chat again. I'll tell you who I think it was, but this was in Iraq. Um, oh, Iraq and shit stories. Woohoo! No, 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 but like this is one that really, um, okay, yeah. So I'm sitting there in the uh, because we had uh, I will again, I'll never bitch about our living situation except for the fact that I was in a room with two other guys and it was about the size of a dorm room. But we you had barracks. Have to live with Dahlquist. No, we and we also had barracks, 
and like they were cool walk down the hall go to the shitters go to the showers i will never bitch about that so there was uh in our shitters there was four stalls and then there was like six urinals four sinks not bad one day i'm sitting in the uh, end stall because it had the biggest and most the best suction we'll say right and that's the one that everybody was pining for and i'm sitting there with my ipod looking at porn taking a schwack and for those of you in the chat that don't know what a schwack is it's where you're taking a shit and then you finish shitting and then you snap one off and then you flush it all down it's good to go right so i'm sitting there and i'm just getting into it right the second part the second phase and then i hear like boots running down the fucking hallway i mean running and i'm like oh fuck what the hell's going on and it's here <gasps> and i hear the fucking the stall door fucking fly open slam shut not closed but like slam shut and bounce off and then i hear ah and just this fucking explosion <laughs> i mean we're talking like it, it's nasty right and i'm i'm sitting there and i'm like okay my fucking whack is ruined so i pull my headphones out and i'm like the fuck and also i just hear just continuous just <laughs> it's fucking disgusting and then i hear i also as this is going on i hear the ah! as this is going on i'm like uh oh somebody's probably dying here it's like it's like that thing on on dream you ever see that movie like where that thing is like disemboweling that dude coming out of the toilet it's like this fucking weird thing um and I'm like, oh fuck! Like, what do I do? Do I just keep sitting here? Do I go render aid? Do I just, what you know? There's a lot of decisions that have to be in my head. Turn like, the neck. Well, <laughs> yeah. And so I just I'm sitting there, and I'm two stalls down from whoever this was, and then all of a sudden I just hear, <laughs> like the shuddering, like you know, post pain. And I'm like, oh fuck. And then I hear like the toilet, the shit tickets like, you know, coming out and everything. Okay. So I hear it flush, right? I hear it wasn't a full flush. And I'm like, what the fuck? Yep. And then I hear footsteps going out. And I'm like, okay, time for me to, you know, do some paperwork on my end and then got it done and go over to the stall and i'm like is this going to change is this one of those like life-changing moments and it was and i was like whatever so i opened up the fucking stall door are you guys familiar with a devil's pancake i've heard of it i think so so in and, this and, and i it's one of these things that i wish i wasn't semi-familiar with i i know but it ain't gonna flush Right. You, you, you're you on to it, Zeno. Um, so what had happened was <laughs> this guy, this guy's ass had it literally exploded. And in the toilet bowl was wall to wall, 360 degree coverage. Yep. That takes talent. I, no, well, I've no more. yeah, but here's the thing is he had flushed it and it did not go down. Yeah. And it's a devil's. The whole fucking toilet was full of shit. Yeah, full of shit. And yeah. and it was just like tar. It was like road tar that yeah. was like brown, stuck three hundred and sixty fucking degrees in this thing. <laughs> so I, I, I was like, oh my god. And so I was like, oh, I'm just gonna try to flush it. So I hit the fucking button on the top of the because toilets are different overseas. There's yeah. no like handle. There's like a button on top of the tank, and so I hit the button. All I see is it rises. Shit, it goes, <sighs> and then it's back to where it was. And I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> and so I, I, I yep. went and as as an infantryman, Jake, and, and and you know what did I do? What did you do? You uh, took you a picture of it. You poke your head into something you weren't supposed to be a part of. No, 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 no. Zeno, even like, what did I do after I flushed? And I went, "Oh my god!" You, you went you back to your parents' room. You're like, "Hey, you need to go check out that stall." 
Oh, that God. is that is exactly what fucking happened. I said, <laughs> you got to come see this. And, and, you know, my roommate, Dan, he's like, I was like, you've always talked about the devil's pancake. I fucking see one right now. He's like, bullshit. I was like, no, it's not bullshit. It's human shit. But we're going to go in here. And he goes, he goes, I don't believe you. And I said, okay, look at this. He, he looks at the fucking damage that's done to this toilet. And he goes, oh, my God. I said, Go hit the fucking flush button. He did the same. Th- he did the same thing. He just goes. You just see it go. And he goes, "Holy fuck!" So what do you think happened after that? More Joes come in and do it. Yep, more Joes. Everybody, it's like you gotta come fucking see this thing. Try flushing that fucking thing. Oh my so there's, god. So there's, there's there's like after like the fifth or sixth Joe, um, <laughs> somebody hits the flush button. And all of a sudden, it breaks. Oh, no. Chunks. <laughs> it looked like somebody threw up before they took a shit, you know? But there's chunks <laughs> flowing down in the water because it finally broke. And we're like, oh, my God. Nobody took a goddamn picture. And I'm like, oh, oh my. that's one of my regrets from deployment is I never took a picture or video of that. <laughs> because I was just so enamored. You know, I'm sitting there going, what in the f- – oh, I thought this was a – thing of legend like this exists a devil's pancake jesus christ and um uh yeah i think the next day or the day after um the tcns came in and they fucking clean uh, oh. <laughs> oh. i would have loved this to be a fly on the wall to like see their reaction to just kind of walking and going oh why am i alive like one of those it's like one of those moments of like why am i alive yeah, I've seen some blowouts. I've seen some big blowouts, you know, in bathrooms and shit. Well, yeah, but, but this was it didn't flush. That's the biggest thing that just enamored. I was like, what the fuck, man? Do you know the amount of fucking tensile strength that that fucking shit had to have on top of the water to not break when it was flushed? Almost five times? Yeah. That's got to have some kind of oil in it to hold it together to be oh water. Oh, my God, did it ever. Because, like, yeah. also, 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 let's factor this in. The water Defect coming down food. from the... Yeah, the water Dude, coming from the they side. they put laxatives in the chow hall food. I swear to God they do. No, it's just a lot of chemicals that are not good for your body. Well, yeah. Well, like, I told Jake this, and I think I said this on the stream before, but, like, when I was there at a certain point, I was I, I was fucking dying every day. I had like white knuckle fucking sweating, cold sweats, diarrhea, right? Every fucking day from the US food there. And finally yeah. one day I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna eat the Iraqi food. No, 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 I no 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 no. Okay, so this is this is going somewhere you don't realize. So I go there and I'm like, might as well try something here if I'm already if I'm already dying. I'm already getting fucking disemboweled every day from our food. Why not try the Iraqi food? So I did. And I had their, oh my God, the fucking Iraqi food is so good. So I had that. And um, it's funny because like the first time I went into the Iraqi defect, the Iraqi army defect, it was like a fucking black dude walking into an old school KKK like biker bar. I walk in there with the Iraqi soldiers that I was working with and everything just goes <laughs> silent. Oh, like it, like in, uh, like in, like in, uh, Animal House when they go into that uh, all black bar. Perhaps, yeah, something like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen Animal House in like probably almost twenty years, but like, yeah, something like that. Right, and they're just like looking at me, like, what the fuck is this guy? And they're looking at the Iraqis that are that brought me there, and they're like, the fuck. And then I'm just like, I'm really hungry. Let's go get food. And, okay, yeah. So go to the chow line. They're just stacking shit on my tray. Just fucking. And I'm like, all right, good. Shukran, you know. Because I knew Arabic a little bit when I was there. And I was like saying, okay, I'll some of that. Yep. Bam. You go and you sit down. The pick, it's like it's like being at a barbecue joint down south. Where there's just picnic tables. And then there's like their uh, flatbread hubbas. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Jake's had that. And yeah. you've had that, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I, where, I've had yeah, it, it's just sitting on the table, and there's, like, salt and pepper and hot sauce and shit like that. We sat down. Once we sat down, they started, you know, murmuring and shit. Like, you know, the volume got back up. 
I'm just shoveling food into my mouth. I'm like, I'm so fucking hungry. Cause I had the shits, you know, for day or months at that point. And so we're talking, you know, giving each other shit like the Iraqi soldiers that I was with were really cool. Uh, the, the few that I trusted and, um, we're just giving each other shit, blah, blah. We eat. And I'm like, Oh, it's so fucking good. And I'm like, well, I'm going to pay for this fucking bitch. And you know, within eight hours, I wake up in the morning. I take the most solid fucking fulfilling dump that I've probably ever taken in my entire life. It was perfect. It was just, it was like on Rick and Morty when Rick goes to that like magical little place that he's got on that planet and he's taking his shit in solitude and it's just, everything's good. That's what it felt like. And I'm like, holy fuck. And it was a perfectly shaped and sized turd. I felt good minimal paperwork and i'm like okay well i'll just wait for it no and i'm like okay so i asked the iraqi soldier said hey you want to eat and they're like yeah come on come on let's go went back there and i was shitting normal when i started eating their food because it was fresh it was real ingredients and it was not chemically it was not anything like that it was just fucking real and it was huh. delicious. And that's the thing is like, I, I was expecting the opposite, but I'm like, Hey, well, I'm here when in Rome, I guess, you know, try different things. So I started eating like the Iraqi and the Indian food. Like they had TCNs that are defect as well. That had like an Indian bar set up, but we could all eat from it. Yeah. And whenever I ate American food, I would get the shits big time. Whenever I had Iraqi or Indian food, you'd think the, the complete opposite did not. And it was like, shitting normal feeling better had more energy and i'm like holy fuck and then you know our guys of course are like oh you want to be a fucking iraqi you want to you want to you know you fucking be one of them why don't you just go fucking live with them and i'm like probably be uh, he would probably be better than living with the assholes you had to live with <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> exactly i'm like ah but um no isn't that weird though it's because, because of all the chemicals and processed shit that was in the food they gave us I mean, even in ba- even in basic, go have breakfast, oh. and all of a sudden, I gotta go shit my guts out. Yep. I swear they put laxatives in the food. It was the same all the way through until I left. It was the oil. It was all the grease and oil that they put in it. Well, and here's the thing: is like you might have a couple ingredients that just don't agree with your system, but they don't give a fuck. Yeah. The Slagle Steakhouse owes me a gallbladder. The Slagle defect from Fort from Fort Sam Houston. Everything there was fucking fried. So you went to Fort Sam for basic. No, I went to Fort Knox for basic. I went to Fort Sam for combat medic training. Oh, that's right. Yeah, du- dual MOSQ. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I forgot about that. Um, so no, Fort, so Knox, to... Fort Knox was. Oh my god, I I'd had the shits before basic once in a while here and there, but I mean my first time eating the ch- eating first time at breakfast at at Fort Knox. We get through with breakfast, we get up to formation, and it's like, oh, dude, I gotta go shit bad. So I run back to the barracks quick, blow up somebody else, blow up some other platoons, uh, latrine, and then get back up to formation before I'm even noticed. A quick in, hit and run, back out. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> respectable. Respectable. Every fucking day. Yep. Just yep. destroy a fucking. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. Don't yeah. run quick. I don't care whose shitter it is. Poof. And get back out. Oh, yeah, yeah, because at, at Knox, like 19 is uh OSIT, right? At Knox. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I forgot about that. Uh, okay, yeah. Um that's <laughs> fucking hilarious. And oh my god, yeah. Cause like Jake and I, I, I really don't have any complaints about Fort Benning's food, to be honest. No, I, I loved breakfast at Benning. I always hoped that I was gonna get biscuits and gravy. Well, that, that's I, the thing, yeah. I love the taste of the food, my gut didn't love the food. Right, and that's the thing is, I, I've always, I was, I inherited bad guts from my, you know, my family and everything like that. And, yeah. uh, but at Benning, I don't know if it's because we were running so much, we were just fucking constantly like your body just absorbs the nutrients and then is like, oh, we don't have time for diarrhea. I don't. You and I, I also have functioning gallbladders. Very true. True. Very true. I inherited a genetic predisposition to gallbladder issues. So, yeah. yeah, the, yeah army, sucks. the army just uh, fast forwarded that a lot. Yeah. Any kind of, any kind of like fats or anything like that, it doesn't have the enzymes to like break down all that shit. So, you just, yeah. 
Well, the problem for me too was is when I had my gallbladder out, I found out that I'd been passing stones for about ten years prior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that didn't yeah. help. No, yeah. it's that that'll fuck you up. Um, yeah, the the food and bedding was um, man. I loved. I know they were all like prisoners out on work release, and we knew that we were down there. But man. It was like mostly black. Hey, they were women. nice. They were nice. It was mostly black women who would serve us, and they'd be like, "Next man, next man, next man." Yep, we had that too. What you want? What you want? And I'm like, "Yep." Uh, this, we that, we that. weren't given. I wasn't given a choice. They just, you know, they 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 had a rotation, and wherever you were in the rotation, that's what you got. Right. Yeah. Like we we, it was it was convoluted because they when we got there because it was like um four years after you went through. Um, in 08 and, um, they, what I would always do is I would always like slink out I'd get like one main course and then like go to the salad bar basically. And like, just kind of starve myself, whatever, and get like a sandwich or, you know, a bunch of vegetables and fruit. And then just, cause I was trying to lose weight and I did I lost like 70 pounds in fucking four months, but like, uh, Damn. yeah, no, I, I, I fucking, yeah, I, it, Benning was, uh, experience and then but the one time I was, jake knows about this but like um so i got uh god i can't remember this probably week six because we had already qualified and everything yeah it's probably week six around there right and uh, we're in full battle rattle of course out of the range and uh i got dysentery and so this other guy and we were treated like we were faking it of course no well, yeah and we're just sitting there throwing up. We cannot hold a sip of water down. We get to cramp up and throw up. And then um, it's funny as I was sitting down, you know, like the latrines out at the ranges, it's probably the same in Knox, is where you get um, like, it's like a concrete block with like six holes and then shitty yeah, toilet seats on it. It's similar. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what I mean? It's like, it's a cesspool. Like you're shitting yeah. into an outhouse, a it's big an outhouse. Pit. It's an open pit. Yeah. Yep. And so I'm sitting there and there's, a, there's the troughs on the wall you know, for the males. And I'm sitting there in full battle rattle with my helmet and everything on going like this. And I'm sitting down on the shitter and I'm pissing out of my ass. Like it's, it's, there's no other way to put it. Oh, yeah. And this guy, this guy walks in and he goes, this private walks in and he goes, why are you sitting down to pee? I just looked up and I was like, I'm, I'm not. not, I'm not peeing. And he goes, Oh fuck. And I was like, yeah, just move on. And so he goes, and takes <laughs> that's piss. about all you can say at that. Yeah. Time. I was like, I, dude, I had no, I was like getting more dehydrated by the fucking second. And I'm like, oh, yeah. There's a problem. And then, so anyway, long story short, um, at the end of the day, we ended up getting um, a thermometer, you know, in our mouth and everything 104 degree fever. Yay. Can't fake that. Both of, it was me and this other kid that got on the same day from the water, right? And yeah. This kid was skin and bones. I was really, I was actually like worried about him more than I was about me. I'm, yeah. like, well, I'm fat. I can, I can do, but like it gets to a point when you are like dying where you're like, I, we, we got to do something here. We get stuck yeah. by our buddies because that's back when they still did, you know, CLS was like, you know, IVs and shit. Yeah. And they realized that, you know, all these guys need IVs and they fucking, for me, they just picked this guy that was coming off the range. Like, hey, you, you're going to stick your fucking battle, buddy. Yeah. And it was this guy who was a fat fucking roly-poly ginger dude from California. And when we first did IVs, he was one of these guys. Oh, uh, boy. And I'm like, uh, boy. I'm like, I just I told him, I said, going. yeah, no, I said, I said, hey, man, I just, please just fucking do it. Like, I just... I'm, I'm like, I can't hold any water down. Like I'm dying I, again, still had full battle rattle on. So yeah. both, both plates, helmet, everything. Cause Joe starting to like, Oh, you're just fucking faking it. You guys want to get out of training. And I'm like, I've no, that's not what the situation is. <laughs> Trust me. But I, you know, whatever. And so I just, I remember, I remember I like put my arm out like this and I just looked away and I went, Just fucking do it, man. And all of a sudden, I see him. The line's running. And I see him just in front of me with his BCGs on. He's like holding the bag. 
And the drill sergeant's like, nice stick, private. Squeeze the bag. I took 3,000 or three 1,000 milliliter bags in 15 fucking minutes. Jeez, dude. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. They said when they stuck both of us, because another, they just pulled a random private off the line to stick the other guy too. And they said when they, when they got the flash, it was like black. Oh. <laughs> it was like black, you know? And, but this kid, maybe that helped him in the future. I don't know. I haven't talked to him really since basic, but like, uh, because he, he fucking got it on the first stick and my veins were completely collapsed and everything, but he got it on the first stick. I just looked at him. I said, please don't fuck this up, man. I really, I'm really hurting right now. Yeah. And then I just looked away, you know, I don't, probably a few seconds, but the fact that he got it on the first stick, I was like, fucking a. And then they're like, all right, you, you fuck off. You can hold your own bag. Now you got the strength back. So I'm sitting there holding my own bag and I'm just like squeezing the fuck out of it. She's like, I could literally feel the, like the life running back into my body, oh, yeah. and it's like, oh. And then um, they should have given you a bag of Hextend with the fluid you took. They give you three bags. They should have given you a bag of Hextend after the first bag. They should have, but they didn't give a fuck because <laughs> it was during the surge. You know what I mean? Like it's oh yeah, they got well, so trying, many. They're trying to know. go. As, they're trying to go asses and elbows, trying to get people in now. Z- Zeno's got a uh, <laughs> Zeno's got a good story from Iraq about uh, dysentery and sticking. Oh God, the night that would not fucking end. Well, it wasn't dysentery; it was food poisoning. Yeah, well, yeah. A company, a company morale picnic at the water treatment facility out in sector in Iraq. Um, long story short, <laughs> to me, I thought it would be a good idea to take a fifty-five gallon drum that held pol and make it into a grill and have the food service bring out raw chicken and raw hamburgers. And, oh, yeah, uh, basically the uh, chicken and hamburgers were late getting there. And this was in, like, oh, I don't know. This was in, like, March. And we were still with 101st backing them up. And uh, everybody was eating. And I wasn't because I had food poisoning before back in uh, March of 05. And I know, I know it's about drink a gallon of water and three go shooting out. And yeah, I lose 10 pounds a week. <laughs> but anyway, everyone's eating and eating and eating. And, and I'm like, hell no, I'll grab me an MRE. I can see what's going on here. And my platoon sergeant's like, oh, if uh, he's not eating, I won't eat either. Well, almost <laughs> later, guess what? Everyone is sicker than shit. 60 guys and 58 of them are down. And it's me and my platoon sergeant helping everyone else out. Oh, and the medics were attached to trying to do it, and we're doing IVs going from guy to guy to guy yeah, to guy yeah. to guy, giving them IVs and trying to keep them alive. And we're pulling guys from 101st to come help us out. And the 101st had to medevac our guys out because yep. no one had the strength or energy to get out. Massive case of food poisoning. Oh, fuck. Yeah, fun times. Rotten chicken being cooked in a drum that wasn't thoroughly burned out. Yeah, fun times. Join the army, they said. It'd be fun, they said. Yeah, right. what they're doing they said yeah I, they, no well knowing the leadership you had and they might have been doing exactly what they wanted to do that's my guess dude we hey, how do we things. poison the entire fucking company at one time without anybody being suspicious dude we, me and my platoon sergeant should have been put in for metal flat shit we oh. didn't have enough supplies we had to go get we had to go get shit from 101st 101st medics had to come help us out there like we we got to get people out of here. We don't have enough supplies for right. everyone. We've gone through our RV. We've gone through our RV bags just like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our CLS kits. We were we were done with those. It's like fuck, dude. That night would not fucking end. Yeah. Jesus. Medevac out an entire company from sector from the unit that you're supposed to be helping out. Yeah, that goes real well. That yeah, it's that was. Ugh. Again, I'll just reiterate. Join the army, they said. It'd be fun, they said. <laughs> we won't even go into my incident with food poisoning and three cores lawn. <laughs> when you can shit on a sergeant major's lawn and get away with it. Did not, you? Even, not even sergeant major's lawn. Three cores lawn at Fort Hood. Three core controls, four ID, first calf, basically the whole western half of the army. Three core shit on their lawn. 
Good. It was food poisoning, and I had to take massive shit, and my, and my section sergeant was taking me to the hospital, and I couldn't wait, and I had to shit. And it's like, well, here we go, and oh, yeah. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Fuck them. That was, oh, boy. That was an Article 32 hearing where they thought that I was actually being disrespectful. They thought, they thought it was a prank. And it's like, no, this was food poisoning. We'll prove it. Okay. Went to, went to the, the hospital records. and I got the records and, and E. coli poisoning. Oh, okay. Article 32 hearing dismissed. Gone. Yeah. What about the, the, the copy machine on fire? <laughs> <laughs> that one. Dude, that you got banned one, from division headquarters? No, brigade headquarters. <laughs> that one command set me up to fail because they should. They should have gone to the uh, post-printing office two weeks before to get the gunnery packets printed off, but they didn't. And I was a training room NCO specialist operating in a NCO billet. Yep. Okay. Yep. And all of a sudden, at like 10 a.m., I get told, hey, we need 60 packets. We need 60 of these gunnery packets because we're going to gunnery in like two days. Okay. Shouldn't, you, shouldn't this have been done before? Well, it doesn't matter. Okay. So I go <laughs> of course over, not. Yeah. So I go to battalion and I'm like, hey, I gotta make 60, I gotta make 60 copies of these packets, and each packet is about 30 pages each. And battalion's like, oh fuck no. Did you go to you go to the post printing office? Well, no, go there. Well, I went there. It'll be two weeks to get it to get it. I don't have two weeks, I have like two days. Well, we can't help you. Okay, so I go to brigade. Hey, can I make some copies? Sure, no problem. So I so I toss in the packet and and hit the copy button and 60, 60 copies and go ahead and collate and staple and print and hey I'll be the hero of my company sweet and no. I'll go make a bunch of copies and copy 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 and run a lot of paper well I'll go put some more paper and no big deal copy 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 run a lot of toner well we were gonna run, we were gonna run out of toner anyway copy 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 replace the toner copy 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 well suddenly the copier starts smoking copy 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 and, oh. then, and then poof, it catches fire. I'm like, oh fuck. So yeah. So all those copies got lost, and the original got lost, and uh they put the fire out, and I got banned from brigade, and I returned to my company <laughs> without a packet, without packets, without the main packet. <laughs> and I had to tell my first sergeant and CO that uh I don't have the packets for you. I don't have no packet. <laughs> And uh, I've been banned from brigade, and uh, we're not we are not allowed. To... Oh, fuck. God damn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you've been banned from brigade. <laughs> yeah, oh, that, that's that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that was my very first unit, and I'd been there for about maybe not even three months. So, yeah. and, did, and and did you qualify on on gunnery? Um, I didn't shoot that gunnery. I was stuck with headquarters. Oh, I wonder how that happened. <laughs> yeah. How did they? How did they unfuck that whole situation so they could go shoot gunnery? If they magically found sixty packets from their from one of their sister companies that had actually had the foresight. To go to the printing yep. office, they have a bunch of packets made. Hmm. Yeah, fucking interesting, man. That's real fucking interesting. Yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah. Funny how that works, right? When you, uh, oh god, I yeah, more or less make this happen by close of business. And oh, by the way, this could have been done two, two weeks ago, but we made it done in like in like four hours. Like, are you Dude, shitting me? I send yeah. the fucking meme to uh, Jacob on my Discord all the time of Merle Dixon from Walking Dead, like the first season. Sit in the car, just fucking smiling with a fucking bottle of liquor in front of him in the car full full of fucking zombies around him. So fucking so glad fucking I'm glad out. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. So oh, fucking yeah. glad. They, oh my god, like that dude, the shit that I pulled, I'm surprised I'm not in Leavenworth. Well, that was always my biggest fear, like when we were in Iraq, is because you know, like Jake knows, like we were under Pentagon brass daily. Yeah. And under my, oh, speaking of that, uh, Jake, I told you the story about, um, I'll just use the last name, Wood. 
Hey, did did you look at his Facebook profile? Yes, picture? yes, I did. That guy yes. looks like he's ninety fucking years old now. So okay, Zeno, I'll tell you this story. It's it's kind of funny. Um, so again, we have the, the the groundwork is where I was at. Jake knows this. I was under constant scrutiny, like a mic fucking microscope. Every fucking action I took. Donald Rumsfeld it, level scrutiny. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's like we're not, I'm not up, even kidding. No, he, he's not. And that's how I said Pentagon brass was there daily. Sex so death. yes. And so if you fuck up, guess where you're going? What you just said, Leavenworth. Yeah. And we were always so scared. We were more scared of our own people than we were of the enemy. It's like, wow. Please, please just kill me. Like, please just wound me so I can get the fuck out of here. You know. Anyway, yeah. so that is the groundwork. We are doing some training op shit in one of those zones in the prison, right? That doesn't exist, you know, Camp Cropper. Um, so we're up on the catwalks and everything, pulling security, blah, 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 with our less lethal bullshit. It's just a, it's a fucking dog and pony show. It's like a show of force, like, because the people who are way up want to, want to know, hey, how, how do you react to something like this? So we go out there and do that. It's an exercise. Yeah. So we're sitting there. On these catwalks. Now, I'm going to back that up a little bit and say the group that we had, our company XO was in charge of our, basically the sort team for the prison, right? To just whatever, um, put into context. And there were a lot of nicknames we'd throw around to people because we knew them, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to use my XO's name. But his nickname that we would call him was K-Bar because he was a ranger, active duty before he went National Guard, got his commission, et cetera, et cetera. So he was in Ranger Bat. He was tabbed and scrolled, never deployed with them, but he's he's a ranger, right? Okay. And so we, we would just like jokingly call him K-Bar, you know, because he was hardcore and shit. But he's a cool dude. And um, But we would say that amongst ourselves, right? We had call signs on the fucking radios, Okay. Yeah. He's Defender 6. The NCO is Defender 7. You know how the radio shit works, all that shit, yeah. right? It's the same yeah. with, with uh, you and us, where the where the officer where the CO is six, the and top is seven. Yeah. There you go. So you, you know yeah. what I'm saying, right? You could yeah. you could pick up what I'm putting down. Yeah. Okay. That's that's the call sign to use on a fucking radio network. Yeah. Okay. So we're up there. And this guy had been um, forbidden from going on any kind of anything remotely dangerous or important, right? Because okay. he was so fucking dumb. And just a liability, not only himself, but us, you know? So they said, okay, you have a very important job. You have to take over at the talk in our little command station. It wasn't the company talking or whatever, but you're in charge of the radios and like, you know, making sure that if we need something, you can call back and whatever. Okay, yeah, cool. They were dumb and thinking that they would be able to trust him with that, right? You know? So the radio means company net and battalion net. And he got on the wrong radio, right? Oh, no, no. He, he got on the right radio that he chose. Oh, so boy. we're out there. Wood was and... one of those guys who had to be reminded to breathe while he was walking. Yes. He could not walk and chew gum at the same time. It was one of those guys. I don't know how the fuck he made it through AIT, but he did, and he did it before me, whatever. Yes, there you go. Um, So anyway, we're out there doing this this exercise, right? And we're up on the catwalks, and we're doing a show of force. Oh, shit, we got our cool guy fucking retarded guns. And all of a sudden, our XO will, you know, we'll we'll just say that he was standing next to some pretty high brass, okay. And he's got his he's got his fucking hand set on up here, like we did in the prison, right? And it's it's going well, like everything's going well, like we're showing what we can do and all that stuff, like blah blah blah, response time, all that shit. It's on point. And all of a sudden, you hear over the fucking battalion fucking net. K bar, this is Skidmark over. <laughs> <laughs> and, and all of a sudden I, I was like oh fuck um uh, and so i look back at k-bar right our xo and he's like um he's like 
fumble fucking yeah. frizz. And because you know, I can see the body language of like what was that? And all of a sudden he does it again. He goes, K bar, this is skid mark over. Oh boy. Skid mark was what we called him amongst ourselves. Oh, <laughs> oh like, really? Oh. And so, you know, K bar is sitting there fumble. He's like, oh, um, um. And, you know, he's trying to explain, and we're like, oh, fuck. Like, he's actually yep. doing that. You know, and so we're, like, sitting with our guns, and we start kind of laughing. We're like, oh, this is this is fucked. Third fucking time. K-Bar, hey. this is Skidmark. Over. Now, you know, work, you know, horrible. now, Wood is, like, what would you say? He's, like, six foot two and, and about 100 yeah. pounds. Yeah. Okay. Very, very skinny, tall, string bean dude. Right? Okay. Good stiff wind will knock him over. Yes. And so he fucking a uh, K bar eventually gets his hand set and he just fucking puts it down. And he goes, Oh, it's you know, he's trying to explain to this fucking big time brass. He's like, Oh no, it, it's just uh it's just a, a, something used to like what is you know, I could hear them because I was actually right above where he was. I couldn't hear them like verbatim, but like I just hear what is skid mark? What does that mean? What is K-? and I'm like, oh fuck. Oh boy. And, and and we're all just there laughing. We're like, oh, fuck. Really? Like, did this just oh, happen? Die. So, yeah, we 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 all did. The, we finished the exercise, blah, blah, blah. Did our thing and then went back. And um, I'm not going to say the rest on the stream. But I'll tell you that some other time. But um, it was uh, when you've got dipshit. Oh, and then there's another time I was telling um, one of my buddy's friends that was in 361 as well. He was a fister. And uh, we were. Uh, Them boys on, are unbalanced. What? Them boys are unbalanced. Fisters. Yeah. Yeah, but you need them. No, they're I don't. the best. They're the best kind of unbalanced. Yeah, they're yeah. they're. You need them. And anyway, um, <laughs> kind of like Lee. Mm. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that, that's what I'm saying. Is like, it's yeah. But anyway, so um, what the hell was it? Oh yeah. No, at least so, it's cockeyed. The same guy I was telling you about earlier, Jake. Um, I'll just type it one more time so it's we can keep the name straight. So we're sitting there at um at our little post. This is like mid deployment. This is probably uh, I don't know July August. So about f- three four months in, and we're hearing radio chatter. And there's like <laughs> we can hear shit going off. We're like, what the fuck that is? So there's shit popping off around us and. All of a sudden, the pogues at the um, prison that we were at, they like to use first names and just talk casually on a fucking radio. Sure, why not? So, you know how much that drives you nuts, drives Jake nuts, drives me nuts. Yeah. This guy that I was with had been deployed in 05 and 06 with third ID. Window lookers. (laughs) Well, yeah. But he was on route Irish and shit, like when they were starting to get that established. Mm. Yeah, he's still, he, still window lickers. Oh yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not denying that at all. But no, but, so he had been there, done that, right? He's he's got a CIB. He's you know he's wounded and everything. Um, he was also one of those people I was talking about earlier that was an E2 who should have been an E5, but he like he liked to do certain illegal activities and mm. got caught for it, and um, a lot of uh, <coughs> and. Mm. that kind of thing and anyway yeah. so long story short we're sitting there one night and shit's popping off around us we're like what the fuck is going on we're like are we getting hit like the fuck and so you can hear the, the radio chatter you know like id 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 blah 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 blah, 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 blah. and all of a sudden you hear the fucking helicopters start coming in you hear you know all that shit it just it's going on and all of a sudden some fucking pogues in our prison, get on the fucking radio and they're using first names and they're like, yeah, I don't know what's going on over there. Oh, yeah. Okay, we'll be over there in a little bit. Yeah, whatever. I can see this guy just getting more pissed, more ferocious. Yeah. As every second passes and I'm like, yeah. And all of a sudden, while this shit's going on, you can tell somebody's calling for fucking cast, right? And they're getting it. All of a sudden, somebody on the fucking radio, one of the pogs, goes, I didn't hear what you said. Can you repeat that? Oh. oh. And 
it was once and, and he's just like motherfucker and i knew what that meant too and i was like oh should we say something he's like they say it one more fucking time i'm gonna fucking end them and all of a sudden you hear no what was that repeat and he grabs the fucking handset and he goes repeat means fire again ass clown with the most rage i've, I've ever heard in somebody's voice yeah. he throws the fucking handset down he goes fucking pokes fucking retards and all of a sudden it's a big deal so now people are moving as shit's going on around us they're like did you guys did you guys do you guys know who was saying on the, that that stuff on the radio like they broke radio um um protocol, um, um, protocol. did you guys know who did that or like my buddy's just sitting there fuming in the corner and i'm like i don't know what you're talking about i didn't hear anything and they're like yeah, because somebody was just breaking radio protocol really bad. Like, they were screaming into it. I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't know. yeah, I don't know. And I'm just like, holy fuck. But they stopped. The good thing is they stopped talking on the fucking radio. Yeah. And I'm like, accomplished. why the fuck would you say repeat on a fucking military radio frequency? Unless, like, unless you're talking to field artillery and they just did a fire mission. Yeah. Right, which they, that was going on. Like. I don't know. I don't know if you were um, on your pad, Jake, when that happened. But I think it was like, uh, yeah, it was like July or August, like somewhere in there. Where no, I mean, but you could have been sleeping. Who knows? But like, it's it wasn't going on near you guys. It was going on. Either, um, either that, or I was standing outside watching it happen. Perhaps, that, but it was one. Of, it was one of those nights where it was like it was kicking off, and we're like, oh fuck, they're walking the shit in, and all of a sudden you hear the helicopters go out and give Cass and. off but um anyway those fucking retards i'm like dude i'm a fucking private and i know how to talk on a fucking radio yeah what what is your excuse and like, these were these were like, these were ncos i knew who it was i i i at that time, I could have called in a fire mission. I wouldn't have been good at it, but I could have called no, it in. But the FDC will also walk you through it because yeah. they know you're infantry. You're not a fister, you know. Yeah, and, and they, and you know, I could have explained like, "Hey, I'm not the actual on anything. Like, I'm right. the fucking, I'm the fucking saw gunner. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing." Well, I that's the thing is like fire. <laughs> yeah, this guy, this guy who's a fister in Afghanistan, he asked me, he's like, "Did you guys have fisters with you?" And I was like, "No, they actually." We didn't have them with us on our deployment because they didn't view them we as necessary. Have, yeah, we didn't have field artillery support. Well, no, all the field artillery was in the fucking TIF. They were all working there. Yeah. You know, and so our fisters didn't didn't give a shit, but they also weren't on the radios, you know. Yeah. They were walking around with their thumbs up their asses. So that, that was kind of the same shit that happened on my first deployment at Navistar. Is somebody would say something stupid on the radio. And we were just using those Motorola um, commercial yeah. radios. But somebody would just, you know, somebody would get pissed off at all the stupid shit that our command was making us do. And so they would just pop off on the radio and say yeah. something stupid. And then inevitably, the talk would have, you know, e either the either the platoon sergeant or the first sergeant or would hop on the fucking radio from the talk. And this is exactly what would say. Last calling station, identify yourself. Nope. <laughs> it's like, you really think we're going to fucking out ourselves? Everybody yeah. knew who it fucking was. Oh, of course. It sounds oh, kind of like, it sounds kind of like with us, with our, with our first CO before he got relieved, he wasn't a 19 kilo. He was a duck hunter, ADA. Quack, quack. Yep. Oh, and, that, and, okay. and we do on the radio all damn time whenever he, whenever he come on and say some stupid shit. And it would be last calling identify. Yeah. Quack quack. Like like no. Quack, quack. This is Romeo A. Juliet over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> like you know, fucking how stupid do you think? I mean, yeah. But oh, radio yeah, etiquette really pissed me off. It's like when you're on the fucking radio, use it correctly. You were taught that in basic, were you not? Yeah, um, better, better yet, don't be on the fucking radio unless you actually have something to fucking say. There you go. Well, yeah. The next better one was the next in, the next station that does that is coming in to do radio watch. No, this was out in sector, so it's like 
oh, you're going to threaten me with pulling me off my tank and have me come inside to do radio watch for four hours? Oh, please don't threaten me with that. Please don't threaten me with taking me out, taking me out from sector. I just don't think I can take it. <laughs> oh, yeah. God. Yeah. And then every single person with access to a radio starts going quack, quack. Yep. <laughs> Excellent. Yep. Excellent. <laughs> So yeah, he was fucking ADA and he was your CEO. That's, that's yeah. beautiful. <laughs> yeah, in, in in charge of an armor company. Yeah, it was it was a gigantic clusterfuck. Our first what? CEO had been relieved yeah. shortly after we got back from NTC. I don't know why he got relieved, and then this guy came in. This guy we called Captain America because mm, he was an idiot. There's a lot of those. Yeah. And then after he got relieved, we got an infantry captain, in, and he was actually pretty decent. Oh my god! Uh, no. It was one of those where he got pulled, he got pulled from a sister company, and then basically you're in command of this company until we can get somebody else in, but they couldn't get anybody else in, so he was it. So yeah, in, in, an infantry officer who's actually competent. Yeah, it's hard to come by, but it does exist. It does it does happen. Yeah, but no, you mentioned you mentioned yeah, the my... radio. You mentioned the radios, and uh, you guys know what FBCB two is. Yeah, Blue Force Tracker. Yeah, I never, I never, I never used that uh, because of where I was at. But yeah, I know what I know what it is, but I just never used it. Yeah. Well, when you're bored at like two a.m. and you start thumbing through the different things on the menus, and uh, you send up a report that says unidentified space asset, Joker, um, don't know where it is, and here's here's where it's at. Um, yeah, you send that up, and you think, oh yeah, ha ha. Well, apparently that gets sent up all the way to brigade. We have to yeah, have something oops. to do. Uh, sending up a UFO report to Brigade. Whoops. I mean, you know, hey, if, if somebody saw a UFO, at least it's an option. Somebody saw yeah. a UFO. Like, in my opinion, like, hey. <laughs> but just go through and thumb thumb. What's this? Okay, well, uh, let's see. Unidentified uh, ship, space, uh, unknown. They even had like enemy. I'm like, how could it be an enemy UFO? Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you shouldn't have sent that up. Enemy UFO. <laughs> well, yeah. that's the thing is like there's Air Force. <laughs> when you fuck over Joe's, they're gonna fuck with you back in better yeah. ways, more creative ways. Exactly. Well, we have to be more creative because we have to be able to get away with it. Exactly. Well, that's the thing, is you know, that's why. I speak in code for certain things and I don't want to give names because there were things that, you know, could possibly still get people kind of sort of maybe in trouble, but, um, it's, uh, it was funny as fuck while it happened. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's funny as fuck when you, when you hear, <laughs> when you hear on the radio. So, okay. So Zeno, if you were, if you were sitting there in your tank or wherever and you heard a bunch of pogues, saying repeat and you're like who the fuck is this like what? they're not giving call signs they're using first names first of all and they're just saying you know i didn't hear that can you repeat and then you heard some random dude just fucking light them up on the fucking handset would you just go <laughs> fuckers they, basically just like yeah. well <laughs> more or less well it was fun but i didn't hear shit yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I, I mean, that's what I did. I was like, sorry, I must have been changing my battery when that happened. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I, 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 I wasn't listening to the the handset. I, I, I don't know. Must have missed me. Well, no. if you if you find if you hear anything, let us know. Yeah, I'm not gonna fucking do that. Sure. No, we had, catch. no, we had one guy who somehow got promoted to E6. Uh, he was a uh, section sergeant for Alpha Section. And uh, he would partied a bit too hard in Germany, and he wasn't supposed to be allowed on the radio, but being a tank commander, he was on the radio, and he'd send up some of the weirdest shit I've ever heard. Be on the lookout for nuclear submarines in the canals. <laughs> oh, excellent. Oh, fucking love it. <laughs> fucking love it. I see fucking a self-propelled howitzer being towed. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm just like, who let him hear the radio? But it's awesome. Yeah. I mean, like, when, when you hear shit like that. Be on the lookout for robot IEDs. <laughs> it's like, 
Dude. That's, that's excellent, though. I mean, like, that's the thing is, like, it's excellent. When you hear Especially it. when command is already retarded enough and they'll, they'll that they'll believe it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, it gets sent up, like you said, to brigade, and they're like, oh, finally, we get to do something. We're going to look for a new <laughs> nuclear yeah. submarine in the fucking canals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, my God. Yeah. No, it's, it's the thing is, like, there comes a point where that's the balance that needs to be like understood more. I think I don't know if it has been improved because I, you know, you know, I got out twelve years ago. Jake got out fucking fourteen years ago. You got out how many years ago? The uh, oh nine, so a long yeah, so years ago. 15, yeah, 14, 14, 15, 15 years ago. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's still the same kind of thing, but like, command needs to understand that they're not the best and your Joes are who you need to fucking listen to because they actually know what's going on. And if you are not good at command, quote unquote, you're going to get shit like that. They're just going to fuck with you because it's Mm -hmm. like, yeah, we have nothing better to do. Most of the time it's just boredom. You know, we're just sitting there. We're so fucking bored and we're just like, God, this sucks. And then, you know, you do your shit and things happen and it's like, Oh fuck. You know, but then most of the time is like, that's another thing people don't really realize with the military is most of it's just fucking being bored and miserable. And trying to find ways to entertain yourself without getting in trouble. Mm, yeah. That's the hard part. That's the tough part. <clears throat> They're not getting in trouble is the hard part. Yeah. yeah. The, the finding the ways to entertain yourself is fine, but trying to do it without getting in trouble and without destroying everything that actually is important is difficult. Yeah. I fucking, oh, this is a cool story. Yeah. So about that we were sitting at um do you guys need to go or like can we just keep bullshit? i i need to get going pretty soon i got to get up at like 5 30 quarter, oh, yeah. quarter after five that's well, really actually quick. late for me for a saturday jake you probably haven't heard the story and then we'll just kind of call it quits but um yeah. so at the uh remember the front gate that cropper like where they yeah. had the, like bench and the uh um, the, the one where we always came in yeah, that one. The the yeah. well, there was like one way in, one way out. But like, uh, so well, there was there was the striker gate. No, I'm talking like to the TIFF. Oh, to the TIFF. Yeah, the yeah. one that I actually can't remember, even though I was in it like four times. Yeah, well, yeah, I was in there four thousand times, something like that. But like, uh, yeah. So, but anyway, um, so it was like the front gate to the TIFF. Um, there was this Iraqi dude, this uh, Iraqi soldier guy. He was sleeping on the bench out there. And, and this is, this is one of the good soldiers. This guy was not a piece of shit, but he was just fucking just tired. And so he's sitting there, you know, and I'm like, okay, I know this guy doesn't like bats. And so we always had bats flying over us. Right. And I figured out at some point that if you threw a fucking pebble or a rock or something small up, the bats would like think it's a bug and they'd go after it, right? And so I grabbed a handful of pebbles and I just went and I got them to come closer down to this Iraqi guy that was sleeping and did it a few times. And all of a sudden, I got him, I threw a fucking rock on his boonie hat and the fucking bat came and took the thing off and it was like tussling with him a little bit. And he's like, oh, God, and he freaks out. And then he's like, and everybody else is laughing at him. It's like, don't fucking sleep on shift. Don't fucking sleep. And then he comes after me, like physically, like grabs me. He's like, you fucking, and he starts like hitting me. And I'm like, hey, it's a joke. It's a joke. It's, you know, and whatever. And um, then all of a sudden he like woke up. He's like, oh, God, like he thought he was fucked. He thought I was going to like report him and shit and whatever. And he's like, oh, my God. He's like, why would you do that? You know, so we get, the, get the interpreter there and like we, we hashed it out. I said, it was a joke, man. Like you were sleeping. I fucked with you. You know, I don't want to hurt you, but like, you know, whenever he goes, oh no, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have done that. And uh, I'm like, well, I would have done that. If somebody would have fucked with me like that, I would have fucking punched their lights out. <laughs> like, not a big deal, dude. And he's like, just please, please don't report me. And I was like, I'm not going to report you. Like, whatever. I thought it was funny as shit. We laughed our asses off before you kind of, like, came to. Because this fucking bat came down and took your hat off while you were sleeping. And you freaked the fuck out. And it's just, like, playing pranks on that or on, the, or on that level is, like, 
that's what Joes do, you yeah. know? And, um, but yeah, the Iraqis are more scared than I think than we were of like getting fired or like getting thrown in that prison. And I'm just like, no, that's just how we fuck. I was bored and I'm like throwing rocks up in the air and shit. And I see the bats coming down. So I'm like, oh, let's fuck with them. <laughs> and you know, that, that's the kind of shit that like, and throwing rocks is an infantry pastime, by the way. Jake, you know that. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just one of those dumb things that's just funny. Like, yeah, you, you always you always either aim for the K pot or the or the body armor. Yeah, or the other pile of rocks that was already there from people throwing rocks before. And you're like, well, let's see if that I can. Was, that, that was easier to hit, though. Yeah, of course. Like, like the best the the best rock throwing that you could do and would be where you 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 loft it upwards. So that it hits somebody yeah. on the top of the helmet, yep. and oh, then yeah. act like you didn't throw it. Yeah, and then just go. Wait, what, what? What the fuck's going on? Are you okay? Are you okay, man? <laughs> yeah, what the fuck was that? Some, some just fucking hit me in the head. Well, are we okay? Are they? What, what, is there something going on? I don't know. What are you freaking out about? You know, just yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like, what's don't going know. on? And uh, yeah, it's just, and then, I mean, the amount of fucking with each other that you do in combat arms. Yeah, it's constant con and it never it, it, it always gets and it's like when you get one thing it's like an escalation like okay yeah. well, we did that now let's it, it, take it you farther. always have you always have to try to one up the last thing and then somebody gets pissed and then you're like why are you so mad dude it's just a fucking joke it's just a you know just a prank hey, bro you don't you don't get mad you get even <laughs> yeah that's that's when you that's when you uh make the uh mre tear gas grenades <laughs> Well, yes, with Tabasco and the the, the cooker, but yes, um, yeah. that that even to me was excessive. I mean, I was like, I would never do it myself. If I knew somebody was going to do it, I'd just be like, yeah, I, I never saw that. I'm just going to go over here and whatever. Yeah, don't be the guy who went to go chuck out a tower and it bounced back in just as a major is uh, opening the hatch to come in and have it go poof. Yeah, Oof. It, uh, that's, uh, yeah, that was not a good day. That's that's never good when you when when your little games involve officers that don't know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> it's no, I mean seriously, we did the we did the whole fucking you guys. I'm not going to hit you, but we did this whole game, right? Yeah, of course. So the Iraqis started playing that game as well. Well, one time there's this like um, there's a light colonel or a major, somebody uh, with an entourage like two people walking in and the Iraqi goes like this to him. And the, the, the officer looks at him. And so he, he starts winding up and I see this from like 10, 15 feet away. And I just went, it was like slow motion. Just went, no! And I grabbed the Iraqi guy. And I'm like, no, 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 no. And the officer's like, um, I, I was like, uh, good evening, sir. Whatever, whatever the fuck time of day it was. I don't remember. And um, I'm like, uh, yeah, he goes, is everything okay? I'm like, Yes, sir. I do have eye protection and all that shit. Blah, 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 blah. Got him distracted with his entourage. I told the Iraqi guy, I said, You were just about to hit a fucking uh, an officer. I'm like, That game is between us and us only. Us guys, right here, who you can see. Yeah. And he's like, Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, but he literally was about to just fucking punch an officer, an American officer in the fucking shoulder. Yeah. Because we looked at his circle. And I'm like, no! <laughs> and also, our game would have been, you know, Over. our game would have been exposed. You know, like, yeah. the investigation would have been like, well, what the fuck happened? But no, that was... Oh. Uh, what the fuck happened is officers don't know how to actually have fun. Yeah. Well, well, the problem that we had was in Abu in Abu Ghraib, you get, you get to the tower from the inside, and there is, like, a wooden, like, uh, sheet of plywood that you... Uh, set over the hole so that uh when somebody yeah. comes in they're supposed to knock and then you let and then basically you do the challenge password and you let them in yeah okay yep, cool yep, yep. well we were playing games fucking with the uh w with one of our platoons and we were chucking those uh tear gas grenades don't have them those homemade tear gas grenades pow you are fuckers okay okay yeah. well we went to go chuck it out and it and it bounced back from the camo netting back into the back into the tower it's like oh, oh shit shit and and suddenly Here's this. Here's this major opens it up. It's like, hey, and all of a sudden, poof! It's like, oh fuck! 
Yep. He didn't what happen? He, he didn't announce that he was coming up or anything. He's like, you are fuckers. And all of a sudden it was there suddenly had to be an NCO with every uh t- with every uh oh yeah of power. Of course. Yeah, like, of course. Uh, really? Yeah. 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 Yes, because yeah. the NCOs aren't in on it. Right. <laughs> yeah. They're not the ones orchestrating this and keeping score at all. Yeah. <laughs> So it's like, okay, fine, whatever. So, yeah, that didn't stop the shenanigans. That just enhanced them. Oh, yeah. yeah it, it, you, it, you it just made it, around it. Yeah, it just made it made it harder for the officers to detect. Yeah. Never mind the fact that the major wasn't following protocol and not knocking and doing challenge and pass. Well, of just course, it's open, never the officer's open, fault. Open, open up and pop up and poof. It's like, well, serves you right. So Again, yeah. like you said earlier, should you get an Oracle 15? I never got an article. No, 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 no. Like, but like what you said earlier about uh, the, the um, officer shouldn't the officer, officer get an article? Yeah, yeah. Should shouldn't the officer get an article? Get an article 15 15 for not yeah. following protocol? For not follow- yeah, but they never they never got held to anything. So it's like whatever. Oh, of course not. Yeah, yeah. and that's yeah. well, shouldn't shouldn't um, my PL and PSG have gotten article 15s for pushing PT scores while in a combat zone? Well, then mine would too. <laughs> Shit. The PT what PT wasn't a, well it was a thing when I was over there but they weren't doing PT tests it's no, like record, that's what I heard the most active units is they never did that shit record Ours, record no. PT test on average of once every two weeks from January to December yeah we never we never did that it's like we got no. shit to do yeah well yeah it was January to December. Yeah, all of 2009. It's we got shit to do. We got missions to run. You got enough time to get back, get some sleep, refit, and get back out. And that's (laughs) it. What you guys had time for sleep? Once in a while, if we got back, we never we never got to use the tents at all. Once in a while, we did. Jake, shut up. You guys had way more time for sleep than we did. You know that. Yeah. (laughs) But yeah, I got woken up in the middle of the fucking night. I was I was racked out. You know, they, they, so we had just gotten back from like a 12 hour fucking Taji run. And it was like nine, 10 o'clock at night. We had been on the road all fucking day. I, I was in the gunner's hole. So I was fucking hot and tired and dehydrated. And I'm sitting there fucking cleaning my weapon. My squad leader pokes his head in the chew. And, it's, and remember, it's like nine, 10 o'clock at night. And he says, gentlemen, PT test 0600. No. Like the what? And then he walks no, away. He closes no. the door and walks away. Like didn't? No. It's like uh, yep. it's a record PT test. Uh, I need twenty four hours of light duty under Army regs before a record PT test. Like I'm getting six hours notice after being in a fucking gun turret for twelve hours. Yeah, it it blew my mind when I actually got to Kuwait to do block. To go home and block leave, and you, you, when you gotta go to the requisite finance office and get all that shit taken care of yeah. and all that, when you're doing your two weeks leave, okay, cool. And I see on their schedule PT test. I'm like, y'all are doing PT tests here in a combat zone? Fuck! How the, must be nice to have that kind of time to be able to do that kind of shit. PT tests are so fucking overrated. Oh, I know, but that's what they base everything on. If you can, if you can run fast and you can do a shit ton of push-ups, your leadership material doesn't matter. You yeah. can't read, right? Yes, that dude. We had tank commanders who couldn't sign their own fucking name, but they were PT studs. They spent all their spare time in the fucking gym, and that's that, what I got promoted. That, yep. that makes me want to get on a fucking rant. And I know Jake, you got to go, but like that. Oh, I uh, want to stick around for this rant because I completely fucking agree with it. There was, um, let me take a swig of water before I do this, just to wet my whistle. Mm. Yeah, is it going to be a Jesse Ventura rant or is it going to be a Mike B rant? Mm. <laughs> no, I'm sorry that Jesse Ventura had nothing to do with the Iraq war. Uh, you know, maybe sometime we can talk about the, do- the Gulf of Tonga. You know, back when I was a Navy SHIELD and uh, before I was governor of Minnesota, but you know, this is going to be a state. Fuck you. Don't laugh when I'm doing shit. <laughs> Navy SEALs bounce balls off their nose. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's yeah, well, that's not what we said. We always said get your calories from what you eat and not what you drink. Have you ever, I, yeah, hey, Zeno, yeah, here, 
Mr. Hardcore Tanker, have you ever dined on Long Pig? That's what the cannibals call humans because they taste like pork. No, but you're definitely hamming it up right now. Yeah, a little hamming it up right now a little bit. Yeah, you know, but hey, have you ever been governor of Minnesota? Because I certainly was after I was a Navy SEAL and a professional wrestler. And I said, yeah, you know, I'm just going to hit uh, Bob Backlund with a chair so he can sell it. And I, I negotiated the truce with Fidel Castro. And you don't even know about that because you weren't there. What You tell me. Why don't you tell me how that went? I don't know. I wasn't there. And as far yeah, as well, I can tell you. Well, if you're, yeah, okay. Yeah, if you're such a patriot, why don't you tell me? There's Zeno. Well, I well, I wish I could tell no, you, but no, I, I don't think you can because you've never been there. You but, were never a Navy SEAL. And here's the how, thing: is I no. Ex, but wait a minute. You, wait a minute. Wait either. a minute here. Wait a minute. When were you governor of Minnesota? Well, when were again, you? When were you the mayor of St. Louis Park? The well, world's ask, largest. Wait, you, wait, wait a you? minute. Wait a minute. No. When I was back seeing the Rolling Stones, I was at the concert where that guy got stabbed in the face. And I said, oh, wow, that's not good. But I still <laughs> went to the concert. Can you say the same thing if, if you're such a patriot? I don't know if I can say that, but... Okay, I've got to be done. I've got to be done. I've got to be done. <laughs> Your voice isn't going to survive much longer. Well, no, I'm, I, I, I'm trying to figure out a way to do it better for longer, and it's it it, it really like if I do it, you know, it's, like I live I live in the Baja, you know, it's one of those there, things I, where you just have to do it. I've all got the a time. silo. No. I've got a silo full of tortillas and a ten thousand <laughs> gallons of portable water. Have you ever, you know, have you ever? Uh, the, one of the greatest things, you know, before uh, Halliburton orchestrated the BP oil spill, uh, you know, <laughs> we figured out that, you know, just plain tortillas with regular scrambled eggs, really good. <laughs> he sounds like my shift lieutenant when I worked third shift as a cop, just rambling on and belonging in a nursing home. <laughs> That's Jesse fucking Ventura right now at this point in his life. Yeah. You're, 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 you're yeah. precise, precisely correct. And he'd still be a better governor than Waltz. Correct. You are correct on that. He was a better <laughs> governor. Yeah. No, I'm saying now. He would be a better governor now than Waltz. He was good then. He'd be way better than Waltz now. Yeah. Like, it's, <laughs> it's yeah. But, I mean, because, you know, you know, say what you will about me, but at least I'm honest. And I, I know did. what I stand for. I did have to tell him and I would threaten to call the nursing home to report a runaway to get him back in line, though. My my ship lieutenant, not Jesse Ventura. I mean, Jesse could still whoop the piss on all three of us at the same time. So that's why I'm like, I'll, 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 I'll you know, I'll, I'll do impressions, you know, whatever. But like, the guy is six foot four and he's, he's like in his 70s now and he's built. Again, he could whoop the piss out of all three of us at one go together. Like, if we were trying to, like, fuck him up, he would just be able to just beat the fuck out of us. And I'm like, that's eh, impressive. I, I respect that. So, um, oh, yeah. Rant. Really quick rant about PT sort of fucking PT shit. Um, I'm going to put this in the uh, uh, private chat because I don't want to name names. Even oh, yeah. Yeah. Fucking fucking sloth looking fucking fucking birthmark ridden piece of shit um tell us how you really feel no mm. so Don't here's the thing now. is i was never great at pt weirdly enough right i was always a considered a fat ass right even though i could run with all my body armor on i could fucking sprint with my body armor on i could fucking shoot well i did everything i passed my pt test all that shit there were fucking idiots who were oh, fat yeah. and, and, and like you and me, we could ruck march that's like, the thing. A yeah, fucking, I, like a fucking mule. Yep. Once you get past the first two miles, you just fucking say when I'm your huckleberry. And um, no, that, that so everybody's got their strengths and weaknesses, right? As an infantryman, I would say uh, overall endurance 
and uh, mental capacity and uh, shooting capability are the three most important things. Okay. A PT test does not necessarily reflect how good an infantryman is at fucking all. But it's one of the standards. Okay, I get that. So this fucking, this, this one example that I'm going to use that I put in the private chat, this fucking dude was fatter than I was, more out of shape than I was. We get to Iraq. He gets pressured by a bunch of other fucking retards. And he takes, we'll say, illicit medication yeah. to lose weight quickly. Hello, Army. What? Hello, Army ASAP. Especially when, you, especially when your analysis pops up. Yeah. Well, no, these were not. He. Not I want to say it's about by standard drug screening. Mm, yeah, it's, 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 it's not those because we're in okay. country. It was. Uh, I'll just type it in the fucking chat so you can see, you can see the private chat, right? Do you know? Yeah. All right. So. Oh, that's not a bad idea. Okay, so he did that, and he was praised because his PT score went from, like, 130 to fucking 290 okay. in a matter of about four months because of that, right? Well, those of us who didn't ever do that kind of shit and who actually worked for it got... I got, I think my highest score was a 220 something. The commander's intent was 210, right? Okay. That's what he wanted. He wanted everybody to get a 210. There was no formal shit about that, like on paper, but it was like he wanted everybody to get a 210 just to make himself look better, right? You also know the fucking minimum is 180, 16 yeah. inch event. Okay. So I got a 220 something. Not good at doing push ups, not great at running. Sit-ups, not a problem. However, like I said, I could do everything else. This motherfucker, the guy that I'm, I'm talk, talking about, and this is not the only one, does this shit, gets E5 before we redeploy. Goes from an E fucking two or three to an E5 before we get back home. Because he did this, cut all of his weight, dumber than a box of fucking rocks, an asshole, a piece of shit, yeah. Not a great infantryman. Couldn't shoot worth a goddamn. Couldn't but hit he, the house from the inside. Yeah, I couldn't hit the barn if you were standing in it. Literally, gets E5 before we get home. And now subject to a certain uh, type of rage induced by that. Uh... Right? Yeah. There's a... I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you a story off the record, but like uh, about... I actually called him out and then he called himself out and then it got kind of uh swept under the rug well that but like uh he got in trouble a little bit not officially mm. but it got brought to the attention because i got him to i got him to say something without without me calling him you know what i mean like i got him to fucking say something that i wanted him to say without, without being traced back to you and he said it in front of a bunch of people and whatever anyway so i'll stop i'll stop talking quick talking in cryptic shit the biggest fucking retards i ever fucking had to experience in the fucking military were these pt studs who had zero idea of what leadership actually is bill zero idea of what marksmanship actually fucking is and zero idea of what being an actual infantryman actually is but hey they got a good pt score and i'm like so why don't yeah. you judge me on my one talent, which is shooting, I was really, I was really good at shooting. Like, I'm, I, I'm not trying to like fucking brag or whatever, but like that was my talent, right? I'm good at shooting. And I'm good Put at doing other things. On the wall behind you. Well, I, I'm not as good as I used to be, to be honest, because I don't do it as much anymore. But like, uh, no, back in the day, I, I'm, I qualified expert on every fucking weapon system that was put in front of me, everything, right? But if the, it, so, if you take the standard of Okay, PT, we'll, we'll just break it down really quick. PT, marksmanship, overall performance, right? Kind of just infantry tactics and shit like that, like knowing what to do, uh, ruck march and all that shit is in this category. You got three categories, basically. Yeah, category. the FM7-8. Correct. So if we're gonna if we're gonna promote and solely base who gets promoted off of this one category, 
Why shouldn't I have been promoted off of being judged on this one category? Okay. There's one little thing that I had a problem with. The people who they put in charge that were wearing stripes, I could not fucking believe it. I could, I'm like, are you, are you horse fucking me? Like, are you serious? This fucker, this retard is going to be wearing stripes and leading people in combat because they, they do well in their PT test and they took some stuff, you know, to improve their health. We'll just say, mm -hmm. um, what the fuck are we doing here? Like, this is all a joke. Again, that's more or less. Pretty, yeah. They're, reward, a, they're rewarding the wrong things. And Correct. Not a, and not a single one of them even knew FM7-8 fucking existed. No. What the Mike, fuck you know what FM7-8 is. I know yeah, what that what, is. What is that? It's a it's the infantryman's, basically the infantryman's Bible. Yeah, oh, that was the manual. It's, yeah. it's, 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 yeah. it's, field, it's a it's yeah. the infantry field manual. Yeah, I, I yeah. can't remember. I can't remember weird things like if I if I if I open up the first page, I'd be like, "Oh, this is this." Uh, but, I don't think I have my copy of it here. I think that's over at my dad's on the bookshelf. Well, it doesn't matter at this point right now because you know whatever. But like in hindsight, looking at that, it's like the, that fucking this guy and a bunch of other people like Jake experienced too could not get their EIB from anything else in the PT test. They were fucking retarded, like absolutely yeah. just stupid. And the only and thing half, I would have failed. And half of them couldn't ruck march either. That's what I was going to say is like, the only thing I would have failed is the PT test because I can't do push-ups well. I've never been able to do push-ups very well or run very fast. Yeah. Okay. But here's the thing is like, they're getting prom literally promoted based on one factor. And they got a fucking attitude about it too when they were promoted. Oh my God. It was well, it's it's the only factor that actually has a documentable number attached to it. Yeah, but it's also fucking arbitrary and stupid. Yeah, I'm not saying it isn't, but it's the only factor that has a documentable number attached well, to it. Well, marksmanship and... has a number attached to it, correct? Well, that's true too. Yeah. So why the fuck is that not factored in? Because this fucking but, guy had a marksman but, badge as but a soldier. But a soldier's knowledge of their equipment and how many FMs and TMs they've read has yeah, no that, has no not, way to measure. That's not qualifiable. Like that's no. not. Well, um, it you know, used to have a, it used to have a way to measure. It was called promotion boards. There you go. And, and they did away with promotion boards in two thousand seven. Yeah, and so the fucking idiots that I saw get promoted was just another nail in the coffin of my just getting the fuck out as soon as possible. It was just, oh, oh, uh, you know, before that, it was like, I saw a few things. I'm like, I have a chance. <laughs> Stupid me. I have a chance to do this and like, just be meritorious, do my job, do it well, the best of my fucking ability. And I'll get, it'll just happen. And then deployment happens. And it's like, oh, here's a nail. Here's a nail. And then it was just like all the way around. And Watching these fucking idiots, and then when we got back, oh my god, they treated the new guys like we always razz the new guys a little bit, right? Yeah, just give them a little bit of ribbing, whatever. Not, not we want we wanted to teach them though. We wanted them to not fuck us over when we're out in the field because we wanted to sleep. I mean, really, if you think about it, we wanted to sleep and be able to like trust these guys that they're gonna do their job. They would just sit there and try to fucking haze these dudes just for no reason. It's like. What did he do wrong? Nothing. Pretty much you're doing to the new guys what was done to them. Yeah. But and it wasn't it, entirely it done nothing. to us, though. What? It wasn't always done. That, that kind of hazing didn't happen to us, though. No, it was, it was be on your fucking toes. If you get something wrong, then you're going to pay. Yeah. But it's not just this random, like, fucking... No. If you, were, if you were performing, if you were doing what you needed to do, they basically left us alone. Right. But as a new person, you're gonna fuck up. Like it's it's a guarantee. Yeah. In any yeah. job, you're gonna you're gonna fuck up. And then it's like, okay, while you're getting the shit smoked out of you, they go, here's what you did wrong. And I want you to understand this so it doesn't happen again. Bam. Okay. Got it. It's, yeah. Move on. It's it, not it was hazing, a learning, it's just it, it was yeah. a method of learning. It was corrective training. Corrective, yeah. I mean, it's fucked up still, but like, I mean, you people don't realize to like I know you guys do, but like um the army is not a, a, um, 
how the fuck do I word this? Um, it's not a pleasant job if you're combat arms, you know, because when yeah. you actually when you actually get to do your job, it's really tough. And then if you've had people who are mentoring you and fucking you up at the same time and putting you through that constant stress, the job itself becomes less like a shock. You know, yeah. does that make sense? You know, yeah. It makes sense, although it was just as much of a shock when I actually got into the shit. Yeah, it yeah, well, right. It, it, it didn't. It didn't matter if I was if I had been hazed before or not. It didn't matter. It was still just as much of a shock if I. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I, I do, and so I just yeah, I'll pick your brain a little but, bit. Because but you knew you could handle it. Yeah. Th- yeah, you knew you could handle, it, and you can also trust the guys around you. That's yeah. That's the biggest problem I had is I didn't I didn't think I could trust the guys around me because they almost got me. Well, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that off the air as well, because um, that's something that I don't like sharing really out in public. But uh, basically, like I, I, I couldn't trust my own guys, you know, and that's not a good place to be in. No. And um, yeah, I, I could trust squad level and down. I, I could trust I could trust other squads in the platoon, but I couldn't trust anybody above squad level. Because they didn't have my back. They they didn't yeah. they didn't give a shit about my mental status when I was at my lowest points. Right. Like I didn't I no. didn't like a lot of the guys at squad level and down. But you I could still, trust, you still you still work with them, you know. But I could trust them to do their job. Well, and here's the thing is yeah. I, I yeah, same thing is like I didn't like certain people, but here's the thing is if if they got hit, you're goddamn right I'm dragging their ass out of there. Like I couldn't stand my fucking team leader. He was my team leader for three fucking years. I couldn't stand. I absolutely could not stand his fucking guts. Yeah. But once we got into country, he was still my fucking team leader. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't. I couldn't stand my squad leader because he was so fucking two faced. Like could not tolerate him at all. But he was still my fucking squad leader, and he was still a competent soldier. Yeah. You know, I knew he wasn't going to give me an order that was going to lead me unnecessarily to death and or injury. Right. Unnecessarily. Then, yeah, unnecessarily. Well, that that's the confidence that I did not have. Uh, I had confidence that, in, that, in my, that my confidence, squad alone. That yeah. confidence level stopped at the at the E6 level. And it wasn't even all of the E6s. Yeah, and that, that, that's the thing is, like, I had... Um, <clears throat> I had confidence from uh, actually E5 down that they would have my back. Yeah, my and my particular squad and the rest of those people from third platoon. But they, yeah, but like my squad leader and my team leader didn't didn't do shit. Didn't lift a fucking finger to protect me from higher command. Yep. Didn't lift a fucking finger. When I was getting hammered with, oh, gentlemen, you need to do another PT test. You need to do another PT test. It doesn't matter that your last record PT test, the the main record PT test for the whole company, you got a 248 when the when the commander's intent is for everybody to have a 250. <laughs> Which is also fucking that whole commander's intent thing. Oh, my God. It doesn't matter that you had a 248 <clears throat> and you missed it by one push-up or by, you know four seconds on the run doesn't matter that we've been hammering you since we fucking got to bliss right on on pt doesn't fucking matter doesn't matter that you've passed every single pt test uh since we went on active duty with a progressively higher score every fucking time that didn't fucking matter no you 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 were you were flagged as a pt failure for two years while we were on drill status in the u.s yep so we're just going to keep hammering you until you fucking snap. Well, guess what? I fucking snapped and I ended up getting an Article 15 out of it. Oh, you're still alive. Everyone around you is still alive. Yeah. You know, it's like, it, it fucking, but that's the thing is like when people are like, oh, I want to uh, join the military. It's like, no, this is the real shit. This is like the real talk. Like, this is what it actually is. You you get fucked at every single possible turn like yeah um i, I just saw but, the name from the private chat but i knew who you're talking about i knew that yeah um fucking fucking gym rats 
Yep. But if but you hey, spend, but hey, they but got it, promoted though. They got yeah, promoted. If you spend every fucking minute of your day that you're not and that you're not sleeping or you know on mission, if you spend every fucking waking minute of your day in the fucking gym lifting weights, promote ahead of peers. Yep. Well, like with Zeno, like you know, it's good for that because you know you got to be able to swing a sledgehammer a little bit harder when you go to the gym. Well. Yes and no. The gym rats that we had also had a problem with the uh, with the substances, both liquid and illicit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, pretty it, much, it, but pretty much like with the whole with the whole promoting thing, just just on the PT tests. Like with me, I didn't do great in push ups. I didn't do great in the run. I mean, I barely passed the run sixty percent. But sit ups, I did great on. But they didn't care about that. Okay. No, of course else? not. But I mean, they care about marksmanship. Yeah, I got sharpshooter. Okay, cool, whatever. And I got expert on pistol. Okay, whatever, no big deal. But they didn't care about my ability to pull apart a 50 cal, clean it, throw it back together, and not just at field level. I mean, tear it down to almost deep. Yeah, level. no, fucking and clean yeah. it, put it back together. There we go. Same with the mm-hmm. same with the uh, M4, same with the M9. Do all that, and also be that guy who has that one skill set that can get you anything you need. Yep. The acquirer, yep. They yep. didn't care about that. Whatever you no. needed, I could get it for you. Yeah. That's, in, you, in, know, you know, it's because, really quick, Jake, it's because your upper leadership couldn't record those numbers and benefit themselves off of that. Yeah. Sounds about right. No, it's, yep. that's literally what it is. Like, mm-hmm. that's what we're talking about right here is, it, it, again, it's, if it's a meritocracy and you've got guys in your unit, everybody's good at something, everybody's shitty at a bunch of things, right? That's just the way it is. Good leadership will be like identifying that immediately, and then they'll put you with people who you compliment other people's weaknesses and shit like that. You're good to go. But it's been a numbers game, especially post 9-11, like really bad, really bad. And it's all about, oh, how can my NCOER or my OAR uh, uh, reflect, you know, what these guys are doing? Oh, numbers. So we'll go with uh, PT. Okay. Why why not basic rifle marksmanship? Oh wait, I know why because basic rifle marksmanship costs money and time because you need to be able to set up the ranges and you need to be able to actually arrange shit for your soldiers to get out on the fucking range to practice in order to improve. Yeah. Yeah, we never had practice. It was always record fire and that was it. It's like we never yeah. had time to do or nothing. It's just go out twice a year and do record fire and that's it and it's like fuck, what? we only got once what? a year. Um, yeah. Yeah, we got twice yeah, we were, a year if we were lucky. But even yeah, still, we, like you were combat arms, why the fuck weren't you out at the range as much as possible? Like, yeah, because that costs time and money. Yeah. Right, but that, again, if you're gonna be, yeah, I don't want to get on that rant, but like, if you're gonna be stupid enough to fucking start a war and fund a war, make sure the fucking people know how to shoot. Yeah, don't get me started about the whole funding bit because that gets into a whole rabbit hole that I cannot go into on here. No, 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 I, I. I we're the same way. Um, that's why I said I'll just I'll just leave it at that little tidbit. But like, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I mean it's just you know we we all experience similar experiences. Very different. Everybody's got their own experience. Like, I mean, Jake and I could have been standing shoulder but to shoulder. We still have a different experience. We what? we have different experiences, but they all rhyme. They all rhyme when we experience the same yeah. kind of um, bureaucratic bullshit that happens. In the yep. military, and especially in GWAT times, and it's not gotten any better from what I hear. So, yeah. No, the wake up, the wake up call for me was, I wasn't issued this, but I got it from a couple of guys from Third ACR at Camp Falcon. It was a shotgun that they were about to just toss into the demo pile. Like, okay, yeah. So I got it and brought it back and got it put in the company books, and I'm like, hey, I need some ammo for this. About two weeks later. My PL comes in and hands me a box of Remington number nine quail shot. Looks like somebody bought it from Walmart. It's like, what am I supposed to do with this? Well, it's ammo for it. I can't use this. This ain't going to do shit. And none of us had enough ammo for nine mil. I, I went for quite a while without nine mil ammo. I was out in sector without any ammo whatsoever. As a fucking driver, you had no ammo for your fucking M9? Yeah. <laughs> what the yeah. fuck? Yeah. 
And that well, what was happens just, if you have to bail? Like, what the fuck has to? I mean, I, pretty and much a twelve gauge that was off the books. Yeah, yeah. with ammo that was wholly inappropriate, and, yep. and and no reload. Yeah, Jesus Christ. And it wasn't just me that didn't have ammo. It was my entire platoon and most of the company that didn't have nine mil ammo. If you had an M4, you had ammo. If you had an M14, you had ammo. If you had a 240, you had ammo. But anything else, you had nothing. You're a fucking tank platoon. Yeah. And they don't give you nine mil. No. Yeah, that's that's real fun yep. times. <laughs> what yep. the fuck? I mean, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Christ. That's that's one where <laughs> that's one where that led to a conversation of I'd put you in for a medal, but if I did, you'd be in Leavenworth. What 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 about the uh spare barrels that you had to order for everybody's nine mils because they were all shot out? Oh that yeah, the shopping list that I had to basically uh order everything from Midway and Numer gun parts and I had it shipped to my parents and then they ship it to me. Yeah, M14 stocks and M9 barrels and all kinds of other parts. Hey guys, get me a shopping list. I'm going shopping. Stop Cleaning off the Hodgin Mart, log on to wherever, have it shipped to my parents. Hey, and then call my parents. Hey, you're going to have a few boxes coming in. Ship them off to me. Well, what are they? They're gun parts. Shouldn't the military pay for them? Yeah, they should, but they're not. Weapon they're cleaning supplies. Go God, sending powder, gal powder sending, gallons, sending gallons of hoppies to me. Oh yeah, that's yeah. CLP in, CLP in a is, combat zone. Yeah, CLP is worthless in a combat zone. Use hoppies. Oh, it's terrible. It's CLP fucking is, awful. CLP yeah. is worthless anywhere. Dude, yeah, in Iraq in specifically, zone. though, it's like it it attracts dust. It does. It, it's it's that moon dust that gets on yeah. everything, and it just if you unless you okay wipe it down with CLP and then wipe everything off. It'll still, it'll still that, attract it. Yep, that still that that thin layer of film of CLP. Yep, spray everything down with a carburetor cleaner. Go through with hoppies, and then put some graphite lube on there. And my platoon, my platoon, it never had malfunctions. We hey, never your had weapons malfunctions. dirty. Look at this. I wiped it with my finger, and my finger came back black. That's yeah, graphite, you fucking retard. Shut up. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like, exactly. I use I use the same thing on my M4 in Iraq. Yeah, gun slick graphite lube. Yep. yep. God, yeah, there's oh my god, there's so many fucking things. It's like a litany of just shit oh, yeah. that it it, it, it it was it was it was bad. And you think that it would have improved by the time Jake and I were there in 09. Doubtful. Not it really. was actually better in 05. Yeah. I was there in 05, 06 when when uh, Zeno was there. I was I was there too. Our weapons actually fucking worked in 06. Our 50 cals actually worked in 06. We didn't get to yeah. fire them ever because of what our mission was, but they fucking worked. We had cleaning supplies. We had what we needed to do our mission. In 09, in 09 we were playing musical fucking guns. We were an afterthought as well, like because there were so many fucking people. It's like, okay, the surge. Yeah, we're fucking throw all these fucking bodies over here. It's like, yeah, but you're not using about 30% of them to the bird. But we need them for relief rotation. How about we get rid of block leave and, you know, we just go to a fucking combat zone and we stay there for the whole fucking time. And we and just fuck shit up. How about that? The ROE -R -R -E yeah. and RUF card? If, if you're going to be dumb enough to send us to a war as an infantry company, there you go. Let us just I, fucking do our thing. That's what we're trained to. Yeah, I see that. That's the, and, that's uh, the pouch that I carried all my yeah. fucking shit in. Oh no, I, I mine's in my it's one in one of my totes out in the garage. I, I just have to find that. But like, uh, I I'm like, wh what are we doing? If if you're gonna be dumb enough to fucking send us to a war, why not just let us do our thing and then go home? Well, that's kind of what we had. We had the ROE cards, and once my platoon got sliced off and sent to Tenth Mountain, the uh, commander of the commander of Alpha Five Two Six basically ah, he told us hey screen. hand me hand hand, uh, hand me your roe cards and i'm like oh fuck so we all handed him our roe cards <laughs> now go do your fucking job we've been taking casualties for the past three months that's why we called you here go do your damn job oh yeah that get, fuck the get out of jail free card 
Oh yeah, and then do you have the um do you have the fucking uh the actual ROE for uh cropper or like the I, task force one thirty four? It's task force one thirty four. That's the yeah. task force one thirty four statement card mission statement statement wow. card. Yeah, but like, do you have the yeah. actual ROE that was like this oh. fucking long? We didn't have that. That was that was not our 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 ROE. No, MNC, MNCI row card. Yes, yeah, that we, one. Yep, we that fucking that. Cool. right here. No, that was our fucking ROE. No, um, ours was we'll ours was like a trifold yellow sheet. Yeah, I, I also had have a lot less literature on it. Yeah, yeah, this is the first army smart. Yeah, wow. <laughs> those are those are yeah. I have those out somewhere in the uh, totes. I just no, dude, no, our, it no, was our get, out, our get out jail free card was I'm in a fucking tank. <laughs> oh yeah. my god that th I, yeah, I don't have that anymore like that's you should probably scan that and give me a copy of that oh There's yeah a couple of them and uh what is this one this so i got one that is... but i chucked it after ramadan like i was like i don't want to carry any more shit than I um, i'm not going to show this one on screen because it's got my social on it okay uh but this is my uh interim uh theater interim security clearance that's that i that also lost of mine um <laughs> and, security, oh, because you were you, because you were in cropper no. yeah maybe we did a level one everybody did and uh um, wow yep yep and it, and it, it was went, funny because with the territory those guys and i then, know then here's... i have really really quick jake so those guys had a delta badge right okay i had a bravo badge kind of funny that that worked out that way but like uh we they could not go into the uh prison without somebody like me escorting them to where they had to go to drop off people or pick up people or whatever. They could not, they could not go freely around the tip. They could get in there and everything. It was fine. We but could I, go into the Sally port basically. Mm -hmm. And we had like, you know, we were in the same unit, which, you know, was fine. It ended up working out, but like we would have to have one of us go with them or else the MPs would freak the fuck out. Be like, who's your escort? Um, us. And then they're like, no, no, you need to fucking. Blah, blah, blah. And so we would just, kind of hang out with them while they were doing their shit and everything. It's just like, but we, so I, I wonder if I got more than a level one. I don't remember. It was so long ago and I was just like out of it. But yeah, I've, I've got my original deployment orders in there. And I also have for some reason, mm. a, a Fort McCoy installation map. <laughs> That's a fun one. I have one of those in this... a fucking flare container and I can't remember where the hell it went. You guys remember when they tried to institute speed limits, not just on the fobs, but out in sector as well? I don't know about sector, but Jake, what do you think? They, they we didn't have speed limits in sector. It was you go you go as fast as you can fucking go. Well, we did that, and then all of a sudden it was some someone's brainchild. You will do no more than 35 miles per hour out in sector, or else you will get ticketed by the MPs. <laughs> yeah, it's just so, like so it's easy, it's easier for you to get a hit by a fucking IED then because they know exactly yeah. how fast oh, you yeah. go. Nice. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. fucking oh, oh my god. Or yeah. how about you'll wear your seatbelts in the tank at all times? Oh, yeah, that was a good one too. Go get screamed as the PX because we pulled up we pulled up to the Camp Liberty PX in our tank in the peace sauce and it's like why are you wearing your seat belts because there aren't any seat belts in these things you're lying get up here and come see yeah but are you i mean fucking uh, kidding me yeah i shit you not the mps had nothing better to do at camp liberty than to harass oh else. i'm aware i'm aware yeah, of the yeah. fucking mps at camp liberty trust me yeah yeah, yeah. we fucking, fucking i lived fucking on liberty God, I hate those fuckers. But, oh, um, but but oh yeah out in sector just hate you, i just hate mps but out in sector you will do more, you'll do no more than 35 miles an hour. And it's like, dude, we're going to go as fast as you want to because what are they going to do? Try and pull us over. We're in a tank. What are they going to do? Call our CEO. They call her a C, they call her a CEO, our second CEO. And he told the MPs to basically screw off. Our guys are doing their mission. Quit harassing yeah, them. them. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Why don't go you guys on. actually go out there and do a fucking combat mission and then you'll understand? Exactly. Fucking we're in battle. Yeah, we're doing QRF shit to go bail up 10th Mountain for the 50th time. Guess what? We're getting out there now. Yeah. Those we're not doing 35 miles an hour. No, no. We're getting out there now. They requested us. We're the heavy hitters. We're getting out there now. Dude, yeah. <laughs> Zeno, check this out. Uh, because <clears throat> as you might know, like Jake, Jake and I were in the same unit, and then we got to Kuwait, and I already told you this. But basically about 
it was like, well, I don't know, 35 of us from our company out of like 130 that like got stuck at Cropper. It wasn't that yeah, about that. It, it was, it was not that many. It, it, was all, like, it was all of first platoon and about half of third platoon. Well, no, it was some of, it was most of first platoon because some of the first platoon guys in, in Texas got broken off to you guys. Yeah. And yeah. so, but it was like, it was, we were at about seven, it, it, but, it, but it ended up, it ended up being about one and a half platoons at, at Cropper. Yeah. At including, Cropper. Yeah, including our headquarters, like yeah, our, and, the female headquarters. Yep. So, um, uh, we got split off and so we, we were mostly 11 Bravos at Cropper at this fucking prison. And it was funny because a lot of the MPs or Pogues or whatever would be like, Oh, Hey, you know, how you doing? I'm like, been better you know they're like oh what's your mos and i'm like 11 bro they're like why the fuck are you here and i'm like I've been asking no. that same question because the mps didn't want us there but no. they, they put us on like shit jobs and then we got the sort team but i wasn't on that until like the last three months but they give us shit jobs and we're just like what are we doing here like we're just sitting here wasting away and all that shit and it was funny because um the first couple times, like when we had first gotten over there, like maybe two, three days, like actually working. And there was a huge riot and shit before it was even before the New Jersey unit left. And our guys from our company who were on the, uh, the sort team went out there and they just pummel fucked these guys with less lethal. They just, I mean, absolutely just pummel fucked them. There was what, fucking. Wasn't K-Bar relieved because of that? No. And I'm going to get to that. And okay. so. That was it was close though, and so they they ended up what would have been usually like a four or five hour riot in about fifteen to twenty minutes. Okay, and so our guys were an infantry platoon, infantry company, right? So they get a talking to after this. I wasn't. In... Did we lose them from, from nah, the? Uh, he broke. No, we good. Right. Yep, he came back. So our guys get a talking to, a stern talking to from the MPs. Like I think it was the day of or the day after. They're like, so what went wrong here? They're like, well, they had a riot. We quelled it. Blah blah blah. They're like, yeah, we mean about the use of force. It was pretty excessive. And apparently, yeah. like, I heard this from a guy that was because I was smoking cigarettes with him after he went through this little meeting, and he was fucking livid, and everybody else livid. And apparently what they said was like, that was pretty excessive for the use of force. And they're like, uh, with all due respect, the riot was done in fucking 15, 20 minutes and whatever. They're like, yeah, but you guys expended more rounds than the entire previous like rotation expended in their entire tour. And they're like, and it was done in 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. And the MPs just were like, well, there, there's going to be an investigation. There's going to be multiple investigations for the use of force and blah, blah, blah. And that was like, again, like a few days in. So our guys were telling us about this. And I was like, oh, my God. You know, like this is we're fucked. Like everything we do is is fucked. Like every we cannot do anything right. It's always going to be under. So, yeah, um, K-Bar got investigated because he was in charge of that thing. Um, and nothing came of it. I don't know what exactly happened in that investigation, but like it was, he got fucking livid after that. He was fucking not the same, the same, uh, K bar. We'll just say his name after that, he was fucking livid and he was pissed off and had a shitty attitude the rest of the time, not towards us, but like towards the whole situation. Yeah. And it was like, cause yeah, again, he got investigated for doing his fucking job. There, there was threats of court martial. There was threats of this and that, Leavenworth, you know, all that stuff. Because we were tasked, or not we, but like my company, my platoon was tasked to be on this sort team that would respond to riots and blah, 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 whatever their little statement was, and quell them with adequate force. They did that. And then immediately it's like, oh, fuck. They're not okay. All right, we'll just let them burn this whole fucking place down. But then you're fucked anyway because why didn't you use enough force? You know, nah. so it was like this is gonna be a because long. We got investigated year. for getting because we got investigated the last time for using too much force. There you go. And then I remember, I remember. I'll just tell you this, you know, that I'm gonna I'm gonna probably take off. Um, is 
when we Jake was here for this one, we landed in Kuwait, and this is the the morning we landed that we got to uh, Beering, right? And we're in that tent with General Quantock, fucking douchebag, and he was giving us like the the brief of like, hey, this is how the deployment's going to go, and our motto at Task Force yeah. One Thirty Four is a tired soldier is a safe soldier. Exact words. No. <laughs> nope, that was exact words. He goes, and then all of a sudden I saw all the guys that had been there before going, oh, fuck. And he's like, a tired soldier can't get into trouble. And then blah, 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 blah. So you will be working at least 12 hours a day, six days a week. Under Task Force 134. And we're like, oh, my God. what? How the fuck do we end up here? You know, it was like, what the fuck are we doing? And they held true to their word. I worked fucking at least 12 hours. Like It's working, by the way. That's not like doing tasks, like fucking doing laundry and doing PT and all that shit. Yeah. I worked 12 fucking hours a day, six days a week minimum for that whole fucking deployment. And we got on average probably at cropper like jake was a little bit different because he was more sporadic and like go out and running missions and shit we got on average i don't know three four hours a night at the most of sleep yes. for that whole fucking year and so when you each day off quote unquote you sleep you for like 20 hours yeah and then by the time you get up you're like oh fuck, what time is it okay can i get my laundry done because all my shit's filthy Oh, fuck, you know, barely get the laundry. And you're like, oh, I'm hungry. Um, oh, I have to do this. I have to do that. I have to, you know, call my family or send them a message or something. We get my mail, all that shit. No, they, they followed through. And that's why I fucking resent MPs so much. Infantry was... should never, ever, ever be subordinated to MPs. Correct. Yeah, we had to relieve MPs at Abu Ghraib. They, it was a reserve MP unit that was doing guard. And this is when I still had prisoners there. And we relieved them. We were in the process of relieving them. And I don't know what the whole deal was, but they they left mountains of gear just out front in front of the LSA. And it's like, you're not supposed to touch that. But, I mean, it was like, it was all Uncle Sam shit that they just dumped that we just, well, we were at fuck. We, it. we went through it and we took what we needed. But it's like, you're not supposed yeah. to do that. But it wasn't, it wasn't, we came in and they left. It was, we, it was, they were here. We came in and we sort of kind of relieved them and they kind of started, they kind of left out. But then again, reserve units. So they don't give a shit. And it's like, yeah. dude, I got no yeah. use for MPs. Sorry. Me either, man. It's, we call them mommy's princesses. And, hmm. well, as we always called it, it wasn't a party until the MPs show up. <laughs> True. Yep. But yeah, I mean, it was fucking so, that first riot that you guys had. Didn't the uh, detainees basically say you're they, they weren't going to riot for you guys ever again after your response to that? Yeah, that's they didn't hold heard. true to that. But they, they, yeah, they, they there was talk and they're like, okay, these guys aren't fucking around. And they always like, um, they would see the red arrow and they'd be like, like for the uh, uh, the sort team guys. And they were like, okay, whenever, whenever we come around, like, there was a lot of times where we just had to do a, a show of force. Mm -hmm. It didn't even come to a riot, like when I was on the team. And they would start doing their thing, and then we would just show up in all of our shit. And they were like, okay, we're done. We're done. Like, Yeah, we don't want to go through that again. Yeah, because they got, they got fucking... Toasted. They got what they deserved. And our unit just didn't fuck around with that shit, and... Because, I mean, you've got, in our unit, even the guys that didn't like, they were all combat vets, you know? Most of them were combat vets from the first time when they were there in 04 and 05. They got no time for that shit. Neither did we. We're like, nope. You tell us to do this fucking job, we're going to do the job as it's laid out. And, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, we're going to fucking we're, use... We're, we're going to do it within our capacity of doing it. Right. And those guys did. And um, then they got threatened to be punished for it and it's like oh god you know and it's just like what the fuck are we doing then why why, why don't you just fucking run your own little prison your little fucking happy farm over here we'll go out and fucking help our boys run missions 
like we're trained to do. And, you know, we'll go help our guys. We so would have we can... rather had you guys with us. and Oh, I know you would. Not stuck over at Cropper. No, I, I, every time you guys came in, you're like, God, I wish you guys could come with us. Like, fuck, you know. Because, yeah, like you said, it was like the walking dead. Every time you'd come to Cropper and you'd see us, you'd be like, hey, man, you want to go have a cigarette? Yeah. All right. How's it going? Good. You know, like you guys would be like, are you okay? And I'm like, not no. really. Not really. <laughs> it fucking sucks. <laughs> you're like, and it was just so stupid. You know, it's like, again, and, you, you, and the funny thing is that before that, before deployment, before before those occasional smoke breaks, Mike and I couldn't stand each other. Right. Yeah. Could not. Then, he he was the cocky little shit whose daddy was was the and was an NCO in 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 a staff position in the in the unit. Yep. I was fucking just whatever. And then I remember, I remember our first smoke break. We were smoking more menthol lights because that's what I had, and I gave you one. And we're sitting out behind the uh, the shack of the Sally Port. And I just lit up a cigarette, whatever. You lit one up. You're like, oh, how you doing? And I'm like, not great. <laughs> you're like, yeah, I, you guys don't look like you're having a good time. And I'm like, nope. And then, you know, after like two minutes, I'm just monkey fucking, you know, another cigarette. <laughs> just like, no, nah, it fucking sucks here. And then, you know, that's when you and I kind of like, found like our balance and yeah. like because you were having a shit time too but a di in a different way and like we're just like yeah well we, well when we were running missions we were we were out there for oh yeah well 12 14 16 hours yeah at, and that's at a pop yep because you guys would come in late you know when they're closing yeah. down buka especially uh, you guys are rolling with the MRAPs at like fucking one or two a.m. Well, I think all the Buka guys got transferred to Taji, and then we and then Taji sorted them out for. Well, no, it was, it was, they, they came. A lot of them came to Cropper first, and then you guys had to run them up to Taji. Because sometimes we brought them back from Taji too. Right, and, that, and I was like, "What the fuck? Like, just we're well, over, we, over fucking capacity." Yeah. And then we had to do all the transports of taking them all to their fucking hearings. and Yeah, yes, yeah, yep. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it was just fucking, like... I fucking hated that. Well, it was I so mean, stupid. It, I mean, know? it was nice because it got us off of the VBC for, you know, 10 hours. Yeah. But the facilities that we had over there at the fucking... At the fucking court. The, the, what was it? The ICC, yeah. the Iraqi yeah. Circuit Court. Yep. The facilities that we had there, they were just absolutely fucking terrible. Like yeah. the, the food was the, the food situation over there was fucking terrible. Uh, the, the shift rotation was fucking terrible. It was, it, yeah. it was just, and we just had to sit there and wait until, until the court day was done for all these fucking retards. And then we had to search them and load them back up into the fucking trucks and then sit in the back of the trucks with them while we take them back to fucking Cropper. Were you, were you on, um, it happened a couple times, but like, I remember one time I was going to Chow on Cropper, which, you know, diarrhea, of course, diarrhea central. And, um, I remember there was a bunch of you guys, I don't know if you were there specifically that day, but like there's a bunch of the Delta or the Bravo company guys that were in Delta, um, who were going to get chow and they got refused because they were dirty. Oh God. I hate when that happens. Oh, uh, it's possible that I was there. And again, it happened a couple times when I witnessed yeah. it. So it probably happened more than that. Yeah. It's possible and, that I, it's po I, I don't remember everything as vividly as you do because well, I, I don't remember everything all. vividly either. I just, I just, you know, I tried to, I tried to put it in my head to remember but, as much as possible. But yeah, but, I, yeah, I think, I think that they tried doing that to us one time. And that was one of the few times that Penny actually stood up for us to where he actually flexed. His okay. Rank. So you were there. That's the time yeah. I was just going to say that. So, cause I was about to check in and of course my uniform's spotless because of the fucking MP regs and all that shit, you know, it's good to go. And then you guys were having a scuffle and I'm like, wait a second I, I turned around and i went back and i was like no no no. hey these guys like they're they're good to go like they've got badges like let them in and they're like it was the ugandans those fuckers the, the ones with the khaki like the yep. uniform and i'm like they're good like they're with me let's no, go they're dirty and he's like yeah they're dirty and i was like who gives a fuck 
you know, and and Mine's then Penny Penny first. actually started yelling at the guy. It was a pissing match, and then I was like, I was like, they're with me, they're with me, they're with me. And then finally got the guy was like, okay, whatever, fine, let us in, or let you guys can go in. And then we got in there, and you guys were so fucking tired and hungry. I'm just like, yeah, go go get your fucking sandwiches and whatever else. Because I think yeah, yeah because but, yeah, the, and the reason why the reason why we always ate when we went there for you know drop off or pick up in the middle of the fucking night is because we missed we got back too late for supper chow yep yep at our defect our defect didn't have a 24-hour sandwich bar no it was only it was only open during meal times yep. and if we were doing a detainee uh drop off at the sally port at cropper we knew we weren't going to make it back for mid rats yeah you 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 because you, you guys got got to us at one or two yeah and then it's done you know mm-hmm. We'd get there at like 11 o'clock at night and it would take two hours to process them all in and mm-hmm. we couldn't leave until they were all processed in. Correct. Yep. Even though the only people who could do any of the processing were the E5s and E6s. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. And it was just fucking stupid. But I do remember that one time that it was just you guys and I'm like, let them, like, these are my people. Like, let them the fuck in. And then there was just I actually, I actually remember that. And then you guys got to go in eventually. Like, yeah, and, just, and uh, we were filthy because it was because yeah. we had just spent twelve fucking hours driving around a fucking desert. Right, and you're all sweaty and like stinky and shit. But I'm like, no, let them go get go let them get. And I remember because I stood behind all you guys because I'm like they need to eat first, like they whatever you know. And and then the <laughs> the two guys that are working behind the sandwich bar, they're always really good. Like they made yeah. a fucking mean grilled sandwich. Oh, I loved the tuna sandwiches. Oh, that's what I, I always got tuna wraps. I got two tuna wraps every fucking time I would go there, like in the middle of the night. My mouth is watering and thinking about it because, like, it was, it was, that was like one good thing about that entire fucking fob was the sandwich bar. <laughs> that, that was, again, we had a, like I that. said, like I said, we had a sandwich bar at West Liberty, but they didn't have a toaster. No, and that, that fucking panini grill, man, that thing. <sighs> It was, and it was, every fucking sandwich was perfectly grilled. Yep. I got a lot of tuna wraps too. Yep. That's what I, that's, that was my go-to is tuna, fucking pickles, uh, cheddar cheese, um, olives, and just fucking a little bit of mayo. And it was always perfect. And, um, I did love that. That was good. But, um, no, it it pissed me off when you guys would come there and they'd be like, oh, you can't go to the chow hall and eat because you're too dirty. It's like, go fuck yourself. It's like uh we just we just spent twelve fucking hours running around fucking Baghdad. Yeah. We're fucking just... tired. We're hot, we're sweaty, we're dusty, we're tired. Oh, God, they... we, it, oh, it, they... it might it, it might be midnight, but we've been awake since eight AM yesterday. Yeah. They hated us a striker because this was back before they had the full um chow hall. It was like a uh it was like two large trailers that had been slammed together. Okay, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, anyway, spend three weeks out in sector and we all stink and we're putting on the we're putting on the least stinky uniform we have mm-hmm. and roll back in around maybe 10 p.m. And it's like, OK, we're we can get there in time for midnight rats. Just yep. park the tank, do do post operation PMCS. OK, cool. And go in. And it's like you can't come in. You got to shower and shave first. Rule number one, do not get between a tanker and their meal, especially if it's the first (laughs) real meal in three weeks. Do not do that. You will catch a tanker bar to the mouth. My platoon sergeant saw to that. Good. Yeah, it's like, you like, hang on a minute. I'll be back in a minute. And he's like, let us in, or this thing is going in your mouth. Are you threatening me? Do it, or it's going to happen. I don't care. Punk! We're going in. Did Did Mac actually do that? Uh huh. Wow. Good. Fuck him. What, because I mean, he, yeah. Basically, it's the whole deal where the guy had 19 years in. He was going to retire, and he wanted to get home. And as soon as he got home, basically retire. And his exact words were: "By the time they get the paperwork through for a court martial, I'll be retired." <laughs> <Excellent>. <laughs> Fuck yeah! I mean, dude, that's the thing is like even my dad bitched about that, and he warned me about that on uh, before I went over. Um, he because he would go out for a mission for two, three, four weeks, you know, in a gun truck living out of there with MREs and whatever. And oh, yeah. I think I think he actually went to striker as well. And like, oh, f- 
late 04 or early 05. And they, they were like, you're too, you, you guys stink. Oh my God. Like you get, what are you yeah, doing? Oh like, just give us food. Like I'll take it in a to-go box. I don't give a fuck. I just want to have a meal, like an actual meal. I, I want meal. something that isn't an MRE. Yeah. Right. And that if people have never lived on MREs for an extended period of time. They're fucking. Oh, awesome. it they're, sucks. They're, there's 24 menus and I'm tired of all of them. They're, yeah. They're, and they all taste the fucking same after the first, like, day it's yeah. like they're all the chemically unless you're unless somebody is ge a genius and finds a connex full of them from 1991 yeah that little incident those will cause you to shit your guts out i would not have done that well we had no choice i shut down the chow hole in abu grave as we were shutting the place down and some second lieutenant found a connex with uh mres from the gulf from the first gulf war i'll just go hungry I wanted to go hungry. I had the MRE and I shit my guts out and my gunner was laughing at me until a half an hour later. He was shitting his guts out too. Yeah. That's yeah. That's it's not. Oh God. The Expired MREs are MREs. fucking awful. Yeah. Uh, they're fucking awful, man. Like, and they've been sitting yeah. in the sun for how many fucking years? Oh yeah. All the bacteria. It's Since like 91. Like yeah. Yeah. Or, or, we found, or, the, um, or the Gatorade that was sun bleached. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. That's, I've seen that. <laughs> yeah, purple Gatorade, but it's white. Yep. Mm -hmm. Did not drink that. Yep. I was too smart for that because I'm like, ah, I'll just take hot boiling fucking water and uh. Yeah. Oh yeah. At least I know it's new. <laughs> but yeah. we we uh, we uh, it was funny in Kuwait. I don't know if you knew this, Jake, but like when we were at Bering, um, Dan and I were like wandering around because we were oh so about the Girl Scout cookies. Yes. Yeah, I know about that. And we were, we were wandering, and it was all everything had like fucking a foot of dust on it because it hadn't been occupied in a while. And then I found this pallet behind this fucking tent. It's a whole fucking pallet of Girl Scout cookies, dude. And we were like, okay, that, that, that pallet lasted about two hours. Well, because Dan and I like we and, we and only and only because. It took that long to walk between the pallet and the fest tent. That's exactly it, because we, we loaded up like three or four boxes for us alone. We're like, we're going to be eating good. So we walk back and we go, we walk, we walk into the fucking tent through the little entrance thing with the wood and everything. And you we're get mobbed. In, and all of a sudden, yeah, you see, you know, guys just sitting there reading shit or on their computers and they just go, huh? hey, 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 where'd you get those? And I'm like, hold on. I threw them down at my cot, and you know, so my buddy and um, they're like, where the fuck did you get those? I'm like, I'll take you to them. Those boxes guaranteed are ours. Okay, fine, just take us to it. I'm like, okay. And all of a sudden, people are like, wait, wait, wait what's going on? They're like, Girl Scout cookies. They found a fucking horde. And I'm like, so the whole fucking tent, except for a couple guys pulling security on all of our shit and everything, we're looking at a fucking ranger file going down this bitch, and that pallet was cleaned out. And there was guys like, because we had part of Charlie Company in our um, on the other side of our tent, and we were in Bering, and they're like, hey, "What are you guys doing?" You know, and uh, there's an officer that I don't know if you know this guy, Jake, but um, he was in yep. Bravo. Yeah, okay, yep. so he was the CEO at that point, and then he goes, he looks at me, and goes, "Hey, where the fuck did you get those?" And I'm like, "Um," he goes, "I'm gonna send some guys with you." I'm like, "Fine," and so. We had guys from Charlie Company, Bravo Company, and everything like going over. That yeah, you're right. It lasted about two hours because it was about a 20 minute walk to there. Yeah, but we lived on Girl Scout cookies, and I even if I could have gluten now, I still would not want to touch one because we got so fucking sick of that. <laughs> <laughs> we got so, and they had like all the different kinds too. Like they had everything, you know, on this pallet. It was just mix. It was like a mixed pallet, and oh my god. It was. Well, uh, I I do need to get to go. Yeah, I, I gotta to go too. Sorry, no, right. morning, so and it's been almost five hours. Holy fuck! Again, <laughs> when we get on conversations like this, it's just like we all just fucking go. So it's another repeat of like Jones. And Devin so. was only here for thirty minutes, and it was Probably. wonderful. Yeah, <laughs> and Canadians. Well, it's like it's like that Soprano scene. He's a fag. <laughs> Canookastani. Yeah. Anyway, all right. So, what's the what's the uh, what's the code word going to be if somebody made it this long? Po expose a facto. 
I'll let Zeno pick it this time. The code word for what? If, if people like watch this after the fact, like if they're listening to this at work or whatever, after we end, I always have a word if they made it to the end that they could type in the comment section. Just whatever word from usually what we talked about or something like that. Um, how about Samoas? Samoas. Okay, yeah. That's good. We had those. Oh, my God. They were amazing. They give you a heartburn like a motherfucker when you eat three boxes of them in a row. <laughs> yep. All right, yeah. Samoas. Yeah, they're, they're delicious, but you get sick of them. So, all right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. My voice is... Yeah, it's probably from the Jesse Ventura thing. Yeah. yeah. It always happens. All right. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. And we'll see you on the next fucking stream. Might be there. We'll